Chapter 1161. Run after throwing an explosive meatball. The silver life energy penetrated the immortal tree seed, causing its surface to crack. Soon, it was completely covered with lines. Bu Fang squinted at it intently. He found that the seed had shed a layer of dead skin, turning into a dazzling golden seed with strong energy. The nourishment of the silver dragon had resurrected the dead seed. The silver dragon lay in Bu Fang's palm with a puzzled look, gazing curiously at the seed. It seemed to wonder why the seed had changed. Bu Fang didn't move and continued to stare at the seed. Under his glance, the layer of dead skin gradually peeled away. The whole seed seemed to turn into gold, shining dazzlingly and exuding a strong life force. The corner of Bu Fang's mouth twitched. He was very satisfied. The source of the spring of life was indeed magical. With just a gentle touch, it had made the seed's vitality energy stronger, which seemed to be even stronger than its previous state. There were two little silver dragons in Bu Fang's palm. One was holding the seed, while the other one was looking at him. Suddenly, the latter transformed into a silver beam and shot into the rainbow pool. Boom. As soon as it went into the water, it expanded and grew into a huge dragon, swimming gracefully in the pool before disappearing from sight. Bu Fang paused for a moment. Then, he turned around and saw the first silver dragon holding the seed with a naive look. With a thought, he brought the seed and the silver dragon to the farmland. A gust of wind blew over, making his vermilion robe flap. Bu Fang landed on the grass. The air in the farmland was refreshing and rich with the aroma of various spirit fruits. After entering here, the little silver dragon straightened its body and twitched its nose, as if it was observing the surroundings. The next moment, it cheered and rolled in Bu Fang's palm, still holding the seed. Bu Fang came in front of the wooden cabin. Niu Hansen and Jing Yuan were walking from a distance, talking and laughing. Jing Yuan was very excited at the sight of Bu Fang. However, as she was carrying a bucket of milk, she didn't do anything else. Are you here for the milk? Bu Fang glanced at her and said. Jing Yuan nodded excitedly. Business is booming, head chef Bu. In just four days, Fang Fang's ice cream store had reached the average monthly sales volume of Spring Wind Pavilion. Bu Fang knew already that sales were booming. Otherwise, he wouldn't have broken through that fast. After praising Jing Yuan, he asked her to go back first. He had an important thing to do in the farmland. Jing Yuan nodded and took her leave with an excited mood. Bu Fang then came to New Hansen. What a rich life energy. New Hansen gasped when he saw the little silver dragon and the golden seed in Bu Fang's palm. This is the source of the spring of life. Keep it in the river. It should increase the farmland's vitality significantly. Also, you need to expand the river to give this little guy more room to swim, Bu Fang said. After that, he led New Hansen to the river. The little dragon turned at the smell of water, but when it saw the river, it showed a disdainful look. Compared with the spring of life, the water in this river was rubbish. Bu Fang twitched his mouth. He was surprised that this little guy was so snobbish. He flicked the dragon's head with a finger, then threw it into the river with a splash. Roar. The next moment, a dragon roar rang through the farmland, and then a huge silver dragon emerged, rolling in the river. The river began to transform at a rate visible to the naked eye, as streams of invisible life energy spread out and mixed with the flowing water. Suddenly, one blood lobster after another jumped out of the water, waving their claws, while Brother Octopus also swung his tentacles, looking somewhat excited. All in all, the arrival of the Silver Dragon had thoroughly transformed the whole river. Let's call this river the River of Life in the future, Bu Fang said. New Hansen was dumbfounded. He didn't expect a little silver dragon to be so awesome. Where did Owner Boo get this awesome thing? The effect of the river's evolution would soon be felt, and the whole farmland would be elevated. The quality of spirit fruits, immortal herbs, and immortal ingredients would be improved. This was a qualitative leap for the farmland. Most importantly, it would strengthen the farmland's will of the Great Path and promote its formation. Can this seed be planted now? Bu Fang passed the seed to New Hansen. The golden immortal tree seed radiated a rich wave of vitality. New Hansen's hand trembled when he took it. The energy contained in the seed was terrifying. What level of seed was this? Both the seed and the silver dragon were existences beyond his imagination. Try to plant a trite in the center of the farmland, Bu Fang said after thinking for a moment. New Hansen ran away excitedly, holding the seed in his hand. He was already getting impatient. The center of the farmland was a few hundred meters in front of the wooden hut. 
The location was originally intended to grow a rare immortal ingredient, but now that the seed of the immortal tree was here, the immortal ingredient had to give way. New Hansen took out his hoe and began to dig a hole. After digging a deep hole, he carefully placed the golden seed in it and covered it with soil. Even then, Bu Fang sent out his divine perception, which seemed to envelop the whole farmland. New Hansen trembled and thought, owner Bu's cultivation base seems to be getting stronger again. With a splash, a huge silver dragon leaped out of the river and flew toward Bu Fang. Then, it transformed into the tiny silver dragon and lay in his palm. At Bu Fang's request, the dragon spurted a stream of silvery water of life onto the covered hole. A strange wave seemed to spread out from the hole instantly. Buzz. Both Bu Fang and New Hansen looked on curiously. Suddenly, Bu Fang narrowed his eyes. He saw the soil crack, and something green struggled out of it. After that, the green thing grew darker and taller, turning rapidly into a tree about three meters tall. It had swaying branches and leaves that kept exuding rich spiritual energy. The spiritual energy rose and soon completely filled the whole heaven and earth farmland. New Hansen was pleasantly surprised. With this immortal tree in the spring of life, the farmland's level would be raised again. Both of them were sacred great immortal ingredients, precious treasures craved by even great saints that could support a world. And now, the farmland owned two such treasures. Bu Fang was delighted that the seed had sprouted and grown into a tree. Since even his seed, which was the most difficult to revive, had grown into a tree, wouldn't Realm Lord D Tai's two seeds be easier to resurrect? He knew that he should have completed the mission. No. A serious thought struck Bu Fang. He seemed to have spent quite a lot of time searching for the spring of life, and it had been quite a long time since he broke through in God Vanishing Mountain. About half a month had passed since he embarked on the mission. Had Nether Prison invaded a mortal cooking realm? At the thought of this, he panicked. After saying his farewell to the overjoyed New Hansen, Bu Fang left the farmland, returned to the cave, and then dived into the spring of life without the slightest hesitation. A silver dragon swam over, letting Bu Fang sit on its back and rush toward the surface. Above them was the spinning whirlpool with terrifying destructive forces. However, the forces had no effect on the silver dragon, who was the pure source of the spring of life. With a loud boom, the water exploded, and a silver dragon flew out with Bu Fang sitting on top of its head. The nine-tailed fox stared at Bu Fang with white eyes. Even Ice Saint looked at him in surprise. He's safe and sound, the nine-tailed fox was shocked. The fact that this human boy was unscathed after entering the whirlpool in the spring of life proved that he was truly a big boss. After Bu Fang stepped on the ground, the silver dragon turned around and dived back into the spring of life. Is this the source of the spring of life? I Saint asked in a gentle voice. Foxy struggled free from her arms. It turned into a beam of white light and landed on Bu Fang's shoulder, where it lay down comfortably. On the other shoulder, Shrimpy fixed its compound eyes at the little fox. The trapped spring of life is now free, Bu Fang said. The look in Ice Saint's eyes was somewhat complicated. However, Bu Fang didn't say anything else. He turned his eyes to Lord Dog and said, Lord Dog, has Nether Prison begun to invade the immortal cooking realm? We have to get back as quickly as possible. Lord Dog yawned and glanced at Bu Fang. What's the rush? Anyway, judging from the strength of that magic array, the defense of the immortal cooking realm should have been broken by now. Then I have to return to the immortal cooking realm as soon as possible. After pondering in silence for a moment, Bu Fang decided to leave at once. He had completed all the things he planned to do in God Vanishing Mountain. If he didn't return now, the immortal cooking realm would probably be destroyed. The immortal cooking realm was a paradise for chefs. Bu Fang didn't want it to disappear. I Saint knew Bu Fang was leaving. She had no intention to make him stay, so she just said, remember the misfortune I told you. Bu Fang nodded. After that, he bolted out of the cave, stood at the top of the god vanishing mountain for a moment, before making the descent at top speed. Rumble. Suddenly, the nine-tailed fox rushed out of the cave. Looking exasperatingly at Bu Fang's back, he shouted, Hey! Give me back my daughter! With an ice pillar growing and pushing her forward, Ice Saint came next to the nine-tailed fox and said, Let the little one follow him. It may be the biggest fortune of her life. Besides, your daughter has grown up. She needs to go out and see the world. But, don't you think she is too young to leave us? The nine-tailed fox was still reluctant to part with his daughter. Although all children would leave their parents to see the world when they grew up, his daughter was just a kid who hadn't grown her second tail. 
Realm Lord D. Ty's pupils constricted. He was under terrible pressure from the nether prison army around him. Even though he was a half-step sacred realm expert, he could still sense the fear surging within him, and the huge ugly devil standing in front of him filled his heart with terror. However, it seemed that this devil was looking for the person who wounded his arm. At this moment, Realm Lord D. Tai could not help but think about Bu Fang. He remembered that Bu Fang had thrown a perishing pot into that bronze gate and injured a sacred realm expert. Judging from what he heard just now, this giant devil and that expert were the same existence. You don't want to tell me fine. I'll destroy the immortal cooking realm completely. Let's see if your mouth is still so tightly sealed by then. The giant devil roared and smashed the ground with his cyan arm. Without the support of the immortal tree, the fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm blew apart with a boom. Its entire ground shattered and fell apart, while all the buildings crumbled and turned into ruins. As blasts rolled out in all directions, the fifth layer crushed down toward the fourth layer. The withered immortal tree no longer had any strength to support the fifth layer. At the giant devil's order, the nether prison experts began to move. There were too many of them, and the weakest ones were one-star true immortal realm experts. Although one-star true immortal realm experts were like ants to realm lord D. Tai, their numbers were simply too great. City lord Zhu's legs had gone weak with fear. When he saw so many people rushing at them, he felt nothing but despair. Realm Lord D. Tai put on his golden armor and unleashed his energy to push back the approaching nether prison experts. Then, with a thought, seven steaming golden meatballs emerged and hovered around him. He got these explosive meatballs from Bu Fang. He wanted a perishing pot, but Bu Fang refused to give him one and just gave him these. Realm Lord D. Tai believed that they should be very powerful as well. However, he didn't think that he would need to use them so soon. He only hoped that these meatballs wouldn't disappoint him and that they could buy him some time. According to Bu Fang's instructions, Realm Lord D. Tai took a meatball between his fingers and bit it. A sizzling noise instantly rang out, accompanied by a rich aroma. Realm Lord D. Tai put all his strength into his arm and threw the explosive meatball away. After that, he dragged City Lord Zhu, who could hardly stand, and began running as fast as he could. End of chapter. Chapter 1162 Bu Fang returns. The bitten meatball shot forward at full speed in a golden beam of light, hurtling toward the distant crowd of nether prison experts. In the blink of an eye, it fell among them. Realm Lord D. Tai had already run far away, dragging City Lord Zhu with him. City Lord Zhu looked puzzled. He hadn't figured out what had happened yet. Boom. A loud noise rang out, followed by a terrifying explosion. The next instant, a powerful blast blew out in all directions, accompanied by a blinding light that illuminated the world and a plume of flame that towered into the sky. For a moment, miserable cries and shrieks filled the air as numerous figures were knocked away, tumbling backward by the explosion. The nether prison experts gasped. They never thought that a meatball would cause such a horrible explosion. Its power was not weaker than the attack of ordinary nine-star true immortal realm experts, and the will of the great path contained in it frightened them all. Realm Lord D. Tai turned around. When he saw those nether prison experts' scared faces, he burst out laughing. Come on, fight me now. You can all come together. Six glowing explosive meatballs floated around him, each containing terrible power. The nether prison experts were frightened by the power of the explosion and didn't dare to approach him. All of you will bow down before my meatballs. Realm Lord D. Tai laughed excitedly. The things made by Bu Fang Boy are indeed useful. He thought. He had no idea that these meatballs were so powerful. It was almost lethal when it exploded in the crowd. City Lord Zhu was amazed as well. He never knew that meatballs could be used like that. We have to buy more time. When Bu Fang Boy returns, we'll have the chance to strike back. As long as he brings back the spring of life and revives the immortal tree, I'll let none of them escape. Realm Lord D. Tai said. City Lord Zhu's eyes lit up and nodded. Your Highness, lend me a meatball. After saying that, he reached out a hand to grab a meatball. However, Realm Lord D. Tai slapped his hand away. Don't touch it. What if it explodes suddenly? Realm Lord D. Tai said with a grave expression. That frightened City Lord Zhu instantly. At the thought of the meatball's horrible power, he didn't dare to touch it again. The nether prison experts didn't come forward. The meatballs around Realm Lord D. Tai were too powerful and terrible, and they were afraid of being killed by it. Suddenly, the crowd parted, and a figure shot forward. A bunch of rubbish. Cried a cold voice. 
After that, an expert trapped in a black robe flew straight at Realm Lord D. Tai. A plume of black nether energy exploded out of him. He was also a half-step sacred realm expert. The pike tore the air as it was being thrown at Realm Lord D. Tai, looking like a roaring black dragon. Realm Lord D. Tai narrowed his eyes and roared. A moment later, a kitchen knife flew out. He grabbed it and slashed it down. In an instant, everything in front of him was blanketed by a wave of knife energy. Then, he rushed forward and engaged the half-step sacred realm expert in a fierce fight. As the glint and flash of cold steel dazzled all eyes, blasts spread out in all directions and kept bombarding and shattering the ground. After losing the protection of the immortal tree, the ground was no longer as tough as it was in the past. It was now as weak as a sheet of paper in the face of a half-step sacred realm expert. City Lord Zhu's expression changed. Although his strength was not as strong as a half-step sacred realm expert, it had reached the nine-star true immortal realm. A walk emerged and was grabbed by him. After that, he rushed forward and began fighting several nine-star true immortal realm experts. However, there were only two of them. It was impossible for them to stop the others. The entrance to the fourth layer was already exposed, and more and more nether prison experts were making their way toward it. You're courting death. Realm Lord D. Tai's eyes shone like torches, and his golden hair whipped violently. He took an explosive meatball, bit it, and threw it at the entrance. With a boom, a plume of flame towered into the sky, and powerful blasts thrust out in all directions. The explosion threw many nether prison experts away from the entrance, seriously injuring them and making them cough blood. How dare you be distracted while I'm fighting against you? The half-step sacred realm expert with a pike sneered. The next moment, he thrust his pike. It transformed into a black dragon and bit down on Realm Lord D. Tai's shoulder. Realm Lord D. Tai narrowed his eyes and grabbed the pike with a hand, paying no heed to the corrosion done to him by the dark nether energy. Distracted who do you think you are? How dare you act so arrogantly in my face? He snapped with an indifferent look. All of a sudden, he pressed a bitten meatball hard on the half-step sacred realm expert's chest and flew backward at full speed. Boom a deafening boom rang out, accompanied by a horrible explosion. Impacted by the blast, Realm Lord D. Tai tumbled twice in the air before landing on the ground. The half-step sacred realm expert's shriek ripped the sky as flames burned all over him. The terrible flames that contained the will of the Great Path prevented him from healing himself. On top of that, a large hole was blown in his chest, where one could see his beating heart. A meatball had severely wounded a half-step sacred realm expert. Realm Lord D. Tai shook his arm and washed away the corrosive nether energy with his immortal energy. When he saw his opponent's gruesome injuries, he could not help but suck in a cold breath. He was regretting it now. He should have asked Bu Fang for more meatballs, and he shouldn't have said enough when Bu Fang wanted to give him more. He couldn't have too many of such powerful meatballs. Outside the Bronze Gate, there were still many nether prison experts watching. Apparently, this was only the first wave, and many experts had not yet arrived. Realm Lord D. Tai already felt a little overwhelmed. There were several half-step sacred realm experts among the enemies. He had badly wounded one, but before he had the time to kill him, the others had come forward to fight him. Fortunately, his strength was considered strong among half-step sacred realm experts, which allowed him to suppress two opponents at the same time. But instead of rejoicing, he grew more and more desperate, for the giant little saint in the distance had not yet made any move. He was not strong enough to resist that little saint. Boom. Boom. Two meatballs exploded and injured two half-step sacred realm experts. Realm Lord D. Tai could finally catch his breath. He turned his head and looked at City Lord Zhu in the distance. City Lord Zhu was waving a black walk. He was already covered in wounds, but he didn't give up. He kept knocking one nether prison expert after another away with the walk, and each time he would gain a new bloody cut on his body. Realm Lord D. Tai saw that with his sharp eyes. However, there was nothing he could do to help him. There were only two of them, after all. The immortal cooking realm was now in a state of decay. Suddenly, the entrance was blown open with a rumble. The nether prison experts poured through it and headed toward the fourth layer. The immortal cooking realm's demise had begun. The invasion of Nether Prison officially started at this moment. Realm Lord D. Tai roared. Immortal energy gathered around him as he lifted his kitchen knife and chopped it down toward the entrance in the distance. He wanted to seal the entrance once again. Even then, a terrifying pressure exploded out. Realm Lord D. Tai felt a tightness in his chest. The next moment, a giant cyan hand slapped down hard. He thrust the kitchen knife and destroyed the hand. 
boom. The ground shook violently and cracked, and the fifth layer was falling even faster. The giant devil's sharp fangs glinted as he stared coldly at Realm Lord Tai. The next moment, he took a step forward and smashed Realm Lord Tai with his fist. Instantly, the void collapsed. Bu Fang bolted from the top of God Banishing Mountain toward the bottom, leaving countless afterimages behind him. Rumble. Soon after, he landed on the snowfield, kicking up a cloud of snowflakes. A snowstorm was raging, and the air was filled with strong killing intent. Bu Fang glanced about him and found that he was surrounded by many nether prison experts, who were all geniuses having their trial here. Get out of my way. Bu Fang said coolly. His voice rolled out and stirred the snowflakes. Those nether prison experts sneered. If it weren't for the existence in the pool, this guy would have died on the peak of God Banishing Mountain. How dared he behave so arrogantly in front of them now? Let's kill him together. Cried one of the experts. The next moment, beams of nether energy thrust into the sky as these experts approached Bu Fang with strong killing intent. Their cultivation bases were not weak. After all, most of them were nine-star true immortal realm experts, and they were geniuses who came here for the trial. Bu Fang looked at them with a straight face. With a thought, cyan smoke curled around his hand, and the dragon bone kitchen knife appeared in his grip, glinting dazzlingly. In the face of countless nether prison experts, Bu Fang only made a straight cut with the knife. It was an extremely slow cut. The slash. Cutting immortal style. Bu Fang called out faintly. The next moment, a huge shadow appeared behind him. Its shape was very similar to him, making a straight cut with a kitchen knife, as if it wanted to tear the whole sky apart. In the blink of an eye, the knife tore through the air, spraying steaming blood everywhere. One nether prison expert after another coughed blood and flew backward, while some weaker ones were cut in half. Bu Fang had defeated the enemies with just a single cut. He spun the dragon bone kitchen knife and glanced at the crowd. After that, he sped away through the snowstorm. Soon, he came to the location where Empress Bi Lu had brought him. He crushed a jade talisman, and a mysterious wave instantly spread out. Fang Fang's Ice Cream Store. Empress Bi Lu, who was enjoying her delicious vermilion fruit flavored ice cream, suddenly paused her movement. A moment later, she shoved a scoop of ice cream into her mouth, snapped her fingers, and disappeared from the store. When she reappeared, she was already in the snow. She was wearing a long red dress, which had a large opening on the side that exposed her long fair legs. With a tiny, silver spoon held between her red lips, she looked smilingly at Bu Fang. Have you found the spring of life? Empress Bi Lu asked. However, she was slightly taken aback as she smelled blood from Bu Fang. Judging from the intense killing intent around him, clearly, he had just killed someone. Yes. We can go back now. The trip to God Vanishing Mountain was finally over. The smell on you. Empress Bi Lu furrowed her beautiful brows. Some weaklings sneaked into God Vanishing Mountain and blocked my way. I've killed them. Weaklings? That gave the Empress a pause, and her eyes flashed with a serious look. She didn't ask too much, however, and just gave the snow clad God Vanishing Mountain a deep look. After that, she waved her hand. A beam of golden light immediately enveloped them and disappeared. When they reappeared, they were already in the palace. After bringing Bu Fang back, Empress Bi Lu paid him no more heed. Instead, she continued to enjoy her delicious vermilion fruit-flavored ice cream. Bu Fang turned around and was about to leave. However, before he left, he glanced back suspiciously over his shoulder at Empress Bi Lu. Your Majesty. Did you pay for this vermilion fruit-flavored ice cream? Empress Bi Lu froze. She turned to him and said exasperatingly, Do I look like someone who doesn't pay for food I'll pay when I finish eating? I haven't paid because I need to bring you back here. Is this the way you return my kindness?" Bu Fang shut his mouth. He was just asking. The next moment, he left the palace at full speed. Soon, he returned to Fang Fang's ice cream store. Even he was shocked by the booming business of the ice cream store. He entered the store and found Nethery, who was enjoying a cup of ice cream, and Flowery, who had just finished her second serving of ice cream. Sensing Bu Fang's gaze, Nethery looked up at him with a puzzled look. We have to go back to Immortal Cooking Realm. Bu Fang said seriously. Nethery paused, then nodded and said, Okay. Let me finish this cup of ice cream first. The corner of Bu Fang's mouth twitched. I'm really in a hurry, little sister. After a while, the Netherworld ship tore through the sky. On the deck, Nethery and Flowery were licking happily at the ice cream cones in their hands, while Bu Fang sat cross-legged, pondering. The void ripped apart, and the Netherworld ship plunged into the opening. 
End of chapter. Chapter 1163. Hold off 10,000 beasts alone. Darkness invaded, and disaster befell. The whole immortal cooking realm was in a state of panic. Fortunately, city lord Menki was still there, so the people's spirits didn't fall. All the people in the fourth layer had orderly retreated to the third layer. That was the furthest they could retreat. If they moved further down, everyone's morale would collapse, no matter how Menki calmed them down. Once they retreated to the second layer, it would mean no more hope. When that happened, what was left for the immortal cooking realm was destruction. Menki stood over a tall building in city court, her robe flapping noisily in the wind as she looked at the immortal tree. The majestic tree that emanated rich immortal energy and supported the whole immortal cooking realm was completely decayed now. It was covered with rot and looked extremely dried. Roar. Darkness kept pouring over, corroding the immortal tree like maggots. Everyone was hiding in the immortal city. Roaring beasts roamed outside the city, while dark nether energy gathered in the sky. The people felt as if they had been abandoned by the world. They looked blankly at the sky with fear, despair, and all kinds of negative emotions welling in their hearts. Menki bit her lip as she watched the dark nether energy gush out from the entrance. She knew that a battle was inevitable, but she couldn't see any hope. The people of the mortal cooking realm had lived in peace for too long. Although there were savage beasts in Immortal Cooking Realm, they could not hurt anyone because the people were protected by the Immortal City. So after staying in a safe environment for so long, the people were no longer aggressive and had lost their murderous spirit. They were no longer strong enough to resist the invaders of Nether Prison. Menki sighed. Her mind was weighed down with anxiety. Boom. With a loud noise, a plume of Nether energy exploded out of the entrance. The next moment, several figures enveloped in dark nether energy flew out of it. Horrible energy pervaded the sky. A noise of restlessness rang through the hearts of all in the immortal cooking realm, and an atmosphere of despair filled the air. The realm lord had failed to hold the entrance. They would all die. There was no more hope. Everyone broke down completely, and cries of despair could be heard from everywhere. Only five nether prison experts rushed out of the entrance, but their energies were strong. The weakest one was an 8-star true immortal realm expert, while the strongest one was a 9-star true immortal realm expert. Clad in black robes and shrouded in nether energy, they glanced about and fixed their eyes at the immortal city down below. The city was packed with people. These people should be the cowards of the immortal cooking realm. The nether prison experts burst out laughing, scorn and arrogance evident in their laughter. The immortal cooking realm is huge, and yet only two people had the courage to resist our invasion, though their resistance is futile against our great army. The others didn't even show themselves. They only knew how to hide and run away from us. As his lordship said, immortal cooking realm is a greenhouse, and the immortal chefs here are the flowers in the greenhouse, who will break apart at the slightest bit of trouble. All we have to do is make these delicate flowers understand what despair is. Attack cried one of the nether prison experts. The next moment, they shot toward the immortal city like missiles, with streams of dark nether energy tailing behind them. What they had to do now was to completely crush the hope of these delicate flowers once and for all. Menki stood on the city wall and watched as the five nether prison experts approached. Then, she looked back at the despairing immortal cooking realm experts and sighed softly. Without hesitation, she kicked the wall and shot into the sky, turning into a beam of light, as she threw herself at the five nether prison experts. Boom. They clashed instantly and began to fight. This was a war. No one would show mercy in a war, so they attacked with lethal moves at once. With a pale blue kitchen knife in her grip, city lord Meng Qi held off the five nether prison experts alone. A fierce battle unfolded in the sky. However, shortly after it began, Meng Qi had fallen into a disadvantaged position. The situation in the first layer of the immortal cooking realm was much better than the other layers. Perhaps it was because it was located at the bottom. The nether prison invasion started from the fifth layer, so the impact on the first layer was not that great, and the crisis had not yet spread to them. The main goal of the first layer now was to kill the savage beasts that were attacking the city. Gongshu Beiguang had already organized the immortal chefs in the first layer to fight against the savage beasts, making them more ferocious than those at the other layers. Buzz. Meanwhile, the void in front of immortal chef little store tore open, where the dark netherworld ship came drifting out. Bu Fang sat cross-legged on the deck with his eyes closed, while Nethery and Flowery were eating ice cream and cones. Ice cream in a cone was another form of ice cream, which was refreshing to eat. No, it should be said that they were refreshing to lick. 
one should lick ice cream and cones. Either way, nethery and flowery enjoyed both forms very much. I'm finally back in the first layer of immortal cooking realm. Bu Fang opened his eyes. The immortal cooking realm was now enveloped in an aura of death, which should be emitted by the immortal tree. It seemed that the tree had decayed to a very serious degree. It had not been so bad when Bu Fang left the immortal cooking realm, so it was clear he had taken too much time. However, Bu Fang couldn't help it. There was too much effort to pay to get the spring of life. Whether it was to conquer Empress Bi Lu with an imperial feast or to enter God Vanishing Mountain to take the spring of life, it was not that simple. He walked down the netherworld ship and headed toward the immortal chef little store. As soon as he pushed open the door, several figures inside turned to look at him. Bu Fang was slightly taken aback. There were several familiar figures sitting on the chairs in the restaurant Xuanyuan Xuan, Gong Xu Yun, and Mu Yuer, who he had not seen for a long time. What were these three women doing here? There was a sound of cooking in the kitchen. The Black Dragon King sat in a corner, sipping tea leisurely. Compared with the grim situation in the immortal cooking realm, the atmosphere here was much more harmonious. When Gong Xu Yun and the others saw Bu Fang, their eyes lit up. Xuan Yuan Xuan's nose and eyes were slightly red. It was obvious that she had just wept. She didn't expect Bu Fang would return now, so she quickly covered her face with a handkerchief, fearing that he would see her ugly look. Enjoy your food and drink. Bu Fang nodded expressionlessly and went straight to the kitchen. Ding. A bell rang as the curtain was lifted. That gave Shishi, who was working in the kitchen, a pause. She turned around and saw Bu Fang walk toward her, causing a big smile to spread across her face. You're back, teacher Bu. Shishi was very happy. The decaying of the immortal cooking realm weighed heavily on her heart. Muluer was complaining whenever she came to the restaurant, which didn't help to lift Shishi's spirits. She was relieved to see Bu Fang finally return. Bu Fang patted Shishi's head and looked around in the kitchen. He could tell at a glance that she was practicing her cooking. Not bad. You've made some progress. Bu Fang arched his brows and gave Shishi a look as he smelled the aroma in the air. She truly is a highly gifted genius with an immortal tongue. Bu Fang reckoned that this little fellow would soon make a breakthrough and become a first grade immortal chef. Suddenly, he recalled that he was just a first grade immortal chef as well. It seemed to him that he had to improve his cooking skill after this. At least, he had to reach the level of a second grade immortal chef. Keep practicing your knife and cooking techniques. Bu Fang calmed down when he saw everything going on as usual in the restaurant. After rubbing Shishi's head, he turned and walked out of the kitchen. When Mu Yuer and the others saw Bu Fang again, they couldn't help but stop him. Where have you been these days, owner Bu? The immortal cooking realm is decaying. Savage beasts are attacking the city. And it is said that the fifth layer has been occupied by the nether prison invaders. Is our home going to be destroyed? Said Gong Yun, a little choked up. Bu Fang glanced at her and twitched the corner of his mouth. Destroyed? It will never happen. After saying that, he walked straight out of the restaurant, leaving the three women staring blankly at each other. After walking out the door, Bu Fang narrowed his eyes, his expression turning serious. The next moment, he turned his gaze toward the city gate, where the experts of the first layer were fighting the savage beasts with their bodies covered in blood. The beasts were extremely ruthless, so the casualties were high. He exhaled softly, clasped his hands behind his back, and took a step forward. The next moment, he disappeared from where he stood. When he reappeared, he was already near the city gate. Gongshu Ban stood on the wall. He was covered in blood, breathing heavily. The ground outside the gate was already littered with the dead bodies of savage beasts and immortal cooking realm experts. However, the savage beasts still kept pouring over endlessly. The immortal chefs on the wall were already very tired. Rumble. The rough-skinned savage beasts pounded fiercely against the wall, causing it to shake violently, as if it were about to fall apart. Once the wall collapsed, they would be able to rush into the city and began to wantonly kill and destroy, and the whole city would be reduced to a living hell. However, the immortal chefs were very tired. Although they had fought bravely, they had no strength left to fight now. The decay of the immortal cooking realm thinned the immortal energy in the air, that was why it was taking them too long to regain their strength. Roar. There was a bestial roar in the distance, led out by a giant one-horned rhinoceros beast emperor. Its skin was as tough as iron, and its roar as sharp as a spear. After roaring, it began to run, pointing its horn at the city wall. Everyone turned pale, including the experts from the Gongshu family, Luo family, and the other families in the immortal city. 
No one could stop this rhino. Boom the horn crashed into the city gate. Rubbles fell and flew in all directions as the wall crumbled and a big hole was opened. The rhino roared and rumbled into the city, followed by hordes of ferocious monsters. The savage beasts finally broke into the immortal city. All the experts on the wall felt nothing but despair. They tried their best, but they still failed to stop this bestial tide. The immortal city was about to be destroyed. Suddenly, Gong Shuban squinted into the distance. He saw a figure walking in the direction of the giant rhinoceros. That familiar figure made him shiver and filled his heart with hope. It's the great demon king. It's owner Bu. He's back. Gong Shuban became very excited. What's the point of him coming back? Can he hold off the bestial tide alone? There's nothing he can do now. The end of the immortal cooking realm has come. No one can change it. We should have let the immortal cooking realm be destroyed. We've fought so hard, but in the end, we still failed. It feels really bad. Unlike Gongshu Ban, the people around him didn't feel any hope. Yes, Bu Fang was back, but what was the point? In the face of this bestial tide, could he, a mere one-star true immortal realm expert, still create miracles? Fighting these savage beasts was not the same as participating in a cooking competition. It would require a real cultivation base to fight them. Gongshu Ban's smile froze. They are right. What's the point of owner Bu coming back? For a moment, he could not help closing his eyes in despair. Bu Fang walked with his hands clasped behind his back. Ahead of him, the ground suddenly shook, and the wall crumbled into a hole, from which a huge rhinoceros roared and rushed through, followed by hordes of monsters. That took him aback. Was the immortal city breached? He looked up at the group of people on the wall, covered in blood and looking extremely tired and weak. His expression grew grave. He knew they had tried their best. Bu Fang exhaled softly and turned his gaze to the rhino. The beast's red eyes shone with killing intent as it dashed toward him. Anyone who got in its way would be trampled to death. It was a six-star beast emperor, with tough skin, thick muscles, and brutal attacks, which made it almost an invincible existence in the first layer of the immortal cooking realm. However, it was nothing but a piece of rubbish to Bu Fang now. Bu Fang stood where he was with his hands on his back. Suddenly, his vermilion robe turned fiery scarlet, and a bird crier rang out as a pair of flaming wings spread out on his back. Even then, the texts in his mind lit up, sending huge waves across his spirit sea. In the blink of an eye, his divine perception had enveloped the whole city. A plume of terrifying energy and pressure exploded out of Bu Fang, towering into the sky. Every savage monster paused. The next moment, a horrible voice thundered in their minds. Get lost. Rumble. The voice exploded like the evening drum and morning bell, causing every beast to tremble and fall on all four legs, shivering in fear. All the people on the wall gasped, stunned at what they had just witnessed. They could not believe that the great demon king had held off the bestial tide alone. End of chapter. Chapter 1164. Bu Fang arrives. Boom. A loud rumble rang out in the next instant. The rhino's large head crashed over, but it was effortlessly stopped by Bu Fang with a palm and could no longer move further even for just a bit. All the people on the wall were stunned. That giant rhino was a six-star beast emperor, a formidable existence in the first layer of the immortal cooking realm. The great demon king, on the other hand, was just a one-star true immortal realm expert. How did he stop it? Why was he so strong? Gongshu Ban and the others had their mouths wide open in shock. Bu Fang's moves exceeded their imagination. All of a sudden, everyone's pupils were constricting when they saw Bu Fang squeeze his palm. Under the shocked eyes of all, the rhino's sharp horn began to crack. Then, it shattered into a thousand pieces with a boom and fell to the ground. Everyone gasped and felt an extremely powerful aura come slapping at their faces. This was the Great Demon King. The formidable Great Demon King. The Great Demon King who never stopped creating miracles. After shattering the horn, Bu Fang turned his gaze to the rhino. The beast emperor lay sprawled on the ground and didn't dare to move. It was not just because of Bu Fang's aura of a nine-star true immortal realm expert, but also because of the auras that belonged to the divine dragon and the vermilion bird emanating from his body. The auras made all the savage beasts present dare not move at all. Most importantly, they were frightened by Bu Fang's divine perception, which exploded in their minds. All savage beasts respected existences stronger than them. The fact that Bu Fang's divine perception could explode in their minds meant that he could have easily killed them. There was a horde of beasts behind the rhino. 
however, their ferocity was gone, and they were all lying on their stomachs and shivering in fear. A six-star true immortal realm rhinoceros. Bu Fang gave the rhino an expressionless look, then lifted his hand and slapped the beast on the head. With a buzz, the rhino disappeared. It was brought into the heaven and earth farmland by Bu Fang. This rhino is of a good grade, excellent to be either an ingredient or a laborer. New Hansen would be very happy with this extra helper. As for the other savage beasts. Bu Fang's eyes turned cold again. The next instant, his divine perception rippled out and exploded in the mind of every beast. Get lost. The thunderous voice made the savage beasts restless. At last, one of them could bear it no longer. It turned and ran frantically through the large hole in the wall and soon vanished from their sight. That marked the start of their route. In the blink of an eye, almost all the savage beasts turned and fled. Their hooves stormed the ground as they rushed toward the hole in the wall. The bestial tide was over. The people on the city wall were still in a daze. They were still in disbelief and didn't understand what had happened. Is it over? Is this the end of the bestial tide? We survive? We are saved by the great demon king? Many people on the wall mumbled in confusion as they watched the horde of savage beasts fleeing in a panic. Bu Fang breathed a sigh of relief. He glanced at the people on the wall, but he didn't greet nor talk to anyone present. Instead, he tapped his foot against the ground and propelled himself up into the air. Like a missile, he disappeared into the clouds in a flash. Rumble. The giant devil punched, shaking heaven and earth. The attack was so powerful that it seemed capable of bringing down the whole sky. Realm Lord D. Tai's pupils were constricting as he stepped through the air. However, the fist kept closing in and approaching his body, trying to crush him completely. He roared, and his pale golden hair waved violently in the wind. Even then, he threw all the explosive meatballs he had at the huge cyan fist. Boom. 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 The meatballs exploded over the fist, sending plumes of flames into the sky and filling the air with destructive blasts. However, they didn't cause any harm to the giant devil. Although the skin on the fist was charred, it continued to gain momentum and smashed hard at Realm Lord D. Tai. Even then, Realm Lord D. Tai thrust his knife and slashed the fist with it. Bam! Blasts exploded in the air, while rifts appeared and riddled the void. The nether prison experts around them quickly moved back further. They all looked very excited. All of a sudden, a stream of golden light shot out from the center of the collision. It was Realm Lord D. Tai. The impact had thrown him across the sky like a missile before he smashed into the ground, creating a large hole. In the distance, City Lord Zhu was covered in blood. The countless gashes on him had taken away his elegance. He was in a really bad shape now, with blood trickling down from all the wounds. Even then, one expert after another gathered around him, trapping him like a wounded animal. He was so weak that he could no longer fight. Realm Lord D. Tai struggled to his feet in the ruins. In the distance, the army of Nether Prison was still constantly pouring over the Heaven Nether Bridge. Their nether energy blotted the sky and almost filled his chest, which made him feel that his last hope was about to be wiped away. He didn't want to admit defeat. If it weren't for the decline of the Immortal Tree, how could these Nether Prison experts have the chance to invade the Immortal Cooking Realm? If the realm were still in its prime, how could they have the guts to launch an invasion? In its heyday, there were divine chefs and even dozens of killin' chefs in the immortal cooking realm. The giant devil gave him a cold look and punched the ground again, which immediately cracked and looked as if it was about to crumble completely. Who blew up my arm? Tell me now, or I'll tear you to pieces. He roared furiously. Rumble. Suddenly, the giant disappeared. When he reappeared, he was already standing in front of Realm Lord D. Tai. Realm Lord D. Tai felt darkness descend upon him. He looked up and saw a huge palm crashing down toward him. Rumble. The palm completely shattered the ground as a figure turned into a golden beam and shot away. Realm Lord D. Tai was panting for breath, his golden armor fully cracked with bits and pieces falling off. He glanced at City Lord Zhu in the distance, who still held his fingers like a woman, even though he had almost lost consciousness, barely standing by as he supported himself with the black walk. He could tell that City Lord Zhu had completely exhausted his true energy. A pang of sorrow rose suddenly in Realm Lord D. Tai's chest. The immortal cooking realm had never suffered such humiliation. He clenched his fists, and his eyes burned with fury. Unforgivable. Realm Lord D. Tai roared. Then, his body burst into a bright golden light and seemed to have turned into a sun. Even then, on the crown of the immortal tree in the fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm, Yuya sat in the wooden hut, giving everything around her a serious look. 
The next moment, a wisp of immortal energy appeared in her hand, and she slapped her palm down hard. Suddenly, a magic array was activated in the hut. It spun, then a beam of light shot out of it, piercing through the air and enveloping Realm Lord D. Tai. Realm Lord D. Tai's energy kept rising and soon broke through the bottleneck. There seemed to be a hazy cloud swirling above his head. It was the immortal cooking realm's will of the great path. Although it was weakened to the extreme, it still existed. Boom. Golden light radiated from Realm Lord D. Tai's eyes. At this moment, he no longer had his usual look he was extremely serious. Forcibly breaking through the little saint realm? The giant devil sneered. He raised his fist and rushed toward Realm Lord D. Tai once again, throwing a punch at the latter. The golden light emitted from Realm Lord D. Tai's body grew even stronger. The next moment, he turned into a stream of light and threw his fist out as well, which clashed with the giant devil's fist. An explosion went off with a rumble. Powerful blasts swept out in all directions and ripped the void. At this moment, the whole fifth layer seemed to be completely destroyed. Bu Fang shot straight up into the sky like a fiery red missile. He passed the second layer in a flash. Countless people in the immortal city saw him, their eyes fixed on his figure as he rocketed upward. For a moment, everyone's heart was filled with mixed emotions. Soon, Bu Fang flew out of the third layer's entrance in a stream of fiery red light. With flaming wings spread out behind his back, he fell lightly on the ground. This woman is pretty strong. We'll see how long she lasts. Let's capture her alive. His lordships in nether prison would love a woman of this style. Said one of the nether prison experts with a mocking look. Although Menki was a city lord, she was no match for the five of them. Her face was cold and expressionless as she kept slashing her kitchen knife, sending one knife energy after another at her opponents. Although she was in a grave situation, she didn't look bedraggled. However, she was somewhat anxious because she knew that the situation would only get worse as the battle progressed. Her strength was limited, after all. Once her true energy was exhausted, she would not be able to resist them. With all these thoughts, the anxiety in her heart made her attack full of flaws. Meanwhile, the immortal chefs in the city grew desperate as they watched the battle. What hope did they have when even city lord Meng Qi was being treated like that? Their faith began to slowly fall apart at this moment. Meng Qi glanced at them and felt bad. How dare you be distracted by a bunch of rubbish down there? Sneered one of the nether prison experts. The next moment, he appeared in front of Meng Qi and threw out his palm, which seemed to crush the air before it struck her on the shoulder. City Lord Meng Qi's pupils constricted instantly. She felt a stream of nether energy enter her body and sealed her true energy, stopping her from using it. Her face turned deathly pale. Even her immortal robe was ripped and could no longer protect her, making her cough up a mouthful of blood as the impact threw her backward. However, before she was thrown too far away, strings of black chains fell and caught her limbs, binding her up like a prisoner. The nether prison experts held the other end of the strings and burst into laughter. Their voices echoed through heaven and earth, while all the people in the immortal city wailed in despair. It's over. It's all over. An atmosphere of despair enveloped the immortal city as if it were the end of the world. Menki's eyes were half-closed. She could feel that her strength was fading away rapidly. She had tried her best. Suddenly, a bird cry echoed through the air. Menki felt a heat wave approached and supported her from under. She opened her eyes wide, turned around, and saw an indifferent face. That familiar appearance put her in a daze. You're back? Menki murmured. Bu Fang glanced at her and then at the chains. He took out his dragon bone kitchen knife and slashed it down, cutting the four chains in a flash. Then, the flaming wings spread out behind his back. He patted Shrimpy, who was resting on his shoulder. The latter immediately transformed into a stream of light, put Meng Qi on its back, then sped away. After that, Bu Fang held the dragon bone kitchen knife and slowly turned to face the five nether prison experts in the air. He breathed a sigh of relief and said, I finally made it. End of chapter. Chapter 1165. Bu Fang's Exquisite Flaming Palm. I finally made it. Bu Fang's feigned voice resounded through the sky. Although it wasn't loud, it was clearly heard by everyone. Meng Qi was carried by Shrimpy. After some time, she had regained some strength and sat up. Since Shrimpy flew very fast, her hair whipped around in the wind. Her beautiful eyes were fixed on Bu Fang in the distance, bursting into a blaze of light and hope at the latter's appearance. She knew where Bu Fang had gone. To save the seed of the immortal tree, he went to Earth Prison in search of the Spring of Life. His return was equivalent to the return of the immortal cooking realm's hope. 
Did he really find the spring of life and return with hope? Meng Qi looked eagerly at Bu Fang. She sincerely hoped it was true. She didn't want him to come back empty-handed. Shrimpy flew at high speed and reached the immortal city in a flash. After placing Meng Qi on the wall, it rose again in a streak of golden light and sped off toward Bu Fang. Eyes were cast at Meng Qi from the surroundings, which gave her a pause. She looked around and found that there was a look of horror in the eyes of every immortal chef on the wall. She sighed. If the immortal cooking realm could survive this time, she felt it needed major reform. After staying in a safe and peaceful environment for too long, everyone's pluck and courage had already worn away. Just then, it occurred to her that Bu Fang was up against five nether prison experts, and the weakest of them was at eight-star true immortal realm. Could he cope with opponents of such formidable strength? At the thought of this, her face turned pale. A gust of wind blew over and stirred Bu Fang's hair, causing the velvet cord that bound his hair to unravel. His vermilion robe had turned fiery red, and two pairs of flaming wings spread behind his back. In his hand, he held the dragon bone kitchen knife, which emitted golden light as if it was made of pure gold. Oh. So there is still someone in the immortal cooking realm who has the courage to stand up? It turns out that there are still men in the immortal cooking realm. Haha. <laughs> After letting a woman protect them for so long, it's time for a man to show up and get himself killed. The nether prison experts burst out laughing and looked at Bu Fang with mocking faces. To them, he was merely an ant coming out to die. They could not sense how strong his cultivation base was. Even so, they didn't take him seriously because apart from the realm lord and several city lords, there was no one in the immortal cooking realm that could pose a threat to them, or so they thought. Finally made it? Haha. <laughs> Are you saying that you finally made it to get yourself killed? One of the nether prison experts said mockingly. The next moment, a formidable aura spread out of him, while stars flashed above his head. Then, he transformed into a stream of light and sped toward Bu Fang. Bu Fang floated in mid-air and looked indifferently at that expert. The flaming wings behind his back flapped and stirred up gusts of strong wind. Slowly, he raised the dragon bone kitchen knife. The sound of heartbeats resounded across the sky as the heart of cooking path pulsated. A slash. Bu Fang said faintly. Right after that, a gust of wind stirred his vermilion robe, making it flicker like fire. What an arrogant guy. The nether prison expert roared. A plume of dark nether energy arose into the sky. With both fists placed next to his waist, he rushed out. The next moment, two savage beasts dashed at Bu Fang. Roar. Roar. The beast's roars echoed through the air, while a terrifying pressure pervaded the sky. All the people in the city were cowering in the corners of the city walls, not daring to breathe too loud. Even city lord Meng Qi clenched her fists nervously. Cutting immortal style. Bu Fang swung his dragon bone kitchen knife down. His eyes flashed, and a mighty burst of true energy exploded out of him. Suddenly, the roars and cries of a dragon, a tiger, a bird, and a tortoise rang out in his mind, causing waves to rise in his spirit sea. At the same time, the golden text shone blindingly. The next moment, his divine perception swept out like a tornado, striking the mind of the nether prison expert like a shockwave. It exploded in his spirit sea, making him look somewhat dazed and blurring his consciousness. Even then, a huge shadow emerged behind Bu Fang, making a straight cut with the kitchen knife in its hand. The sky seemed to have been torn by this kitchen knife. In everyone's eyes, the knife was extremely brilliant. It slashed down in a flash, cutting the two beasts made of nether energy and the nether prison expert in half. Blood sprayed in all directions. The expert's eyes were filled with disbelief when his body suddenly exploded with a boom. He was killed. Everyone was stunned. Both the nether prison experts and the immortal chefs in the immortal city were stupefied. He had slain a nine-star true immortal realm expert with just one slash who the hell was he? Why was he so strong? He is. The great demon king. Someone recognized Bu Fang and shouted out loud. Ah. Uh, oh, yes, he really is the great demon king. Heaven. When did the great demon king become so strong? He killed a nine-star true immortal with one slash. The great demon king is invincible. The immortal city was completely boiling. Everyone's face turned red with excitement. In their minds, the great demon king was a miracle, and now, his appearance had brought them another miracle. He had just killed a nine-star true immortal alone. Was this really something that the great demon king, who was merely a one-star true immortal realm expert, could achieve? No, no, no. The great demon king is no longer a one-star true immortal. Someone shouted excitedly. 
Look, the great demon king's aura is far beyond that of a one-star true immortal. Even city lord Menki seems to be slightly weaker than him. Could it be that? Could it be that the great demon king is a nine-star true immortal now? How did the great demon king manage to break through so fast? Everyone was shocked. Someone was able to determine Bu Fang's cultivation base. He was already a nine-star true immortal realm expert. Bu Fang paid no heed to the shocking discussion down below. After killing a nether prison expert with a slash, he turned his eyes to the other few experts in the distance. We've underestimated you. However, your resistance is futile. The destruction of the immortal cooking realm has been foreordained. You can't change anything. One of the nether prison experts said coldly. Oh. Bu Fang's indifferent reply gave them a pause. If you surrender now, we'll spare your life. The expert added. Bu Fang gave that expert a strange look. Do you think I'm stupid? When he had finished, he opened his mouth. A mass of white flames suddenly darted out and turned into a sea of fire that covered the whole sky. After that, he raised his hand. The sea of fire spread out instantly, transforming into a white flaming palm that blotted the sky. Using his divine perception, he slapped the palm down at the remaining four nether prison experts. Bu Fang had long wanted to feel what it was like to kill someone with a slap, but his strength had always been relatively weak. Lord Dog was invincible with his exquisite paw, and now, Bu Fang had finally learned the exquisite flaming palm. Boom. The hot flames blasted toward the targets with terrible power. The four nether prison experts unleashed nether energy, trying to resist. To their horror, however, the flame could even burn their nether energy. Damn it. What kind of fire is this? roared one of the experts. Without hesitation, they shot away in the distance like arrows. However, as soon as they moved, their pupils constricted. In the direction they were heading, Bu Fang, in his fiery scarlet vermilion robe, looked back at them coolly, then raised a black wok in his hand and threw it at them. The black wok grew in size as it flew, shattering the void. The next moment, the four experts were hit by the black wok. Bam. 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 The black wok kissed their faces intimately, filling the air with the sound of breaking bones. In an instant, their noses were smashed, and a myriad of sensations poured into their minds. They felt so depressed that they almost vomited blood. Boom. 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 The impact knocked them flying backward and crashing into the city wall, taking away their abilities to fight again. They were defeated by a walk. The flames that had blotted the sky disappeared and turned into a tiny spark that danced on Bu Fang's palm. Well, I'll leave the rest to you, said Bu Fang faintly, holding the black walk in his hand. He planned to leave immediately and head toward the fourth layer. He was a little anxious. In his divine perception, the immortal cooking realm's will of the great path was steadily weakening. He had to find realm lord Ditai quickly and help him revive the seed of the immortal tree. A group of people climbed out of the immortal city and pulled the four men down the city wall. The immortal chefs, who had long been gripped by fear, were now burning with rage. They actually thought of fighting back, but their abilities were limited. Now, these four enemies had become the outlet of their anger and frustration. All kinds of attacks fell one after another. The four men, who had lost their abilities to resist, could only watch as the rain of attacks engulfed them. At this moment, the fear and panic among the people completely disappeared. On the wall, city lord Meng Qi looked at Bu Fang with complicated eyes. She had been worried about how to prevent the spread of fear in the immortal city. She found it hard to believe that the problem was so effortlessly solved by Bu Fang. Suddenly, Bu Fang turned around, frowned, and looked at the entrance. A plume of nether energy spread out of it once again, as if some horrible existence was about to come out. The invaders were coming again. Everyone stopped their movements and looked up at the entrance in the sky. Bu Fang floated up with the flaming wings spread on his back. He lifted a hand and patted Foxy on his shoulder, who was eager to do something. The next moment, several steaming golden explosive meatballs appeared and hovered around him. Roar! Roar! Finally, hordes of nether prison experts poured out of the entrance and rushed toward the bottom, covering the sky like countless locusts. The immortal chefs in the city were all trembling in fear, while a nether prison expert, who was beaten black and blue and covered in blood, burst out laughing. You're dead. You all have to die. The nether prison army will slaughter everything in the immortal cooking realm. Bam. He had barely said a few words when he was, once again, pushed to the ground and beaten by the immortal chefs. Foxy sniffed at the meatballs floating around Bu Fang, narrowed its eyes, and licked its lips. 
it wanted to eat them, but Bu Fang had fed it too much just now and told it that he would need its help later, so it didn't need to attack now. Bu Fang bit through seven explosive meatballs, then threw them all out. Like golden meteors, the seven steaming meatballs sped toward the nether prison experts emerging from the entrance. Destruction was fast approaching. End of chapter. Chapter 1166. The return of Whitey and the attack of the fifth layer. The nether prison army rushed out of the entrance like locusts, making one's scalp tingle. However, it was nothing to Bu Fang. Seven steaming explosive meatballs streaked across the sky, like seven meteors with long tails. Bu Fang found that these meatballs were more suitable for attacking a large group of enemies. The chain reaction caused by its instantaneous explosions was a nightmare, especially for enemies that came in great numbers. Nether energy billowed and rocked. As soon as the nether prison experts squeezed out of the entrance, they found Bu Fang. Of course, they saw the explosive meatballs as well, but in these experts' eyes, they were just ordinary meatballs. In just a twinkle, the meatballs had fallen into the crowd. Boom. 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 With several explosions in succession, an astonishing explosive force erupted while columns of flames surged into the sky. The destructive waves caused by the chain explosion of seven meatballs seemed to destroy everything, and in an instant, the sky was engulfed by a boundless sea of fire. The immortal chefs, who were beating the four poor guys, stopped and looked up at the sky. They saw a mushroom cloud rising into the sky and spreading slowly. What a horrible explosion! Was the first thought that came to everyone's mind as they gasped. The great demon king had become more and more terrifying. Could all the nether prison experts have been killed by just seven explosive meatballs? Bu Fang stood in midair with his hands clasped behind his back, the flaming wings still spread out. He was not in a hurry to attack again. He just looked at the rolling flaming clouds patiently. Soon, the flaming clouds dissipated. One nether prison expert after another fell and crashed into the ground, shrieking and howling. Bu Fang looked on indifferently, the expression on his face remained unchanged. Although the lethality of seven explosive meatballs was tremendous, it was impossible for them to kill all the enemies. The perishing pot might have done it. With a thought, a magic array appeared next to him. Shrimpy, laying on his shoulder, brightened up instantly. The array began to spin. Soon, lightning arcs could be seen darting out of it. Then, with a mechanical sound, Whitey floated out of the array. Whitey had finally completed its evolution. The lightning on its body was filled with shocking destructive force, and its mechanical eyes shone like stars. Whitey, it's time to exercise your body, Bu Fang glanced at it and said faintly. Upon hearing his words, the metal wings on Whitey's back spread out, and a suit of armor emerged on its body. Then, it took the war god stick out of the black hole in its stomach, which had lightning arcs dancing across its fiery scarlet surface. The next moment, Whitey fixed its flashing mechanic eyes at those nether prison experts who survived the explosive meatballs. Shrimpy gave a squeak and shot into the sky, transforming into a giant. Whitey stepped on Shrimpy's back and sped away, heading toward the nether prison experts in the distance. These nether prison experts were very confused. It was not easy for them to enter the third layer of the immortal cooking realm, but as soon as they arrived, they were struck by a terrible explosion that killed many of them. Those who survived were mostly nine-star true immortal realm experts. The survivors had tough fleshly bodies. Even though the explosive meatballs contained the will of the Great Path, it was not that easy to kill them. Damn it. How dare you set a trap for us. Unforgivable. All of you will die. The remaining nether prison experts gnashed their teeth. The fact that they were almost completely wiped out it infuriated them. Whitey remained standing on Shrimpy. The look in its eyes didn't change. Bu Fang looked on with great interest. He was curious to know what level Whitey's fighting capacity had reached now. Boom. One tornado after another rose into the sky. The combat power of these nether prison nine star true immortals was quite amazing. However, Whitey was not in the least afraid. It didn't hesitate to sweep out the war god stick in its grip. All of a sudden, Shrimpy's body burst into lightning. Perhaps because of the lightning, its speed increased abruptly propelling the two of them straight through the void. The stick instantly smashed the head of another prison expert. The sudden increase in Shrimpy's speed shocked everyone. Its movement, which was as fast as lightning, had caught all the nether prison experts unprepared. Even the immortal chefs on the wall gasped. They naturally knew the great demon king's earth immortal puppet had shown extraordinary talents in the immortal chef tournament. However, no matter how powerful it was, it was only an earth immortal puppet. Why could it kill a nine-star true immortal? 
had it advanced to a heaven immortal puppet? But even a heaven immortal puppet might not be so strong, right? Sure enough, anything impossible would become possible when they got close to the great demon king. Whitey's flashy eyes were cold and merciless. Bu Fang stared at it. He felt more and more that Whitey was beginning to have human emotions. Of course, he didn't mind at all. Even if Whitey really became a human being, it was still Whitey. Bolts of lightning flashed and streaked across the air as the war god stick grew larger and larger in the eyes of those nether prison experts. With a series of explosive noises, one head after another burst like watermelons. Before long, all the nether prison experts had fallen. Whitey held the war god stick with one hand as lightning arcs danced across its surface. Bu Fang was very satisfied. It seemed he had not prepared the imperial feast in Goddess City for nothing. After eating so many lightning punishments, Whitey finally advanced to a stronger level. Whitey, fight your way into the fifth layer, Bu Fang said. Whitey nodded. It swung the metal wings on its back and sped toward the entrance, carrying Shrimpy with it. In just a flash, both of them had disappeared. Bu Fang exhaled softly, then took a step forward and flew up toward the entrance as well. Menki clenched her teeth. She wanted to follow and fight along with Bu Fang, but she was severely wounded now and had lost her ability to fight again. She would be a burden if she tagged along, and it was not what she wanted. Therefore, she could only pray that Bu Fang could create another miracle, that he could save the immortal cooking realm from destruction, and that he, indeed, had brought back the spring of life. After entering the fourth layer, Bu Fang finally understood why Meng Qi brought the immortal chefs in the fourth layer to the third layer. The sky was filled with cracks, looking like it was about to shatter. It had become so low that it was as if you could touch it with your hand. The air was filled with constant rumbling as the fifth layer kept falling down and was about to crash into the fourth layer. The situation had become dire. Bu Fang narrowed his eyes. Without wasting time, he followed Shrimpy and Whitey, who had transformed into a bolt of lightning, and flew straight toward the entrance to the fifth layer. Boom. Whitey had just arrived at the entrance of the fifth layer when he began to fight the nether prison experts. Clearly, the nether prison experts had sealed up the entrance. According to Meng Qi, City Lord Zhu and Realm Lord Di Tai were fighting the nether prison experts in the fifth layer. Bu Fang had to find Realm Lord Di Tai because he needed the latter's immortal tree seed. The blockage made Whitey roll its mechanic eyes. The next moment, the war god stick grew thick and huge, as if it was given life, then smashed toward the entrance. The sound of bombing resounded incessantly. The stick shoved right through the entrance. Whitey placed its huge palm on the stick. It seemed that it intended to suppress the opponents by force. Meanwhile, many nether prison experts were resisting the war god stick on the other side. They had to pour in all their strength to barely stop it from coming through. Bu Fang flapped the flaming wings on his back and flew next to Whitey, then reached out his slender and fair arm and pressed the palm on the war god stick. A tingling sensation caused by the lightning flowed into his hand through the stick. Bu Fang slightly arched his brows as he sent all his strength into his palm. Rumble. A mighty force exploded. The next moment, the roars of the Tauties emerged from his hand as the bandage on his arm unraveled. Soon, the war god stick was out of the blockage. The stick crashed down on the nether prison experts, throwing them into confusion and knocking them backward. Some of them were coughing blood, while some had their arms broken. After rushing into the fifth layer, the war god stick transformed back to its original size and was held by Whitey. The entrance of the fifth layer was already in ruins, and the air was filled with an atmosphere of death and destruction. Bu Fang glanced around with his hands clasped behind his back. The once prosperous fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm was now littered with wreckage and destruction. Its entrance was clearly destroyed many times, but in the end, it was still open by the enemy. At this moment, violent energy fluctuations were spreading in the distance. Bu Fang turned his gaze in that direction and saw Realm Lord Di Tai locked in a fierce battle with a giant devil. Realm Lord Di Tai was shrouded in golden light. Apparently, he had borrowed the immortal cooking realm's will of the great path. The battle was very bitter. Suddenly, Bu Fang turned around and looked into another direction. There, City Lord Zhu was surrounded by many nether prison experts. He was bathed in blood and seemed to have lost consciousness, barely leaning against a black walk. The look in Bu Fang's eyes turned complicated. He glanced at Realm Lord Di Tai, then at City Lord Zhu. After that, he transformed into a flaming vermilion bird, rose into the sky, and sped toward City Lord Zhu. Come. You bunch of. Bastards. I, I can still fight. 
Come here. Let me kill you with. With. My fingers. City Lord Zhu murmured almost unconsciously with blood trickling down his nose and mouth. His true energy had run out, and now, he had no more strength to fight. However, the nether prison experts around him seemed to hesitate. They didn't dare to attack rashly and just stared at him cautiously, because no one knew if he still had some trump cards that could kill them altogether. Suddenly, a sharp whistle approached. A nether prison expert, who was about to kill City Lord Zhu, felt a chill run down his back. The next moment, a stick came crashing down in front of him. Bu Fang, Whitey, and Shrimpy had arrived. The nether prison experts instantly shifted their eyes to Bu Fang and the others. Boom. 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 Plumes of nether energy thrust into the sky. Whitey, I'll let you handle them. Don't strip them. Just. Kill them all, Bu Fang patted Whitey on the stomach. Whitey's eyes turned crimson in an instant as if it had changed into another mode. With a slashing sound, the metal wings on its back spread, propelling him forward. The war god stick began to spin rapidly in its hand like a wheel, stirring up gusts of strong wind. Opposite it, the nether prison experts shouted and cried. Streams of nether energy rained down on it, but they were all blown back. The next moment, Whitey fell into the nether prison army. A mass slaughter had begun. Whitey kept swinging the war god stick. Shrieks and howls rang incessantly as one nether prison expert after another was knocked flying back, coughing blood. Bu Fang walked toward City Lord Zhu. Soon, he came next to him. City Lord Zhu had already lost his consciousness. Blood kept dripping down his nose and mouth. Bu Fang sighed. He flipped his palm and took out a crystal fruit of life, then shoved it into City Lord Zhu's mouth. As the fruit went down his throat, City Lord Zhu's wounds began to heal at a rate visible to the naked eye. What? This guy has an ally? Why put up a last-ditch fight? The immortal cooking realm is decaying, and none of you can save it. Just face your death. Voices rang out not far away from Bu Fang. Two half-step sacred realm experts were staring at him with mocking looks. They were supposed to fight realm lord Tai, but after the latter broke through the little saint realm and locked the giant devil in a fierce fight, they had nothing else to do. Now, when they saw Bu Fang arrive, they quickly came over to fight him. The heaven immortal puppet in the distance had already been dealt with by another half-step sacred realm expert. They wanted to wipe out all hopes of the immortal cooking realm. They could tell that Bu Fang was at nine-star true immortal realm. He was strong, but since they were half-step sacred realm experts, they didn't take him seriously at all. Without waiting for Bu Fang to say anything, the two half-step sacred realm experts moved. They transformed into two streams of black light and appeared in front of Bu Fang in just a flash. Killing intent pervaded the air as terrifying nether energy swirled and spread out of their bodies. As half-step sacred realm experts, they could incorporate the will of the Great Path in their attacks, which made them extremely formidable. Their eyes were cold, and their killing intent towered into the sky. Together, each of them took out a black knife filled with nether prison's will of the Great Path and slashed down toward Bu Fang. They wanted to kill Bu Fang with just a single slash. End of chapter. Chapter 1167 Bu Fang kills half-step sacred realm experts. After taking the crystal fruit of life, City Lord Zhu regained consciousness. There seemed to be a surge of life energy in his belly, which made him feel much more energetic. Crystal fruits of life were the companion product of the spring of life. It contained extremely powerful vitality and was a kind of pseudo-sacred great immortal ingredient. Naturally, it was very effective at saving one's life. City Lord Zhu opened his eyes. His expression became somewhat complicated when he saw Bu Fang at his side. He never thought it would be Bu Fang who came to save him. He had been at odds with this little chef before. A moment later, he saw the approaching two half-step sacred realm experts. His face turned bloodless instantly, and he tried to warn Bu Fang, B. Be careful. Against these half-step sacred realm experts, even he was powerless to fight back. Don't worry, Bu Fang said lightly as he glanced at City Lord Zhu. The next moment, he turned and looked at the two half-step sacred realm experts. Their auras were very strong. With the long knives in their hands, they slashed out two beams of pitch-black knife energy, which tore through the air, as if to cut everything to pieces. The pressure emanating from them made City Lord Zhu, whose face had just regained some of its color, tremble. A half-step saint was a rehearsal for achieving a little saint. Those at this stage already had a basic control over the will of the Great Path. The will of the Great Path was a mysterious thing. If a person could control it, he could raise his fighting capacity to a higher level. 
In fact, half-step saints were just stronger nine-star true immortals, but their strength lay in their ability to control some of the will of the Great Path, which allowed them to fight with stronger power. It was the same principle as Bu Fang's explosive meatballs and perishing pot. The amount of the will of the Great Path they could borrow was very little, but it was very pure. Bu Fang's expression remained unchanged. His vermilion robe whipped noisily in the wind as the sharp sword energy came straight at him, looking like it would cut his skin to pieces. Now that Bu Fang's cultivation base had broken through to the nine-star true immortal realm, his mental force had climbed to a very scary level. Although he had not yet become a little saint, he was just one step away. In fact, his mental force was much stronger than that of an ordinary half-step saint. Reaching the realm of little saints was a great milestone. Once a person became a little saint, he would be considered a supreme existence. Being able to control the will of the Great Path was a very powerful ability. Bu Fang had always given people the image of a gentle and calm cook, but this time, he planned to go crazy. When he saw City Lord Zhu fight so many enemies alone and still held on even when his energy was exhausted, his bloodlust was ignited. He took out his dragon bone kitchen knife. In the face of the two approaching sword energies, his eyes became extremely sharp. All of a sudden, he opened his mouth and breathed out a plume of white flame, which instantly spread out into a sea of fire. The next moment, the knife in his hand tore the fire apart. Even then, a majestic figure emerged behind him, holding a kitchen knife and cutting down. The knife slashed down and collided with the two half-step saints' attacks. A terrible explosion broke out instantly. The two half-step saints stood firm, while Bu Fang flew backward, tearing a deep trench in the ground and falling in the distance. He looked up with a grave look in his eyes. The strength of a half-step saint was indeed much stronger than a nine-star true immortal. However, Bu Fang was not without any confidence. He was not a man accustomed to being beaten just like that. He took a step, cracking the ground as he propelled himself forward, zooming through the air in a blurry shadow. The next instant, he was in front of the two half-step saints. His hair waved messily in the strong wind. A slash. Cutting immortal style. He attacked with the peak of his knife skill. The knife, as if slashed down from the sky, reached them in a flash. Boom. It was a mighty cut, as powerful as the attack of a half-step saint. The two half-step saints were shocked and immediately countered the attack. This time, it was an even match, and all three of them were knocked flying backward. The two half-step saints gasped. They couldn't believe that this chef of the immortal cooking realm could be so freakish that he could forcibly oppress them with just the strength of a nine-star true immortal. It was something that only the best genius could do. How could this chef have the talent and strength of a top genius? The two half-step saints exchanged a look and saw the horror in each other's eyes. We must kill him. If he is allowed to grow up, he will definitely become a disaster for us. They made up their minds in an instant. The next moment, they raised their long knives, which began to emanate waves of terrifying nether energy. At the same time, the will of the Great Path churned over their heads. They had attracted the nether prison's will of the Great Path. Bu Fang narrowed his eyes. He felt as if a pair of eyes belonging to a primordial existence was watching him, and it made his skin crawl. Is this the nether prison's will of the Great Path? Since it is the will of the Great Path, it naturally needs to be opposed by the will of the Great Path thought Bu Fang as he stared at the two half-step saints. They roared, and their auras seemed to have fused. A rumbling sound echoed through the air. Soon, the will of the great path they unleashed merged and turned into a knife light. The knife light was translucent and so sharp that it kept cutting through the void, causing rifts to constantly appear around its blade. It was so powerful that it seemed capable of cutting the whole immortal cooking realm in half with a single slash. Bu Fang took a deep breath. The next moment, the texts in his spirit sea burst into light, each seemed to come to life and kept beating. Then, his spirit sea swelled with the roars and cries of a dragon, a tiger, a bird, and a tortoise. The spirits of the god of cooking set also released their auras, pushing his mental force to a more terrifying level. The level was almost half a foot into the realm of little saints. For a long time, Bu Fang's mental force had been stronger than his true energy. Perhaps because the bottleneck of the little saint realm was too tough to break through, his mental force was not too far ahead of his true energy now. However, when he used it with all his might, its power was still extremely horrible. Boom. A beam of light, condensed of his mental force, rose from Bu Fang's head. In the distance, realm lord Di Tai, who was fighting the giant devil, turned his head and looked over, just in time to see Bu Fang unleashing his formidable aura. 
He was slightly taken aback before bursting with joy. Bu Fang he's back. Did he bring back the spring of life? Realm Lord Di Tai's face lit up with joy and excitement. The giant devil also sensed Bu Fang's mental force. However, he simply ignored it, not interested in the least with someone who was not even a little saint. He punched. Dark nether energy turned into numerous snakes and darted toward Realm Lord Di Tai, trying to completely devour him. The waves of air stirred up by the mental force kept blowing at Bu Fang's hair, making them all stand up. Bu Fang flipped his palm and produced many golden explosive meatballs, which floated around him. Two half-step saints were not worthy of his perishing pot. It was too powerful. He only had the confidence to use it once, and when he was done, he would become weak for a long time. After taking that into consideration, he decided that explosive meatballs were enough to deal with two half-step saints. If one was not enough, he could always use two or more. Soon, 14 explosive meatballs appeared, swirling around him in a golden circle. Controlling 14 explosive meatballs at the same time was Bu Fang's current limit, and it was after he had pushed his mental force to its strongest level. In the distance, the two half-step saints felt a chill coming toward them, but they didn't flinch. Even then, the knife light that fused their will of the great path came slashing down. Before it arrived, its energy had cut the ground into pieces. Die. They must kill geniuses like Bu Fang, or there would be no end to their troubles. Bu Fang floated in midair. His fiery scarlet vermilion robe fluttered, and the flaming wings on his back flashed. He raised his hand and flicked the meatballs around him with his finger. In a split second, 14 meatballs flew in a straight line toward the terrible knife light. Foxy, who was lying on Bu Fang's shoulder, narrowed its eyes, covered its ears, and curled up its tail. Boom a deafening explosion burst out together with a blinding golden light, with waves of terrifying energy spreading in all directions. Countless nearby experts were blown away by the blast, tumbling away and falling in the distance with confused looks. When they looked up and saw the explosion, they all sucked in breaths of cold air. Even City Lord Zhu was dumbfounded. He felt as if his heart were being squeezed by a giant hand. Bu Fang, who was floating in front of him, seemed to have transformed into a dazzling god at this moment. He's so strong. When did this little chef become? So formidable? He thought. Fear filled the hearts of the two half-step saints. Their attack was imbued with the will of the great path, but why was it so easily blocked by this guy? Also, were those exploding things really meatballs? How could meatballs have this power? There are six more. Bu Fang murmured as he dropped his arm to his waist. The next moment, the sound of something sped through the air rang out again. In the center of the explosion, streaks of golden light flew through the cloud of dust and smoke. How's that possible? A chill enveloped the two half-step saints. They could not believe what they saw. The streaks of golden light came in a flash. Their eyes grew white as they watched the meatballs floating in front of them. Damn it. They immediately wanted to turn around and run away, but as soon as they thought of that, the remaining six explosive meatballs exploded. They had just attacked with an ultimate skill and were low in energy and strength, so they were completely unable to resist the power of the explosion. In an instant, flames engulfed both half-step saints. Their bodies became twisted as they were being thrown away like two bullets. Bu Fang breathed a sigh of relief. With a thought, the Black Turtle Constellation Walk appeared. Holding it with one hand, he stepped up and sped away in a beam of light. In the distance, the two half-step saints fell to the ground and created a huge pit, coughing blood with a dull look in their eyes. Suddenly, Bu Fang descended from the sky with a black walk. The black walk kept growing larger in their eyes. Boom. In a twinkling, the walk smashed the head of one of the half-step saints deep into the ground. That frightened the other half-step saint, causing him to tremble violently. Bu Fang slowly turned his head and glanced expressionlessly at the frightened half-step saint. Don't worry, everyone has a share. As soon as he finished speaking, he raised the walk in his hand and threw it hard in the poor guy's face. With a thud, blood spurted from the half-step saint's nose and mouth, then he was knocked flying away. Bu Fang went up to him, lifted the black turtle constellation walk over his head, and let go. The walk, weighing more than 10,000 kilograms, crashed down with a boom, pushing his head deep into the ground. With just one walk, Bu Fang killed two half-step saints. The nether prison experts around felt a chill rising in their hearts. In the distance, City Lord Zhu looked stunned. He glanced at Bu Fang's black turtle constellation walk, and then at the black walk in his hand. They were both walks, but why was the difference so great? 
The fall of the two half-step saints finally attracted the giant devil's attention. He didn't expect that there was someone in the immortal cooking realm besides the realm lord who could kill half-step saints. He turned his gaze to Bu Fang, who was clad in a fiery scarlet robe and was staring at him with an indifferent look. His eyes narrowed. That familiar feeling. It's you. You're the one who blew up my arm. Die. The giant devil bellowed as he punched the ground with both fists. He roared, and a terrifying blast exploded instantly, knocking Realm Lord Detai away. At the same time, his roar transformed into a powerful bomb and shot directly at Bu Fang. End of chapter. Chapter 1168. The Ruthless Whitey's White Jump. Whitey stepped on Shrimpy and shot like lightning toward the crowd, holding the War God stick in one hand. Lightning arcs jumped across the stick's surface and soon darted up its arm. Its body exuded a strong murderous aura, and its eyes had turned red, as if flames were burning in them, making it look very scary. In a flash, Whitey crashed into the crowd. A group of nether prison experts shouted and began to attack. All kinds of energy attack condensed of nether energy rained down on Whitey, trying to shatter it in an instant. Whitey was just a puppet. However, none of them dared to look down on any puppet. There were nine clans in Nether Prison, including the Giant Devils, the Nine Revolution Nether Chefs, and the Sword Demons. One of the clans specialized in puppets. They were called Nether Puppeteers, and their puppets were called Nether Puppets. They were good at using all kinds of precious natural materials to make puppets, and some of them, who took on an unorthodox path, would dig the graves of ancient experts and use those experts' bodies to make Nether Puppets. According to their secret techniques, the older the corpses, the stronger the nether puppets would be. There was a time when the nether prison was ruled by the fear of nether puppeteers. Therefore, every expert in nether prison would not underestimate any puppet, even if it was not a nether puppet. Of course, it didn't make any difference to Whitey whether they underestimated it or not. All it had to do was kill the enemies because Bu Fang had specifically told it not to strip off any clothes. Its scarlet eyes made it look like a beast who had gone berserk. The war god stick swung, filling the void with a thousand sticks, each of which contained powerful lightning. Boom. Boom. When struck by it, any nether prison expert with slightly weaker strength would explode to pieces. Only nine star true immortals could withstand a few hits. Whitey's advancement this time was huge. Of course, since Bu Fang's cultivation base had improved, its fighting capacity soared as well. With the growth of Bu Fang's strength, the relationship between Whitey's fighting capacity and his strength became more and more blurred, but his advancement would still imperceptibly improve Whitey's fighting capacity. It was an obscure and strange relationship. The war god stick struck the ground hard, bending as it catapulted Whitey ahead like a cannonball. By the time it crashed to the ground, its palm had turned into a huge barrel. Terrible energy gathered in the barrel while countless lightning arcs moved across its surface, giving off a brilliant blue glow. With a boom, the energy thrust out of the barrel and hit several nether prison experts, turning them into puddles of blood and gore. Whitey, who had activated the killing mode, was like a demon coming out of the abyss. Filthy animal. A half-step saint roared. He pushed his feet at the ground and rushed over in an instant, throwing a powerful punch at Whitey. Holding the war god stick in one hand, Whitey went for the punch. Rumble. The half-step saint's fist and Whitey's stick collided, producing blasts that spread in all directions. In the distance, one nether prison expert after another poured over crazily. Whitey's mechanical eyes flickered. Suddenly, the metal wings on its back waved. Thousands of sharp blades shot out from the wings, flying away in all directions and slashing at every nether prison expert's body. Blood mist spewed from these experts' chests. The current Whitey was a great killing machine. The next moment, it flung the war god stick into the crowd that was charging at it, then raised its fist and threw a punch at the half-step saint. The man and the puppet fought each other fiercely in mid-air. It was a violent exchange of blows. Unlike Bu Fang's attacks, Whitey and the half-step saint both chose melee attacks over ranged bombardment. They did not fight like Bu Fang, who had blown the enemies to death by just throwing a few meatballs from a distance. Whitey's movements were very agile. Although it looked rather bulky, it was not weaker than the nether prison half-step saint when fighting. Their fists crashed into one another. The half-step saint's eyes shrank. He roared as his blood and true energy moved like lightning in his body. Boom. Boom. The man and the puppet exchanged several punches, causing the ground to explode continuously. Whitey took a step backward and crumbled the ground. The half-step saint also fell to the ground. 
The next moment, he jumped up the air again like a dragon and thrust his leg toward Whitey. The leg contained terrifying nether energy, which made it so strong that it seemed capable of bringing down mountains. Whitey's mechanical eyes buzzed as its arm twisted and turned into a large hacking knife. Then, the knife slashed upward and collided with the half-step saint's leg, sending sparks everywhere and filling the air with a deafening clang. 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 Whitey's hacking speed was extremely fast, making it almost impossible for people to see the knife. The half-step saint, on the other hand, was obviously very good at melee combat, for he was not weaker than Whitey at all. The two of them fought fiercely. After using knives, they fought with fists again. Then, it changed to elbows, fists, and legs. All kinds of melee techniques were used. Boom. The half-step saint's elbow struck Whitey's chest hard, knocking it onto the ground like a cannonball. The nether prison experts around them cheered. The half-step saint stood proudly in mid-air, grinning from ear to ear while panting violently. His hair stood on end like steep needles. Suddenly, Whitey jumped up from the ruin, appeared in front of the half-step saint, and grabbed his head with both hands. Then, it raised its knee and smashed it into the latter's face. The sound of bone cracking echoed out. The half-step saint's blood spilled across the air as he kept shrieking. His miserable voice tingled many people's scalps. Boom. 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 Furiously, he threw out his fists. His punches smashed through the air as he kept hitting at Whitey's body. However, Whitey's mechanical eyes didn't change at all. Instead, it just attacked continuously with its knee, causing half of the expert's face to twist. Then, it grabbed his head with one hand and flung him hard toward the ground. The ground caved in with a thud. As the half-step saint coughed blood, a savage look appeared in his eyes. He thought of defeating this puppet through melee combat, but he didn't expect that it almost killed him. Wiping the blood on his face with a hand, he gave Whitey a ferocious glance and waved both hands. The next moment, numerous sharp daggers emerged around him. You made me do this. I'm going to dismantle you. The half-step saint roared as one dagger after another shot forward, turning into a long dragon that coiled up around Whitey in a flash. That gave Whitey a pause, but the scarlet gleam in its eyes became more intense. Suddenly, small holes opened up on its back, where flames came bursting out. White jump, Whitey's mechanical voice rang out. The next moment, it sped away, drawing a curved line in the air as it approached the half-step saint. Even as Whitey bolted forward, everything around it seemed to have stopped moving. The jump was as fast as teleportation. Rumble. The dragon made of daggers crashed down, but it missed the target. The half-step saint's eyes shrank. The next moment, he sucked in a cold breath the puppet was just less than one inch in front of him. Bam. Whitey lifted its huge palm and slapped the half-step saint on the chin, throwing him straight toward the sky. With a loud rumble, blue flames shot out of the holes on Whitey's back, producing a great thrust and blasts that rippled across the ground. The next moment, Whitey was flying right next to the half-step saint. The expert turned his head with difficulty. Through his blood-covered eyes, he saw Whitey's mechanical eyes. Whitey raised a hand and slapped him. Rumble. The half-step saint was thrown away. Whitey jumped again, appeared at the position where the half-step saint was heading, and threw out a fist. The expert was knocked flying back to where he came. Then, Whitey jumped once again and threw the half-step saint back again. The half-step saint was so aggrieved. Before he could even use the power of controlling the will of the Great Path, he was already abused by a puppet. This puppet was just too. Wild. His body was covered with gashes, and he felt as if all his bones were about to break. The half-step saint was utterly struck dumb as his blood spilled across the sky. After the brutal beating and continuous jumps, the blue flames on Whitey's back faded and could no longer provide it any thrust. Even then, it reached out both hands and grabbed the half-step saint's arms, flipping them over his head before it stepped on his back like how it stepped on Shrimpy. After that, it pressed a palm on the expert's head and sped toward the ground like a meteor. The half-step saint opened his eyes with difficulty. As he watched the ground get closer and closer, he felt a chill cover both his body and soul. No. No, a terrifying shriek echoed out. Whitey, stepping on the half-step saint's back, crashed deep into the ground like a cannonball. Boom the whole ground exploded, sending sand and rocks flying everywhere and kicking up a cloud of dust and smoke. Everyone was silent. As rocks fell, a bulky figure slowly walked out of the dust. It raised a hand, from which came a suction force. In a flash, the war god stick flew over from a distance like lightning and grabbed by Whitey. 
All the nether prison experts gasped and felt chills run down their backs. On the other side of the battlefield, Bu Fang retracted his gaze. After the latest evolution, Whitey didn't disappoint him. It did become much stronger. Roar. Bu Fang turned his eyes to the giant devil in the distance. At some point in time, the giant devil had changed his target to Bu Fang. After roaring, a bomb, which was made of nether energy and contained a scary aura, flew straight toward the ladder. The giant devil was a little saint. In Bu Fang's perception, his aura was much weaker than the city lord of Goddess City, the nether prison sword demon he met on the god banishing mountain, or even the six tailed fox and the nine tailed fox. He reckoned that this giant devil must have just stepped into the little saint realm. However, even if he was a fresh little saint, he was still a little saint. The threat of explosive meatballs to a little saint was negligible. Perhaps the only thing that could threaten a little saint was the perishing pot. Bu Fang watched as the nether energy bomb headed in his direction. A gust of strong wind came blowing over, causing his clothes to whip noisily. He narrowed his eyes and raised his hand. In his palm, a mass of white flames was burning quietly. Bu Fang unleashed his divine perception. In just a flash, the flames towered into the sky. His mental force rocked and spread, turning the white flames into a giant flaming net, which hung before him and tried to stop the bomb. Boom. The next moment, the nether energy bomb arrived and crashed into the flaming net. The impact instantly pushed a deep hole into the net. The bomb kept spinning in the net without losing its momentum as it went for Bu Fang. However, when it was about one meter from him, it was completely stopped by the flaming net and gradually stopped spinning. Bu Fang raised his hand and placed his palm on the flaming net. Then, a burst of hair-raising force exploded out of the palm. With a thud, the nether energy bomb in the flaming net was slapped back by him. As the bomb sped back, Bu Fang's body shot through the flaming net like an arrow, grabbed Foxy off his shoulder, and pointed its mouth straight at the giant devil. His next move was to bomb the little saint. End of chapter. Chapter 1169. The Full Power Perishing Pot. Is this guy crazy? Bu Fang's appearance had attracted everyone's eyes in the fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm. He had knocked back a little saint's attack with a flaming net and was rushing toward that little saint fearlessly. What was he planning to do? Was he trying to fight head-on against a little saint? But he was just a nine-star true immortal. Realm Lord Ditai was stunned by Bu Fang's series of thunderous stunts. However, the moment Bu Fang rushed out, he recovered his wits and quickly shouted to warn him. He didn't want Bu Fang to get punched to death by the giant devil. That was a little saint, and judging from his strength, he should be a one revolution little saint. Little saint was divided into nine revolutions. The gap between each revolution was enormous, and the difference between those levels was how one was able to control the will of the great path well. However, even if this giant devil was just a one revolution little saint, he was not someone who Bu Fang could deal with. The decaying of the immortal cooking realm had caused all the resources in the realm to be seized by the immortal tree. However, it still could not stop the immortal tree from withering. Realm Lord Ditai could have a chance to break through and become a little saint, but because of the resources, he didn't do it. Now, he was forced to make the breakthrough. However, it also hastened the immortal tree's destruction. If Bu Fang came back a little bit later, perhaps the whole immortal cooking realm would be completely destroyed. Realm Lord Ditai, bathed in golden light, took a step and wanted to help Bu Fang. However, as soon as he moved, the giant devil suddenly lifted a fist and threw a punch at him. Realm Lord D. Tai didn't expect that, and he quickly mustered his immortal energy to block. A thud rang out, then he was knocked flying away like a cannonball, crashing into the ground in the distance and creating a huge deep pit. Bu Fang glanced at Realm Lord D. Tai as he was knocked off his feet, then let out a soft sigh. The flaming wings on his back swung, propelling him faster toward his target. In just a flash, he had approached the giant devil. The giant devil was huge like a hill with a height of dozens of meters, and the roar he let out seemed to stir up a gust of strong wind. Boom. With a wave of his hand, the giant devil slapped away the terrifying bomb that Bu Fang had thrown at him. However, that bomb posed no threat to Bu Fang, since Bu Fang made it himself. You're the human who blew up my arm. Die. When the giant devil sensed a familiar aura on Bu Fang, he immediately flew into a rage. He was so furious that hot steam gushed from his nostrils. Even then, he waved his huge palm at Bu Fang in the void. He wanted to slap Bu Fang to death. Bu Fang floated in the void with Foxy in his arms. The little guy was constantly burping. 
Apparently, Bu Fang had fed her too much. He stroked Foxy's head and narrowed his eyes. He had no fear of the giant devil's pressure. With the system, he had no fear of any pressure. His figure flashed. The next moment, he disappeared from where he stood and dodged the giant devil's slap. Foxy, it's your turn. Fire. Foxy was the gift Bu Fang had been preparing to give the giant devil. The little fox had been waiting for this moment. After burping, she opened her mouth and wagged her tail. Then, golden light began to gather in her mouth. Boom. A stream of golden light shot out of her mouth like a meteor, dragging with it a golden tail as it sped through the void before hitting the giant devil in the arm. An explosion broke out with a boom. The giant devil's arm burst into flames as the explosion tore a large hole in it. It even took away a large piece of his cyan skin. Bu Fang's eyes lit up slightly. This giant devil's cultivation base was much weaker than the sword demon clan's little saint he met on God Vanishing Mountain. At the very least, their defenses were not on the same level. Boom. 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 Foxy couldn't stop as soon as she started to fire. Golden flames kept spewing out of her mouth. One golden blast after another blasted out of her mouth, dragging with them golden tails as they smashed into the giant devil's body. Boom. Boom. Amid the series of loud explosions, the giant devil howled at the top of his lungs. An energy blast might not be able to hurt him, but a rain of energy blasts would be more than enough to riddle his body. He was, after all, just a one-revolution little saint and had not yet cultivated his fleshly body to the level of invincibility. The giant devil kept retreating as he raised both hands to cover his body. However, the blast still kept falling and smashing at him, ripping his flesh and spilling his cyan blood. Aren't you going to kill me? Come and get me, Bu Fang said coolly as he held Foxy in his arms. The giant devil's enormous body kept being pushed back by the bombardment. Everyone looked at the scene with their mouths open in disbelief. In the ruin, Realm Lord D. Tai rolled over and got up. When he saw what was happening in the distance, he couldn't help but gasp. This? How's this even possible? Realm Lord D. Tai murmured in disbelief. It should be known that the giant devil was a little saint. Bu Fang was suppressing a little saint? And what was that thing in his hand? It looked like a fox who breathed flames. Boom. 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 The sound of the explosion kept ringing out. The frantic giant devil crouched as one explosive meatball after another fell on him. Even though he was a little saint, he could not withstand such a rapid bombardment. He felt somewhat aggrieved. It never occurred to him that he would be suppressed by a nine-star true immortal like this. His dignity as a little saint was almost gone. Narrowing his eyes, the giant devil punched the ground with both fists and jumped to his feet. Then, he threw his head back and roared. Roar. The roars were deafening and produced waves of air that swept out in all directions. After that, the giant devil leaped and threw his huge palm toward Bu Fang. Oh. He can still fight back? Bu Fang narrowed his eyes and frowned. The next moment, he stroked Foxy's head and said, Foxy, speed up the firing. The little fox's eyes lit up, then. Boom. 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 Her head nodded faster and faster as flames spewed out of her mouth. Streams of golden light filled the sky as those attacks came shooting down, completely engulfing the giant devil in just a flash. The whole fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm seemed to be enveloped in the violent explosion. The ground was shaking and crumbling, and columns of fire thrust into the sky while a huge mushroom cloud rose. After a long time, Foxy finally stopped spitting flames. She opened her mouth and belched. Wisps of smoke could be seen drifting out of it. The continuous nodding had dizzied her, filling her eyes with spinning circles. Bu Fang twitched the corner of his mouth, stroked Foxy's soft hair, then put her on his shoulder. He knew that Foxy should have spat all the explosive meatballs she had eaten. Looking at the flames that blotted the sky in the distance, Bu Fang's face grew extremely cold. As he hovered in midair, blasts came sweeping over and made his hair wave. All the nether prison experts' jaws dropped in shock. A little saint was killed just like that? Even Realm Lord D. Tai didn't know what to say. Where did Bu Fang find such a formidable fox? City Lord Zhu raised his hand and pinched his face, then held his fingers like a woman and waved excitedly. Was the invasion of Nether Prison over now? Of course, Bu Fang was not as optimistic as them. The giant devil was, after all, a little saint. He would not be so easily defeated. Roar. Sure enough, a roar echoed out from the mushroom cloud in the next instant. Suddenly, the giant devil jumped out of the flames, swinging his fists as he rushed toward Bu Fang. His eyes were red, filled with killing intent. 
damn humans. The giant devil kept roaring in a towering rage. The bones of both his arms were exposed, with almost all the flesh blown away. This time, the giant devil was more miserable, so his fury rocketed. I knew it. He's still alive. Bu Fang narrowed his eyes. He seemed to have expected it. With a thought, Shrimpy turned into a golden beam and shot over. Then, he stepped on its back and flew backward. The giant devil's punch smashed the ground and caused it to crumble with a boom. At last, the whole fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm fell completely and hit the fourth layer. The collision was so powerful that it seemed like heaven had fallen and crashed into the earth. The fourth layer's ground could hardly bear the weight. It creaked and broke, cracking in many parts. The experts in the fifth layer all rose unsteadily into midair. The giant devil's eyes were scarlet. At some point in time, a huge pitch black spear appeared in his hand. Grabbing the spear with his bone exposed arm, the giant devil chased after Bu Fang with big strides. He only had Bu Fang in his eyes now all he wanted was to kill this guy who had wounded him. A whistle echoed as the giant devil threw out the spear, which sped through the air as it headed straight at Bu Fang. Shrimpy immediately shot upward, causing the spear to miss them and fall to the ground. Bu Fang narrowed his eyes. The next moment, he exhaled softly. With Shrimpy around, he wasn't worried about being caught up by the giant devil. He sat down cross-legged and closed his eyes. A brief moment later, he flicked open his eyes, in which a fierce look flashed. Foxy, who was lying on Bu Fang's shoulder with her tongue stuck out, suddenly beamed and straightened her head. Her nose twitched, and her eyes turned somewhat misty. At that moment, a silver-colored lotus pot appeared in Bu Fang's hand. The perishing pot finally showed up. Buzz. The pot hovered in Bu Fang's hand with white flames burning under it. As cabbages tossed inside, a sizzling sound kept ringing out, and a rich aroma wafted out. Bu Fang was not in a hurry to throw out the pot. The perishing pot needed to be preheated. When its temperature reached the maximum, that was when it was the strongest. As time went by, the perishing pot came to a boil. The broth was boiling, letting out steam and giving off a strong aroma. Foxy craned her head with drool trickling down her open mouth, looking as if she wanted to bury her whole head into the pot. However, Bu Fang grabbed her with one hand. You're too young to eat this, Bu Fang told her in a serious voice. Foxy looked a little pitiful. Her little eyes were full of longing and seemed to be flowing with tears. However, Bu Fang ignored her. He was protecting her by not allowing her to eat the perishing pot, as her body couldn't withstand its power. A beam of golden light flashed through the void. The giant devil chased after the light, speeding through the whole fifth layer and causing it to constantly shake. Realm Lord D. Tai watched from a distance. He felt as if he were watching a farce. The nether prison experts around were also somewhat dumbfounded. Buzz. The perishing pot in Bu Fang's hand seemed to be trembling and emanating an invisible fluctuation, which shook both his body and soul. This was the first time Bu Fang unleashed the perishing pot's full power. He didn't push it to the limit in the previous two times because of some concerns, but its power was already extremely terrifying. This time, however, Bu Fang planned to unleash its full power. His spirit sea was boiling. The four spirits of the god of cooking set were roaring at the same time, pushing his mental force to the peak, while his divine perception made the mental force around him as thick as an ocean. Bu Fang's eyes lit up as he raised his hand. At this gesture, the perishing pot floated up in midair and began to devour his divine perception like a whale sucking in water. All of a sudden, the silver pot burst into white light, which made it look as brilliant as the sun. A scary fluctuation spread out of it, shaking Bu Fang's mind. Rumble. The giant devil stopped running abruptly and widened his eyes. In the distance, Shrimpy stopped flying as well, hovering in midair. Bu Fang, on the other hand, held the perishing pot with one hand, which shone blindingly like a sun. All eyes were attracted by the pot in his hand. That is. The giant devil's eyes narrowed. The next moment, he felt a chill run down his back. That familiar combination and aroma. That's right. It was the horrible dish of death and destruction. Sure enough, it was you. He could never forget the disaster-like scene, as well as the pain and humiliation that went deep into his bones. Holding the spear, the giant devil threw his head back and roared. His voice seemed to scatter the clouds. The next moment, he raised the spear over his shoulder, ran for a short distance to gain some momentum, and then threw out the weapon. The spear turned into a bolt of pitch black lightning as it shot toward the perishing pot. Die. I'll not fall into the same trap twice. The giant devil roared with a savage look in his eyes. 
Everyone gasped. Bu Fang's face was slightly pale as he stood on Shrimpy's back. His divine perception was almost depleted, but it had also pushed the perishing pot's power to the maximum. It emitted a blinding white light, and the destructive aura in it frightened even Bu Fang. He loosened his grip, allowing the pot to hover by itself, then exhaled and targeted the giant devil with his last wisp of divine perception. After that, he flicked his finger at the perishing pot. Buzz. Under everyone's watchful eyes, the perishing pot, which shone like a sun, ripped through the air as it sped toward the giant devil. In the sky, the giant devil's spear and the perishing pot were approaching each other at full speed. Finally, they crashed into each other. End of chapter. Chapter 1170. Blow up a little saint. Only a few people had seen the horror of the perishing pot. When Bu Fang used it for the first time, no one thought that a pot could have unparalleled destructive power. However, after the pot was thrown into the bronze gate and produced a terrifying explosion that blew up a little saint's arm, those few people finally realized its horror. Now, Bu Fang took out the perishing pot once again, the dish that fused the gourmet array and the will of the great path. This time, he even pushed its power to the maximum. Sizzle. The pot radiated blinding white light like the hot sun. After it was flicked away by Bu Fang's finger, it sped through the air like a bolt of white lightning. Wherever it passed, the void kept crumbling. It was more than enough for people to tell its terrifying power. The giant devil threw out his black spear that was streaked with patterns. It was the giant devil's favorite attack, which could nail the enemies to the ground and absorb all their life force. It was a great murderous weapon. His eyes shot with blood. He would not fall into the same pit twice. Last time, the perishing pot had blown away his flesh. This time, he swore that he would crush the guy who used the pot. He was so irritable and furious. In the distance, many people's faces had turned ghastly pale. Realm Lord Tai was even more shocked, amazed that Bu Fang could pull off such an incredible means of attack. No ordinary little saints could defend against the perishing pot's power. City Lord Zhu held his fingers like a woman. All that was left in his eyes now was the bright perishing pot. It was the first time he saw it, but he was unexpectedly excited. Bu Fang, boy, kill that cyan-skinned monster. City Lord Zhu waved his fingers and shouted. The nether prison experts around also stopped what they were doing and looked at the collision. The next moment, everyone's eyes shrank as they watched the spear and the pot crash into each other. Boom. A deafening explosion resounded through the air. In front of everyone's shocked eyes, the spear was stopped and could no longer move further. It spun rapidly and exuded a tearing force, piercing a deep hole in the void, with rifts spreading out around it. The perishing pot, on the other hand, didn't lose its momentum after hitting the spear, and its white light kept expanding. The next moment, a large white lotus flower emerged, growing larger and larger, as if it was about to envelop the whole sky. Rumble. Under the perishing pot's terrifying power, the stones on the ground dissolved into dust and scattered. After resisting for a while, the black spear finally broke. Cracks crawled across its surface before the whole spear shattered completely. The giant devil's eyes shrank, and his hair stood on end. Then, he hit the ground with both fists and roared in a hoarse voice. However, the huge lotus of destruction still kept growing larger and larger. Rumble. The whole fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm began to tremble violently. More cracks appeared on the ground as the entire place kept shaking. Bu Fang appeared very weak now, but he looked calmly into the distance. Sitting cross-legged on Shrimpy's back and looking at the blooming lotus of destruction, he exhaled softly. After that, he let Shrimpy carry him into the distance. Foxy, lying on Bu Fang's shoulder, gaped at the huge exploding lotus. She couldn't believe that she was thinking about eating this thing just now. This kind of explosive power was much stronger than the explosive meatballs. If she ate it, she might get herself killed. The little fox, with lingering fear in her heart, shyly raised her tail and wrapped it around her head, then curled into a ball on Bu Fang's shoulder. She wanted to lie low for the time being. Shrimpy zoomed through the air as it flew toward the distance with Bu Fang on its back. The lotus of destruction kept growing larger. Its edges devoured the surroundings and continuously rolled behind Shrimpy. Even then, the other experts came to their senses. They watched in shock as the lotus of destruction spread over as if to devour them. Without saying anything, they turned and fled. They fled in a panic. However, they soon realized that they could not escape. The lotus's destructive energy was spreading too fast. In just a flash, many nether prison experts were engulfed by the terrible power of the perishing pot and turned into ashes. 
The perishing pot was indeed a great killing machine. Whitey's mechanical eyes flashed. With a boom, it sped into the distance like a cannonball. Realm Lord D. Tai's figure flickered and appeared in front of City Lord Zhu. He grabbed the latter's shoulder and shot into the sky. The giant devil also wanted to avoid the lotus's destructive wave, but he was Bu Fang's target. Besides, his body was so huge that it was not that easy for him to avoid it. Soon, the destructive lotus was coming at him. The lotus that blotted out the whole sky like a hill was terrifying to look at. When the giant devil realized that he could no longer escape, he stopped in place, turned around, and threw his fists at the lotus, roaring. Get lost. His punches were shrouded with strong nether energy, and there seemed to be a vague, transparent will of the great path descending above his head. It was the nether prison's will of the great path. Nether energy spread out and formed a great wall, trying to block the perishing pot. Boom. In front of everyone's stunned gazes, the perishing pot collided with the nether energy wall. The next moment, the nether energy wall containing the will of the great path was effortlessly torn to pieces by the perishing pot, as if it was just made of a sheet of paper. The giant devil's eyes shrank, and he watched helplessly as both his arms were devoured by the perishing pot. Damn it. He roared in shock and anger. He had mustered all his strength to stop the perishing pot, but. Crack. Crack. Under the pot's destructive power, his arms kept disappearing, and this time, it didn't just destroy his flesh, but also his bones. The perishing pot expanded, and finally, it completely engulfed the giant devil. Everyone gasped. From afar, they could see a vague figure inside the perishing pot. The figure was struggling, but it just couldn't break out. Bu Fang stepped on Shrimpy's back, floating in the sky far away from the explosion. With his hands clasped behind his back, he stared at the huge perishing pot. His vermilion robe whipped noisily in the wind. Explode, Bu Fang said softly with an indifferent look in his eyes. The next moment, everyone's eyes shrank as they saw the perishing pot explode. Rumble. The whole world fell silent at this moment as if all the sound was swallowed up. In the distance, the huge lotus turned into a towering pillar of fire, then exploded. Blast swept out in all directions and lifted a layer of earth from the ground. Over the lotus, a beam of light thrust into the sky, twisting and distorting the void. What came after the silence was a deafening rumble. Boom. Everyone stared blankly at the huge mushroom cloud rising in the distance, which was much larger than the one created by the dozen explosive meatballs thrown out by Bu Fang. City Lord Zhu was utterly struck dumb. Even his fingers were trembling. This. This. This attack. Did that thing really come from that little chef Bu Fang? It almost destroyed the whole fifth layer. Has that little chef really become the great demon king, it's so powerful. It's a real instrument of destruction. Realm Lord D. Tai exclaimed. The blasts of the explosion swept out and threw countless experts off their feet. Many people fell in the distance, feeling grateful, while some struggled to their feet, watching in horror and shaking violently. The giant devil's struggling figure had quieted down and didn't seem to move at all. Even the bronze gate and the heaven nether bridge fell silent at this moment. Many experts watching from behind the bronze gate were gasping in astonishment. Judging from the destructive power, they could imagine that the giant devil should be dead now. Shrimpy placed Bu Fang on the ground. At the same time, a gust of hot air blew over, which seemed to carry the perishing pot's scary power. It was almost half a day when the horrible explosion and the rumbling sound finally faded away. Bu Fang carried Foxy in his arms and slowly walked toward the center of the explosion. After a while, the explosion faded, leaving only plumes of billowing smoke and dust. Bu Fang stopped. He had come to the center of the area where the perishing pot hit. In front of him was a huge and bottomless pit, filled with swirling gray smoke. Even though he was just standing at the pit's edge, Bu Fang could feel a powerful blast blowing at his face. It was so strong that it could severely hurt an expert who just stepped into the true immortal realm. The perishing pot was truly one that had absorbed all his divine perception. Its power was comparable to the full power attack from a peak little saint. He reckoned that even a full power strike from the sword demon clan's little saint he met on the god banishing mountain would not be stronger than this. The pit was incredibly huge, almost covering half of the fifth layer, and it was so deep that it seemed to have blown through the sky in the fourth layer. Roar. Suddenly, a mournful roar rang out of the pit, accompanied by the clatter of bones. Bu Fang, standing at the edge of the pit with his hands clasped behind his back, furrowed his brows slightly. The next moment, an enormous black figure rushed out of the smoke-covered pit, swooping toward him. It was a giant skeleton. 
Without a doubt, it was the skeleton of that little saint giant devil. The vitality of a little saint was indeed strong. It was hard to believe that the giant devil survived the explosion of such an insane magnitude. However, he had turned into a skeleton. Almost everything on his body was burned off, leaving only his heart, which was beating and spewing life force to maintain the functionality of the skeleton. Bu Fang's expression remained unchanged as he watched a giant skeleton sped toward him. Suddenly, a clang of metal echoed out. The next moment, Whitey appeared in front of Bu Fang and swung the war god stick. As the stick moved through the air, it expanded. Then, with a crunch, it crashed onto the skeleton and broke it into pieces. The giant devil's heart beat violently for a moment before it was blown apart by Whitey's stick. Blood sprayed into the sky and fell like rain. As the blood sprinkled, the gray smoke began to gradually dissipate. Whitey landed. Its mechanical eyes flashed as it stood next to Bu Fang, holding the war god stick. Many nether prison experts stood around the huge pit. They shivered when they saw the giant devil was killed. A little saint had fallen. Rumble. An invisible will of the great path churned in the grayish sky, as if it was lamenting the fall of a little saint. Realm Lord D. Tai breathed a deep sigh of relief, while his tensed-up muscles relaxed. The next moment, the golden light that shrouded his body faded away. He felt his strength leave him, and he couldn't help but fall on one knee. The side effect of forcibly breaking through the little saint realm was too severe. He would be weak for a long time. City Lord Zhu quickly helped Realm Lord D tie up with a worried look in his eyes. Help me to Bu Fang. He must have returned with the spring of life. The immortal cooking realm is saved. Although Realm Lord D Tai was weak, there was an undisguised excitement in his voice. City Lord Zhu nodded, put his arms around Realm Lord D Tai's shoulder, and hurried in Bu Fang's direction. However, they had just taken a few steps when both of them felt a terrifying aura from beneath their feet, instantly chilling their bodies and souls. In the distance, the bronze gate squeaked again, opening wide with nether energy pouring through. There was a clear sound of footsteps ringing out of the door, echoing through the whole sky. Bu Fang's eyes shrank as he turned his gaze toward the bronze gate. There, a figure clad in a black robe gradually emerged. It was a pitch-black chef robe, with a bright star embroidered on the sleeve. A terrifying aura pervaded the sky, filling everyone's heart with tremendous pressure. Hmm. I can't believe you've killed a little saint from the giant devil clan. You're really good. However, without the terrible means of destruction just now, how can you resist the invasion of the nine revolution nether chefs? That black-robed figure's voice grew cold as he talked. Mixed with killing intent, it rang across the whole place. End of chapter. Chapter 1171 the arrival of Lord Dog and his exquisite paw. The cold voice echoed through the air with a hint of banter and mockery. The aura of the figure at the bronze gate was very strong, and it seemed to be stronger than the giant devil. Without a doubt, this guy was also a little saint, and he was even stronger than the giant devil, who was a one-revolution little saint. Tap, tap, tap. Footsteps of another person rang out. Another existence with formidable aura emerged next to the first figure. He was also clad in a chef robe, and his hair was gray, which waved messily in the wind. Both of them appeared to be middle-aged men who had gone through the vicissitude of life. However, their auras were extremely formidable. Realm Lord D. Tai narrowed his eyes. Sacred realm experts from the Nine Revolution Nether Chefs clan they. They. He was dumbstruck. It never occurred to him that the little saints of the Nine Revolution Nether Chefs clan would appear at this moment. Are they here to reap the benefits? Realm Lord D. Tai had been a little confused because it should be the Nine Revolution Nether Chefs Clan who wanted the seeds of the Immortal Tree. However, when the Bronze Gate opened, the invaders were from the Giant Devil's Clan. Are you surprised? The Nether Chef Little Saint smiled. You are the Immortal Cooking Realm, after all, a realm that was not weaker than the Nether Prison. A lean camel is still bigger than a horse. We need to be extra careful, for you may have a backup that is too strong for us to deal with. It's not easy for me to cultivate to this level, so I don't want to die here for some unknown reason. It turned out that they didn't show up earlier because they were afraid the immortal cooking realm might have a backup plan. The little saint from the giant devil's clan was just a vanguard. All giant devils are idiots easy to be fooled. I've only promised him some benefits, and he's already rushing ahead foolishly. Well, he managed to force out all your trump cards. No one should be able to stop me now. Taking one step, the little saint's figure shot ahead, crossing through the heaven nether bridge. On the bridge, countless nether prison experts looked up feverishly. 
Their morale, which had been weakened by the giant devil's death, flared up again at this moment. They waved their weapons and roared, showing exciting looks. Bu Fang stood at the edge of the pit with his fluttering vermilion robe. His face was slightly pale, which was the side effect after using the perishing pot. To use such a great killing instrument, there was naturally a price to pay. After all, this kind of weapon didn't match with Bu Fang's cultivation base. Bu Fang also didn't think that the experts of the Nine Revolution Nether Chefs clan would be so sinister. With their hands clasped behind their backs, the two little saints drifted through the Heaven Nether Bridge in a flash and stepped into the immortal cooking realm. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Sensing the chaotic spirit energy of heaven and earth and the thin immortal energy in the fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm, they could not help but click their tongues as a look of disdain appeared in their eyes. The once glorious immortal cooking realm has indeed declined. Said one of the little saints with an indifferent tone. At its prime, the immortal cooking realm had a divine chef and dozens of killin' chefs. It was not weaker than the nether prison at all. However, today's immortal cooking realm was filled with ruins. It no longer had a divine chef, and the only high-grade killin' chef it had could barely break through the little saint realm. The declining immortal cooking realm could no longer cultivate more experts. It was a sad fact. How could you be so despicable? Realm Lord D. Tai came to his senses and gnashed his teeth in fury. He could resist a little saint by borrowing the will of the great path and breaking through to the little saint realm, and he could even kill a little saint with the help of Bu Fang's perishing pot. However, the fact that two more little saints were waiting to take advantage of them only made him feel powerless and angry. City Lord Zhu was shaking with anger, too. He wondered if all the people in Nether Prison were so despicable he didn't understand why they still wanted to use such dirty methods when they were clearly stronger. It made his blood boil. Are you angry? The Nether Chef Little Saint smiled and looked at Trelm Lord D. Tai and City Lord Zhu. Then, he turned his gaze to Bu Fang. His eyes narrowed slightly as he looked at Bu Fang, who had unleashed a great killing instrument. This guy is a wild card he thought. Even the giant devil, whose skin and flesh was thick, could not withstand the perishing pot. If Bu Fang could unleash it again, they might have to flee with tails tucked between their legs. They reckoned that perhaps only a three-revolution little saint could withstand that pot. However, when he saw Bu Fang's pale face, the nether chef little saint smiled. How could that kind of great killing instrument not have side effects when it was unleashed with the strength of a nine-star true immortal? This guy must have exhausted his strength and could hardly lift a finger now. He can't pose a threat to us now. Give me the seeds of the immortal tree, and I will let the immortal cooking realm remain in existence for a little longer. If you don't cooperate with me, don't blame me for not showing mercy. The two nether chef little saints crossed the heaven nether bridge and landed on the bank. Their eyes swept about before resting on realm lord D. Tai. Suddenly, a loud boom rang out, and in a flash, the little saint had appeared in front of Realm Lord D. Tai. You want the seeds of the immortal tree keep dreaming? Realm Lord D. Tai's face turned red as he growled furiously. The seeds of the immortal tree were the immortal cooking realm's hope. He would never give them to these nether chefs. You're courting death. The nether chef little saint narrowed his eyes. He raised his hand, grabbed Realm Lord D. Tai on the throat, and pushed him to the ground. You. An angry look jumped up City Lord Zhu's face as he held his fingers like a woman. However, the nether chef little saint had only waved a hand and he was knocked flying away, coughing blood and falling to the ground in the distance. Even then, the other little saint's figure flashed and appeared in front of Bu Fang. Can you unleash that killing instrument again? Asked the little saint as he stared expressionlessly at Bu Fang. Bu Fang furrowed his eyebrows. If you can't, just stay here quietly. We are very interested in your secrets. The corner of the little saint's mouth curved upward into a vague smile. The perishing pot was a delicacy, and yet it could produce such terrible destructive fluctuations. It made this little saint, who was a killin' chef from the nether chef's clan, feel quite curious. Therefore, he had decided that after getting the seeds, he would bring this little chef with him to study it. If he could figure out the perishing pot's principle and how to make it, the declining position of the nine revolution nether chef's clan among the nine clans in nether prison would soar. Boom. In the distance, the terrifying golden light descended once again. Realm Lord D. Tai coughed blood and roared. His golden hair floated while infinite fury welled up in his eyes. As a realm lord, he was furious when someone humiliated him by pressing him to the ground. Boom. In a flash, he knocked the little saint away with a punch. A suit of gold armor appeared on Realm Lord D. Tai once again, 
but it looked rather broken. Are you crazy burning your blood essence just for a brief moment of Little Saint's fighting strength? The Little Saint, who was sent flying away by Realm Lord Detai, cried out in horror. The look in Realm Lord Detai's eyes had changed, and his skin had turned scarlet. Burning blood essence was a very extreme practice that would damage one's essence. Rumble. Realm Lord Detai leaped. The ground cracked and exploded as he rushed toward the Little Saint. The next instant, he engaged the man in a fierce fight. The battle between them was violent. They turned into two black lines in the void and kept crashing into each other. Every collision produced a loud rumble and terrible blasts that swept out in all directions. Nether energy and immortal energy collided, corroding each other and filling the air with sizzling noises. All of a sudden, a knife light that blotted out the sky appeared. It was pitch black and contained a vague will of the Great Path. It slashed down hard. A large golden pot emerged in Realm Lord Detai's hand. He suspended it over his head to block the knife. In the distance, the nether chef Little Saint was holding a pitch black kitchen knife with a solemn look. With a loud rumble, the knife light that came slashing down shattered, but Realm Lord Detai was smashed into the ground with almost all his bones broken. What are you fighting me with? You've just stepped into the Little Saint realm and can't even have good control of the will of the Great Path. Are you going to fight me with just anger? Sneered the nether chef Little Saint. The next moment, his body floated in midair. The beating of hearts rang out. One, two, three. Nine vague hearts emerged behind the little saint. A terrifying aura kept spreading. Covered in blood, Realm Lord Detai crawled out of the ruin, fixing his eyes at the little saint in midair. In the distance, the little saint standing next to Bu Fang smiled faintly and said, It's over. Bu Fang glanced at him and replied expressionlessly, No, it's not over yet. His heart was filled with mixed emotions when he saw that Realm Lord Detai still wanted to fight, even when he was already covered in blood. Perhaps this was the dedication of a Realm Lord. Oh. Do you still have any trump cards? Asked the little saint as he looked dubiously at Bu Fang. The corner of Bu Fang's mouth twitched. We do have another. Trump card. There's still a dog that hasn't appeared. Oh. A dog? The nether chef little saint paused. The next moment, his eyes shrank. In the distance, the little saint gathered the power of nine hearts of cooking path and made a straight cut with his knife. The knife light covered the whole sky and seemed about to cut the whole fifth layer in half. Realm Lord Detai staggered and fell to his knees. He no longer had the strength to withstand this strike. There seemed to be despair spreading in the air. However, just when the knife was about to slash down, the void in front of Realm Lord Detai twisted abruptly into a round portal through which the wind and snow blew out. The fat black dog slowly walked out of the portal, strutting its elegant cat-like steps. As soon as the dog appeared, everyone's eyes had all focused on it. A dog? For real the nether chef Little Saint, who stood not far away from Bu Fang, was struck dumb. The next moment, he seemed to have recalled something, and he gasped. That dog. Even a dog wants to court death. The other nether chef Little Saint said coldly. He naturally had no fear of a black dog who walked out of a portal. The knife light slashed down, trying to cut the black dog in half. Lord Dog stepped out of the void, glanced at the bedraggled realm Lord Detai, and twitched his dog mouth. You look so miserable. Lord Dog's magnetic voice resounded through the void. Staring at Lord Dog, realm Lord Detai suddenly grinned. Mangy Dog. Help me. Kill this fellow, he said with a gruesome expression. In the void, the little saint's eyes narrowed as the knife light crashed down. A tearing sound rang out, and the void kept crumbling. Lord Dog turned his head around. A gust of strong wind blew over and ruffled his hair. The next moment, he twitched his mouth and reached out an exquisite paw. Buzz. The surrounding nether energy quickly gathered and turned into a dog paw that blotted out the sky, which smashed the knife light, shattering it completely in an instant. In the air, the little saint gasped as his eyes shrank. Let's go, shrimpy, Boo Fang said faintly. Shrimpy squeaked from Bu Fang's shoulder, then turned into a beam of golden light and brought Bu Fang next to Realm Lord Detai. The little saint was still immersed in shock at Lord Dog's appearance, so he didn't stop Bu Fang. When he came to his senses, Bu Fang had already reached Realm Lord Detai. Realm Lord Detai panted heavily as he looked at Bu Fang. The golden light on him had faded away, and his aura grew even weaker now. He produced two dark seeds and handed them to Bu Fang with a hopeful look in his eyes. Bu Fang didn't say anything. He took the seeds and, with a thought, produced a crystal fruit of life and let Realm Lord Detai take it. 
After swallowing the fruit, Realm Lord D. Tai felt his exhausted body filling with energy instantly. A stream of life energy was circulating and nourishing his body. Holding the two seeds of the immortal tree, Bu Fang glanced at Lord Dog. Fat Dog. Why did you spend so much time in God Banishing Mountain? I've something to discuss with that crazy woman. Why are you so impatient? I'm here now, Lord Dog said, grinning. The next moment, he lifted his exquisite paw and slapped it toward the little saint in midair once again. I'll leave it to you, then. I'll be right back, said Bu Fang. After speaking, he entered the heaven and earth farmland with a thought. Rumble. With Lord Dog joining the battle, the towering city walls of the nether prison suddenly shook. His arrival seemed to have provoked a supreme existence behind the wall. End of chapter. Chapter 1172. Do you think I can let the pot explode? With a thought, Bu Fang entered the heaven and earth farmland. The farmland was now almost Bu Fang's own little world, which he could visit at any time. However, no matter where he entered the farmland, he would come out in the same place. This followed a law of planes. The farmland was very peaceful, and at the moment, a comfortable wind was blowing. Bu Fang fell and soon landed in the grass. The air was filled with a tranquil fragrance like that of an immortal ingredient or an immortal plant. He glanced around. A large tree was standing in front of the wooden cabin in the distance, which grew from the seed he brought. It looked rather similar to the immortal tree in the immortal cooking realm. However, compared with the enormous immortal tree in the immortal cooking realm, this one appeared to be just a youngster, and of course, it wasn't surrounded by so much immortal energy like its mother. Bu Fang could feel that since the immortal tree was planted, the farmland's atmosphere had changed as if it had a backbone now. It was a strong feeling. The farmland in the past was amazing, but it was unorganized. Although Bu Fang and Yu Hansen both worked hard to lay out the farmland and plan what immortal ingredients and spirit herbs to grow in each section, something was still missing. The growth of the immortal tree had filled that missing piece. Of course, the transformation of the river had contributed to that as well. After placing the source of the spring of life in the river, its water was now filled with rich life energy, which made all the creatures in the farmland much stronger than before. Bu Fang was very satisfied. With hands clasped behind his back, he stepped forward. A few moments later, he was in front of the wooden cabin. New Hansen was lying lazily on a chair in front of the cabin. The immortal tree had veiled the sunlight and was exuding a soothing aura. Bu Fang glanced at New Hansen, who was snoring loudly. He didn't wake the latter, but walked to the river and snapped his fingers. Rumble. A loud noise rang out of the river as the little silver dragon flew out of the water, wheeling in front of Bu Fang and wagging its tail. The little silver dragon seemed very happy with Bu Fang's presence and kept rolling. Bu Fang reached out a finger and played with it for a while. After that, he spread his palm, revealing two dark seeds. Little guy, I need to trouble you again. Bu Fang said as he poked the little dragon with a finger. The little silver dragon landed on his palm and looked a little muddle-headed. However, when it saw the seeds, it immediately took one and shoved it into its mouth. With a gulp, the seed went into its stomach, making it look larger now. After that, it picked up another seed and swallowed it. Its body swelled so much that it seemed to burst apart at any time. Bu Fang twitched the corner of his mouth. He found that it was quite interesting to watch this cute little silver dragon. The little silver dragon was the source of the spring of life, so it contained extremely rich life energy. The two seeds of the immortal tree were soon spat out by the little dragon. Now, they were covered in a layer of silver substance that seemed to move constantly. The silver substance glowed brilliantly as bits of life energy seeped into the seeds, illuminating them in an instant. Oh, owner Bu, where did you get two more seeds? New Hansen suddenly came behind Bu Fang and spoke. His voice took Bu Fang aback. Bu Fang turned around and glanced expressionlessly at New Hansen. The look in his eyes confused the latter. These seeds come from the same batch. But they can't be planted in the farmland because it's not suitable for planting three immortal trees, Bu Fang said. New Hansen nodded. Having spent so much time in the farmland, he naturally knew its limits. The seeds of the immortal tree were too extraordinary. If all three were planted here, they would probably take over and seize the farmland's will of the great path. That was not a good thing for the farmland. When the two seeds were revived, Bu Fang held them in his hand. He stroked the little silver dragon's head with a finger. The latter jumped happily in his palm, then darted into the river. As soon as it touched the water, it transformed into an enormous dragon, 
swung its long tail and dived deep into the river, sending waves across the surface. Bu Fang held the seeds and breathed a sigh of relief. New Hansen, study the death food tools. Over time, I'll draw out all the gourmet arrays. Your main job now is to help me find suitable ingredients, Bu Fang said. New Hansen paused, seemingly puzzled by the urgency in Bu Fang's tone. But he just nodded and didn't ask anything it happened that he had nothing to do recently. After leaving instructions for New Hansen, Bu Fang turned and left the farmland. Rumble. Lord Dog narrowed his eyes and looked beyond the nether prison's wall. There seemed to be a burst of powerful aura. Ha, ha, ha. Mangy Dog. Are you afraid to make a move now? In the sky, the nether chef Little Saint finally realized Lord Dog's strength and even recognized him. This was the dog who had turned the nether prison upside down in the past. This dog was extremely terrifying. It was very formidable even among great saints. However, it wouldn't dare to make a move now. After all, the immortal cooking realm was not earth prison. If this dog were to do that, it would force the supreme existence of the nine revolution nether chef's clan to join the battle as well. Once that happens, the immortal cooking realm would become a battlefield between two great saints. It would probably be smashed to pieces. Great saints were much stronger than little saints. A great saint could step out of realms and walk in the sea of stars. The little saint, on the other hand, could only borrow the will of the great path to stay in the sea of stars for a short time. Lord Dog also knew that if he attracted the great saint behind a wall, the whole immortal cooking realm would highly likely be destroyed. However, I don't like the way you look. Lord Dog's magnetic voice exploded in midair. The next moment, the exquisite dog paw slapped out once again. Buzz. This time, however, the paw changed. It now contained a terrible will of the great path that belonged to Earth Prison. The will of the great path swirled in the dog paw, making it even stronger. The nether chef Little Saint in midair was stunned. Before he could react, however, Lord Dog's paw already hit him, knocking him down from midair and smashing him to the ground. The paw didn't kill the Little Saint, but it embarrassed him. You. The Little Saint, aggrieved, pointed at Lord Dog with rage burning in his eyes. He was backed by the great saint of the Nine Revolution Nether Chef's clan, so he had no fear of Lord Dog. What? Can't I beat you when I don't like the way you look? Ask the man behind you to fight one-on-one -on -one with me. Lord Dog twitched his mouth in disdain. The Nether Chef Little Saint flew into a rage. Behind Lord Dog, Realm Lord D. Tai burst into laughter and flipped his golden hair. Why are you laughing? A loser like you have no right to laugh said the nether chef Little Saint coldly as he stared at Realm Lord D. Tai. Realm Lord D. Tai wasn't pleased when he heard that. He gave the Little Saint a sideways glance and said in a cold voice, fight me again when I'm in my perfect form if you dare. I'll surely beat you until your father can't recognize you. How dare you, a despicable man who exploits and profits from others' hard work, mock me. Even then, the other Little Saint flew over and joined the Little Saint in midair. Where is that Little Chef? You didn't catch him? The leading little saint asked when he saw his companion come back alone. How could a little saint fail to catch a nine-star true immortal and even let him escape? The little saint couldn't explain. Dare he say that he had let the little chef escape because he was stunned to see his companion slapped by a dog? If he said that, their friendship might end at any time. Buzz. Suddenly, a mysterious fluctuation spread through the void. Both little saints squinted down below. There, Bu Fang's figure appeared out of thin air holding two seeds that emanated vast life energy and rich immortal energy. A sacred great immortal ingredient. The immortal tree's seeds. Both little saints gasped at the same time. Realm Lord D. Tai's eyes also moved. Looking at the two seeds in Bu Fang's hand, he couldn't help but shiver all over. The immortal tree's seeds that were full of rich vitality. They were the hope of the immortal cooking realm. Are the immortal tree's seeds revived? Realm Lord D. Tai asked, trembling. Yes, Bu Fang nodded. The next moment, he flicked both seeds with his finger and sent them into Realm Lord D. Tai's hand. Boom. In midair, the two little saints made their moves, shooting over in a flash and crushing the void with their feet. How dare you come again? Lord Dog glared at them, raised his exquisite dog paw, and was about to wave it at the two little saints. However, as soon as he raised his paw, a terrible aura exploded out behind the nether prison wall. Lord Dog's paw halted. The next moment. Don't push your luck. You think you can bully me so easily? Lord Dog roared. A vast amount of nether energy gathered rapidly. 
A moment later, he turned into a huge earth prison dog with dark hellfire hovering over his body. Then, he sped away like lightning. With just three dashes, he crossed the heaven nether bridge and shot through the bronze gate. After that, a burst of shouts rang out from behind the door. The two little saints never thought that the black dog would fly past them. It meant that he didn't take them seriously at all. However, they didn't mind it and were overjoyed instead. Let's go. Once we take away the immortal tree's seeds, the task is done. They cried out at the same time and flew at full speed toward Realm Lord D. Tai. Bu Fang glanced at the charging little saints, then at Realm Lord D. Tai. He sighed softly. Now that the seeds are revived, can the hope you mentioned have a chance to sprout and row? Bu Fang asked. Realm Lord D. Tai twitched the corner of his mouth, looking very excited as he said, give me time, enough to brew a pot of tea. Bu Fang nodded, then turned around. He clasped his hands behind his back and took a few steps to stand in front of Realm Lord D. Tai. In the distance, the two little saints shot over at full speed. You want to stop us? How are you going to do that without that great killing instrument? Bu Fang, who couldn't use the perishing pot, twitched his mouth. How can you be sure that I can't use the perishing pot? He said indifferently. His voice was not loud, but it was enough to be heard by the two little saints. That gave them a pause, and their eyes shrank. They saw Bu Fang shake his hand and produced a silver pot. It was spinning with hot steam rising and a white flame burning underneath. It was indeed the perishing pot. This little chef can still use that thing? The two little saints gasped, shuddering as they recalled the scene of the giant devil being blown and reduced to a skeleton by the perishing pot. Without hesitation, they stopped in midair. Bu Fang paced back and forth while toying with the perishing pot. The atmosphere became very awkward at this moment. Everyone was frightened by the appearance of the perishing pot, not daring to breathe too loud. After pacing for a while, Bu Fang flipped his hand and put away the perishing pot. Oh! The two little saints exchanged a glance. They suddenly realized that this boy couldn't use the perishing pot again. He must be bluffing just now. Damn it. Let's go. They shouted and shot toward Bu Fang. However, they had just moved when their eyes shrank again. Because they saw Bu Fang take out the perishing pot again. At this moment, the two little saints could only curse in their minds. They wouldn't be so angry if Bu Fang only took out the pot, but he also took out a fruit filled with life energy and shoved it into his mouth. Now, they dared not to move again. What? They were so depressed that they almost coughed blood. Bu Fang glanced at the two little saints and twitched the corner of his mouth. With a thought, another perishing pot appeared. Now, there were two pots floating in Bu Fang's hands, radiating silver rays as hot steam, and a rich aroma wafted out of them. Holding one pot in each hand, Bu Fang looked up at the two little saints in midair and said. For a moment, the two experts in midair became speechless. They didn't dare to make a guess. Who knew if Bu Fang, who had swallowed the fruit filled with life energy, could make the perishing pots explode or not? Meanwhile, behind Bu Fang, Realm Lord D. Tai dug a deep pit in the ground and carefully planted the two glinting seeds. After covering them with soil, he punched himself on the chest. His face turned pale in an instant as a stream of blood spurted out of his mouth and sprinkled onto the freshly planted seeds. All of a sudden, monstrous life energy rose like dragons as a touch of green broke through the ground. As soon as the touch of green appeared, the whole immortal cooking realm took a great transformation. Bu Fang twitched the corner of his mouth when he sensed the seeds sprouted. He flipped his hands and put away both perishing pots. Playing cool with perishing pots put him under a lot of pressure. After putting away the pots, Bu Fang looked at the two little saints and grinned, then said seriously, well, I can't let the perishing pots explode. You've guessed it right. Congratulations. The two little saints looked at each other. They were so angry they coughed blood. Were they being? Fooled end of chapter. Chapter 1173. The Resurrection of the Immortal Tree. If Bu Fang were to ask them, are you guys mad? The two little saints would surely give him a good smacking, even if that would get them both killed. They were so mad now. No one had ever fooled them like that. How could Bu Fang toy with two perishing pots? That was a scary thing. People would die if the pots exploded accidentally. Bu Fang didn't care what the two little saints thought. All he had to do was buy time, so Realm Lord D. Tai could plant the seeds and make them germinate. Of course, he didn't think about what would happen after that either. Realm Lord D. Tai looked at the green bud breaking through the ground with excitement as he reached out a hand over it. There was a gash in his palm, 
where thick blood kept trickling down and was being absorbed crazily by the fresh bud. The scene made everyone's hair stand on end. However, the aura of the whole immortal cooking realm began to change dramatically at this moment. The decaying realm seemed to have revived, while the rich spirit energy of heaven and earth began to fill the air. Rumble. A violent quake occurred, causing the whole immortal cooking realm to tremble. Even then, the remains of the immortal tree in the fifth layer dissolved into tiny particles and drifted away. In fact, not only the fifth layer, but the same thing happened in the fourth, third, second, and first layers. The withering remains of the immortal tree suddenly shattered at this moment, turning into tiny particles that scattered when the wind blew, leaving only a huge pit in the ground. The whole immortal cooking realm fell utterly silent. Everyone was staring blankly at the place where the immortal tree once stood, shivering and frozen with fear. The immortal tree was the spiritual sustenance of every expert in the immortal cooking realm, but now it had disappeared. Menki stood on the wall and watched as the immortal tree disappeared. For a moment, she felt lost. Did it fail? Was the immortal cooking realm ultimately doomed to destruction and death? Oh. Suddenly, she froze. Then, she reached out her hand, sent out her mental force, and began to sense the changes in the spirit energy between heaven and earth. Unlike the previous environment, the immortal tree's destruction didn't cause the whole immortal cooking realm to crumble. Moreover, the spirit energy of heaven and earth seemed to be showing signs of recovery. Her eyes flickered as she raised her fair palm. In her palm, energy kept gathering and turning into an energy ball, in which immortal energy could be seen swirling. The immortal energy looked and felt so familiar that it left her slightly dumbstruck. A moment later, Menki's red lips curved upward into a happy smile. Rumble. A seedling grew out from where the immortal tree once stood. Everyone heard a loud boom. The next moment, the seeding began to grow rapidly, and in just a flash, it had pierced through the world. Although it was not as magnificent as the former immortal tree, it had a touch of mystery. Moreover, the new immortal tree contained vast life energy than its predecessor. It's the immortal tree. Is the immortal tree resurrected I can feel rich life energy in the air. Spirit energy of heaven and earth. Yes. Spirit energy of heaven and earth is back. With surprised and excited looks on their faces, the immortal chefs hiding in the third layer's immortal city all danced and cheered. They were so happy that they didn't know what to say to express their current emotions. Some even burst into tears. They didn't know what it meant to lose the immortal tree, but they knew that the days when the tree was dying were the darkest days of the immortal cooking realm. In the fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm. Because of the violent battle, the fourth layer and the fifth layer had completely fused. The immortal tree shot into the sky and directly pierced both layers. The ground of the fifth layer was in a ruinous state. Rocks were rolling everywhere, and even a layer of soil was lifted. It showed how terrible the battle was. In front of Realm Lord Detai, a touch of green abruptly grew up. After offering it so much blood, the seedling had turned into an enormous tree that towered into the sky. Its leaves spread like a giant canopy, rustling noisily as they brushed against each other. The whole fifth layer seemed to be blanketed by the immortal tree. All of sudden, strong life energy spread out of it. The immortal cooking realm was. Revived. The immortal tree was. Resurrected. The two little saints from the Nine Revolution Nether Chef's clan exchanged a glance and saw the shocked look in each other's eyes. Without hesitation, they shot toward the immortal tree. They had to cut down the tree before it was fully revived. Only in this way would the immortal cooking realm's foundation be destroyed, giving them a chance to obtain the immortal tree's seeds. This kind of sacred grade immortal ingredient should be planted in the Nine Revolution Nether Chef's clan's gardens so that its effects could be fully utilized. Bu Fang glanced at the two little saints who were almost on the verge of going berserk, and then at the immortal tree that was still growing. He twitched the corner of his mouth. It looks like you have to guess again. Do you think I can let this pot explode? Bu Fang said as he stood in the way of the two little saints, holding a pot in his hand. In response, the two experts' faces grew dark with rage. This guy did it on purpose, didn't he? Get out of the way. One of them snapped. The next moment, however, his eyes shrank. Because Bu Fang took out another crystal fruit of life and shoved it into his mouth. A burst of life energy exploded out instantly. Guess again. Bu Fang said. Guess, my ass. You're courting death. A little saint flew into a rage. With a step, his body turned into streams of light and then appeared in front of Bu Fang, stirring up powerful blasts and pressure that almost pushed the ladder to the ground. Bu Fang's eyes narrowed. Suddenly, the immortal tree behind him swayed and burst into blinding rays. 
The rustling of its leaves sounded like the whisper of a formidable existence. In front of Bu Fang, the little saint threw out a palm with rage. It came with great power, and if Bu Fang was hit without the invincibility of the vermilion robe, he would be severely wounded. This time, however, Bu Fang didn't even need to use the robe's invincibility. A tree branch suddenly broke through the ground, piercing across the air like a sharp spear toward the little saint. Shocked, the little saint's eyes shrank, and his movement halted. Then, his figure blurred into countless shadows and disappeared. The branch that broke through the ground glowed brilliantly like a rainbow. This is. The little saint sucked in a cold breath and narrowed his eyes. Rumble. With a loud explosion, the ground kept breaking apart. The little saint constantly moved in the air as spear-like tree branches kept shooting out of the ground, producing whistling noises while tearing the air. Both little saints didn't dare to stop. They moved and dodged at full speed in mid-air, trying their best to avoid the branches. Buzz. The immortal tree seemed to have possessed spirituality. Apart from shooting branches out from the ground, it also threw branches from its canopy. These branches falling from the canopy were even stronger. They lashed out like whips and kept breaking the void, with each lash not weaker than the attack of a sacred realm expert. The immortal tree was like a formidable supreme existence. As Realm Lord D. Tai watched, he burst out laughing in a voice filled with delight. The grievances he had suffered for so many days were completely vented at this moment. Serves you right. This is the price for bullying me and the immortal cooking realm. Ha, ha, ha. Realm Lord D. Tai was extremely weak. His face was ghastly pale from his injuries and losing too much blood. However, he was in high spirits. The once invincible immortal tree had returned. As the ruler of the immortal cooking realm, Realm Lord D. Tai could clearly feel that there was a mighty power in the new immortal tree, which was even stronger than its predecessor. The hope of the immortal cooking realm had finally returned. How dare a loser like you be so arrogant. If you come out, I'll surely kill you. The nether chef little saint's eyes were full of killing intent. However, he was forced to keep moving by the branches that shot out from the ground and fell from the sky. As time went by, the power contained in the branches seemed to have become more and more fearsome. Looking at the two little saints who kept moving in mid-air, Bu Fang raised the perishing pot in his hand. Here's the question. Do you think I can make this perishing pot explode? He asked expressionlessly. The two experts' faces turned dark again when they heard those words. Is this guy insane? Why does he keep asking the same question? Does he take us for fools I wish I could slap him in the face right now? The little saint was so mad. Then. A ripping sound rang out. While he was distracted, an immortal tree's branch pierced his body. The huge branch stabbed through the little saint and waved with great force. It violently shook him, making him cough blood as the will of the great path exuding from it kept destroying his body. Meanwhile, the immortal cooking realm's will of the great path was being restored and perfected. A-H-H-H. The little saint roared unwillingly. Drops of blood fell to the ground and were absorbed by the immortal tree, making it even stronger. The other little saint, frightened by his companion's misfortune, turned and was about to flee into the distance. However, how could a panicked little saint withstand the immortal tree that was growing stronger and stronger? With a slash, another branch shot forward and pierced his body, spilling his blood across the void. All the nether prison experts down below could not help but gasp in horror. That was a little saint. They couldn't believe that a little saint was pierced by a tree without the power to fight back. What frightened them further was that as time went by, the bodies of the two little saints kept shrinking and drying up as the essence in them was sucked by the immortal tree. Eventually, they crumbled into dust and drifted away. Two little saints died at the same time. Even Bu Fang couldn't help narrowing his eyes as he realized the immortal tree's horrifying power. Who could stop this immortal tree if it went around killing people? Fortunately, this immortal tree seemed to possess spirituality. It didn't go around killing people. After killing two little saints, it retracted all its branches. No. Not all branches. There was still a gold tree branch swaying in midair, lashing about and cracking the void. The next moment, the branch sped away, tearing through the air as it crossed the whole fifth layer and the heaven nether bridge. Finally, it lashed out onto the nether prison's wall. A loud boom echoed out as the branch hit the wall, causing it to keep shaking. Behind the wall, a terrible battle was happening. The branch pulled back, then went through the bronze gate and joined the fray. The next moment, a furious roar rang out from behind the wall and shook the whole world. The whole fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm seemed to tremble. A dog. A tree. 
How dare you bully me like this? The expert of the nether chef clan let out a furious roar. The arrival of the immortal tree's branch had reversed the situation in an instant. Rumble. There seemed to be a clap of thunder. The next moment, the sound of a limb broken off shocked the world, accompanied by a heartrending roar. It was a long time before the sound died away. This is not the end. Next time, I will cut down the tree and slaughter the dog. A somewhat exasperating voice gradually faded away into the distance. With a slash, the immortal tree pulled back the branch. That branch glinted with sacred blood, as if it had drunk a lot of them. Then, a dark figure stepped through the air from the other side of the wall. Lord Dog came back cheerfully with a fair leg of lamb in his mouth, strutting his elegant cat-like steps. The leg of lamb exuded powerful energy and shone blindingly. Soon, he landed and appeared in front of Bu Fang. After throwing the leg of lamb to the ground, Lord Dog grinned and looked at Bu Fang. Bu Fang, boy, I've found you an excellent ingredient. The great saint's leg. Lord Dog said, then smacked his lips. That gave Bu Fang a pause, and his eyes lit up. Is this the legendary great saint ingredient? The immortal tree's branch retracted. All the nether prison experts staying in the immortal cooking realm felt their hair stand on end. The next moment, as the branch swung again, all these experts ran crazily in the direction of the bronze gate. The heaven nether bridge was packed with people. It was so overcrowded that some were pushed off the edges and swallowed by the boundless darkness. In just a few moments, all the nether prison experts in the immortal cooking realm had retreated. Behind the bronze gate, those mighty onlookers also withdrew their glances. Now that the immortal tree had resurrected, their plan to invade the immortal cooking realm and plunder the immortal tree's seeds had been foiled. However, the bronze gate seal was broken now, so the nether prison experts could still come over at any time. The crisis of the immortal cooking realm still hung over everyone's head. End of chapter. Chapter 1174. A gift from the immortal tree. The immortal tree was revived. Since putting its essence in the seeds and hoping that one day they would grow out from the ground, the original immortal tree had been constantly decaying. Finally, it had overcome death and resurrected, gaining itself endless vitality. Bu Fang watched in amazement as the immortal tree swayed, exuding strong life energy and immortal energy. He never thought that the immortal tree could be restored to this state in an instant and become the pillar supporting the immortal cooking realm once again. Moreover, with the resurrection of the immortal tree, the immortal energy of the whole immortal cooking realm had become much stronger, and the will of the great path had also become complete. All the people in the immortal cooking realm could feel their strength recovering. In the fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm, the experts of the nether prison had all retreated. A branch fell from the immortal tree and smashed in front of the bronze gate. It was covered with profound patterns, and a strange chanting voice was drifting out of it. At the sight of it, none of the nether prison experts behind the gate dared to cross the line. The immortal tree's branches were terrible things, which could pierce even little saints and suck their life essence. Who dared to provoke such formidable things? The crisis in the immortal cooking realm was temporarily relieved. After this, the whole realm would enter a long period of rehabilitation. However, one could imagine that realm lord D. Tai, who had grown up a lot after this crisis, would not let the immortal chefs grow on their own as before again. He had to put them all through real hardships. Only in this way would they not behave like useless fools when the next crisis comes. Chef's challenges needed to be carried out, and battles should be popularized. Realm Lord D. Tai was lost in thought. Ah, a great saint ingredient, Bu Fang said as he picked up the leg of lamb in surprise. The moment he touched it, he felt a terrible aura. The leg seemed to contain a mighty aura and will. It was the will of a great saint. Although the leg was chopped away from the body, the will in it hadn't died away. The meat was crystal-like and full of spirit essence. It was not an ordinary ingredient. Bu Fang was very excited as he held the leg of lamb. Bu Fang, boy, how are you going to cook this great saint ingredient? Lord Dog transformed back to a fat dog, stuck out his tongue, and said in a gentle voice. The people around couldn't help but look over. Even Realm Lord D. Tai and City Lord Zhu walked over and stood next to them. Everyone was curious about the great saint ingredient. After all, a great saint was an existence far beyond their reach. Those who became great saints were supreme existences. They could walk in the sea of stars and were true almighty experts. Now, they saw with their own eyes an ingredient taken from such an expert. Let's go back to the restaurant first, said Bu Fang. Then, with a thought, he put the leg of lamb into the farmland. The people around retracted their gazes after the leg was put away. 
Rubbing his palms, Realm Lord Ditai smiled at Bu Fang and said, Bu Fang, my little friend, you must invite me once you've cooked a leg of lamb. My mouth waters at the thought of the great saint ingredient. Bu Fang thought for a moment and nodded. As for how he should cook the leg of lamb. It was a question worth pondering. There were many ways to cook it. However, he also knew that a great saint ingredient must have some unique feature, so the first thing he had to do was get rid of its pressure, or else it would affect the texture. Therefore, he needed some time to think about the exact cooking method. Buzz. Suddenly, the system's serious voice echoed in Bu Fang's mind. Congratulations on completing your current task. Collect the source of the spring of life in God Vanishing Mountain to revive the immortal tree's seeds. Task rewards. A fragment of the God of Cooking set, a seed of nine revolution great path tea. Bu Fang was slightly taken aback. Then, he remembered that the reason he went to God Vanishing Mountain was to complete this task. Now that the immortal tree was resurrected and the invaders of the nether prison had been forced back, his task was considered complete, so the system gave him the rewards. The first reward increased Bu Fang's collection of the fragment of the God of Cooking set to two, while the other reward was a seed of nine revolution great path tea. Bu Fang knew the seed was an extraordinary one just from its name. He was also very curious about the next fragment of the God of Cooking set. However, as it would be a long time before he collected all the fragments, he didn't think too much about it now. As for the Nine Revolution Great Path Tea, Bu Fang didn't put too much attention on it. He collected himself and glanced around. The whole fifth layer was in a mess. Nevertheless, the immortal tree was standing in the center, glowing brilliantly and sprinkling specks of light. It would probably take a very long time for the fifth layer to return to its former glory. Perhaps in the coming days, the immortal cooking realm's focus would shift to the other layers. Bu Fang and the others were about to leave the fifth layer when he suddenly sensed a strange fluctuation, which gave him a slight pause. Buzz. Waves swelled in his spirit's sea, and his eyes became blurry. He turned to the huge immortal tree in the distance. There seemed to be a glowing figure staring at him in the great tree. It nodded at him, then disappeared into the tree. He thought that should be the immortal tree's spirit. The rustling of leaves rang incessantly. Suddenly, Bu Fang paused as he saw the immortal tree's branch come to him. A seven-colored fruit hung from the branch. Take it. This is a gift from the immortal tree because you have resurrected it, Realm Lord Ditai said in surprise. Bu Fang didn't say anything. Indeed, if he hadn't visited God Vanishing Mountain and obtained the source of the spring of life, the immortal tree might not be saved. Therefore, he plucked the fruit. He had no qualms about taking this gift. The moment he held the fruit, it immediately exuded a rich aroma. Bu Fang took a deep breath and sensed a strong spirit essence. Without a doubt, the gift was not an ordinary item. He didn't plan to open the gift here in the fifth layer. Instead, he would only open it when he returned to Immortal Chef Little Store. There was nothing left to do. Although Realm Lord Ditai was weak, he was in high spirits. City Lord Zhu was very excited, too. He had thought the immortal cooking realm's destruction was inevitable, and it never occurred to him that the realm was eventually saved by the great demon king. The way he looked at Bu Fang now was completely different. After passing through the fifth layer's entrance, the group of people came directly to the third layer. Since the fifth layer had crashed and fused completely with the fourth layer, the immortal cooking realm had only four layers from now on. In the immortal city of the third layer, the walls were crowded with immortal chefs. All of them were looking expectantly at the entrance. City Lord Meng Qi stood in front of them all with her beautiful eyes fixed at the entrance as well. Suddenly, several figures stepped out of the entrance. At the sight of those familiar figures, a look of joy shone in her eyes, and her tensed heart finally relaxed at this moment. She covered her mouth with a hand and felt like crying. Bu Fang, Realm Lord Ditai, City Lord Zhu, and Lord Dog. They were back. This meant the immortal cooking realm had survived the crisis. The immortal cooking realm was saved. For a moment, City Lord Meng Qi's heart was filled with mixed emotions. After a moment's silence, the immortal chefs broke out in cheers, their voices and cries filled with genuine happiness and excitement. The joy of victory filled every eye with tears. The immortal cooking realm was their home. They once thought that their home was about to be destroyed, but it was saved now. The happiness of surviving a calamity made them cheer from the bottom of their hearts. Realm Lord D. Tai's eyes turned somewhat blurry as he looked at the cheering immortal chefs, while a hint of a smile brushed his lips. This was a moment that made him feel proud of being a Realm Lord. Bu Fang also had a smile on his face. They didn't stay for it too long in the third layer.
The battle had greatly exhausted everyone, and they needed rest. Bu Fang had depleted his divine perception after using the perishing pot. Realm Lord Di Tai had borrowed the will of the Great Path, and it had severely hurt his body. Moreover, to quicken the growth of the immortal tree's seedling, he had offered a great part of his blood essence. That was why he was in a weakened state at this moment, and his cultivation base of a little saint almost fell back to the level of a half-step saint. City Lord Zhu's body was already at its limit after fighting a great battle and using the last drop of his immortal energy. If Bu Fang hadn't given him a crystal fruit of life, he would have died a long time ago. They all needed a good rest. Lord Dog, on the other hand, was in great shape. Strutting his elegant cat-like steps, he was thinking how Bu Fang would cook the leg of lamb as drool dripped down his mouth. Meng Qi didn't stay in the third layer either. She needed a rest as well, so she followed Bu Fang and the others back to Immortal Chef Little Store in the first layer. The restaurant's door creaked as it was being pushed open. A moment later, a strong aroma of dishes wafted out of the restaurant. The smell made everyone feel that they had come to a different world. No matter if there was a war out there or not, Immortal Chef Little Store was always so cozy and tranquil. Ding. The curtain separating the kitchen was lifted. Shishi walked out with a dish in her hands and placed it on the table. A smile spread across her face when she saw Bu Fang and the others pushed through the door. Teacher Bu, you're back. She called out happily. The Black Dragon King and the others walked out. Nethery's face was cold, and she was followed by Flowery, who was now a teenage girl. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief when they saw Bu Fang and the others were fine. They had been worrying about them. Suddenly, Foxy, who was lying on Bu Fang's shoulder, jumped on the table, fixing her eyes on the dish she she had brought out with a gluttonous look on her face. Then, she threw herself to the plate and began eating. She she looked curiously at Foxy. What a lovely little fox, she exclaimed and reached out a hand to stroke Foxy's head. The furry feeling made her giggle. She is Foxy, a new member of our restaurant, Bu Fang said. After that, he rubbed Foxy's head, then Shishi's. Both Foxy and Shishi were still children. Realm Lord Di Tai and the others smiled at the warm scene. They were so exhausted that they sat down on the nearest chairs and sighed softly. Bu Fang glanced at the crowd and said, Wait here. I'll prepare some dishes that go well with wine. Cooking the great saint leg of lamb will wait until nightfall, Realm Lord Di Tai, City Lord Zhu, and the others nodded. Bu Fang smiled. Suddenly, Realm Lord Di Tai seemed to have recalled something. He looked at Bu Fang and said, Bu Fang, my little friend, don't you want to know what the immortal tree gave you? Open the fruit and have a look. There was a look of curiosity on everyone's face when they heard that. Lord Dog also narrowed his eyes with great interest. Bu Fang paused for a moment, then nodded. With a thought, the sparkling seven-colored fruit appeared in his hand. The dragon bone kitchen knife spun and slashed out like a meteor. Under Bu Fang's knife, the fruit's seven-colored skin gradually peeled off and revealed the gift. End of chapter. Chapter 1175. Roast Leg of Lamb. Peeling skins off fruits required skills. It was like gambling on stones, which was the practice of buying a raw stone and then cutting it open, with the hopes of it holding some gems. Therefore, care must be taken to prevent the contents from being damaged. Bu Fang didn't know any technique for cutting a gamble stone, but he had knife techniques. Coupled with his divine perception, it was easy to make a perfect peel. Seven colored skins quickly fell off the fruit. Bu Fang was curious about what the immortal tree's spirit had given him. The others also watched curiously with white eyes as the gift was slowly revealed. Suddenly. There it is. Realm Lord Di Tai exclaimed, his eyes lighting up. The dragon bone kitchen knife in Bu Fang's hand stopped moving at once. What is it? What did the immortal tree give you? The people around asked impatiently. Bu Fang pushed the flesh aside with his hand and soon saw the gift. It was a golden egg. It looked like it was made of pure gold, shining brilliantly in the light and looking extremely luxurious. If it weren't for the powerful vitality in the egg, Bu Fang would have thought that the immortal tree had given him an artwork for decoration. A golden egg? Not only him, but even Realm Lord Di Tai and the others were perplexed. They didn't know what egg was this. It looks like a dragon egg. Lord Dog's eyes suddenly lit up, his mouth watering at the sight of the golden egg. Then, he twitched his nose and sniffed the aura exuding from it. His eyes grew even brighter as he added, dragon eggs are the best. No matter if you want to boil it or fry it, you have my support. Bu Fang gave him a sideways glance. Does this dog only care about food? 
If this is really a dragon egg, why not hatch it and raise it up so there'd be an endless supply of dragon meat? Bu Fang suggested. His suggestion made perfect sense, and it gave Lord Dog a pause. Lately, Bu Fang discovered that he seemed to have activated a new ability, that his bluffing skills had become really good. He had managed to bluff the two little saints, and now, Lord Dog. The discussion of how the golden egg should be cooked between the man and the dog rendered Realm Lord D. Tai and the others speechless. The immortal tree's spirit might have made a very bad decision. It shouldn't have given Bu Fang the dragon egg. Bu Fang was a chef, and he was followed by a gluttonous dog. How would the dragon egg have a good ending when it was given to both of them? Realm Lord D. Tai and the others gasped in horror at such a thought. This was an extraordinary dragon egg. It contained an enormous amount of energy, which was even more terrifying than the perishing pot Bu Fang had thrown out previously. It seemed to have gathered the energy of the whole immortal cooking realm. The immortal tree had given Bu Fang a great gift. Realm Lord D. Tai glanced at Bu Fang. He was speechless when he found that the latter was still discussing with Lord Dog about whether they should hatch the egg or not. It was a dragon egg. Shouldn't they cherish it? After a long discussion that seemed to be getting nowhere, the man and the dog stopped arguing. Bu Fang sent the egg into the farmland and asked New Hansen to incubate it. After that, he turned and walked into the kitchen. He was going to prepare some dishes that went with wine so that everyone could have a relaxing time. Shishi followed him into the kitchen. It was a wonderful thing to learn cooking from Bu Fang. The dishes were not that difficult to prepare. Before very long, an aroma began wafting out of the kitchen. It was not a strong aroma, however. Bu Fang walked out with two dishes in his hands and placed them on the table. Everyone came over and sat around him. The dishes were simple. In one plate was soy preserved radish and the other slices of boiled demon beef. Bu Fang took out blue and white porcelain cups and poured wine for everyone. The wine foamed in the cups and gave off a rich aroma. A sniff of it was enough to lift pressure off one's shoulder and make one feel relaxed. What a fragrant wine. The crowd praised as they sniffed at the aroma. Everyone knew that Bu Fang had good wine, but it was not so easy for them to taste it. They toasted each other and tasted the wine, taking small slices of dishes from time to time. The battle had exhausted everyone, but the cup of wine washed all their weariness away. They felt much relaxed now. Bu Fang finished his cup of wine in one gulp. After downing the cup of yellow spring helplessness wine, he felt his body become warmer, and his pale face also turned ruddy. The wine had many effects, such as relieving fatigue and relaxing the spirit, which were very beneficial to anyone. However, after finishing his wine, Bu Fang sighed silently. As his strength increased, his demand for wine had become higher and higher. In the past, Yellow Spring Helplessness wine had been able to satisfy him, but as his cultivation base advanced to nine-star true immortal realm, the wine brewed with one-leaf Yellow Spring grass and flower of helplessness was no longer as effective as before. At the very least, he needed to replace the yellow spring grass with some higher leaf ones. The crowd drank wine and chatted. Bu Fang didn't stay with them for too long. After some time, he walked back into the kitchen, then entered the heaven and earth farmland. He was greeted by a gentle and comfortable breeze as he went to the wooden cabin. New Hansen was holding the golden dragon egg and kept looking at it. Clearly, he never saw a golden egg in his life before. When he saw Bu Fang, he hurried over and greeted him excitedly. This is a dragon egg. Try to hatch it. Bu Fang told New Hansen. He believed the latter had the talent to hatch eggs. New Hansen was stunned. It was such a difficult task. That he had to get a cow to help him. Anyway, I'm not here for this dragon egg, but the leg of lamb. Where is it now? Bu Fang asked. The leg of lamb? Owner Bu is here for the leg of lamb? He sounded like it's something very important. New Hansen blinked, then he quickly led Bu Fang into the wooden cabin. The leg of lamb was casually thrown in a corner. When Bu Fang saw the leg was left in a random corner by New Hansen, he couldn't help but twitch the corner of his mouth. This leg of lamb was the leg of a great saint and a priceless ingredient, and yet it was shoved up in a corner like some useless thing. Holding the leg of lamb, Bu Fang didn't know whether to laugh or weep. Aside from the leg of lamb, Bu Fang had another thing to do in the farmland. He wanted to plant the seed of the Nine Revolution Great Path Tea which was the reward given to him by the system. He knew it must be an extraordinary plan just by its name. Although Bu Fang didn't attach too much importance to it, he thought it would be better to just plant it here. The heaven and earth farmland had the source of the spring of life, which was the key to plant an immortal ingredient. 
that was why, without a doubt, the Nine Revolution Great Path tea would grow very well here. The immortal tree was flourishing in front of the wooden cabin, doubling in size every other day. Perhaps because of the locations where they were planted, the tree that grew from the immortal tree's seed looked a little different from the one in the immortal cooking realm. What's the name of the immortal trees? They should have a name, shouldn't they? Bu Fang glanced at the immortal tree and suddenly thought of that, so he asked the system. In his view, the system should know the answer. After all, it was like an encyclopedia. System, does this immortal tree have a name? Willow, pear, sycamore. All trees have names, right? Bu Fang asked the system as he dug a hole in the ground opposite the immortal tree with a hoe. The system didn't answer him immediately. It was not until he dug the hole, dropped the tea tree's seed into it, and watered it with the spring of life, that the system slowly answered him. The actual name of immortal trees is Myriad Treasures Immortal Tree. It's a sacred great immortal ingredient, and was once the weapon of a supreme expert, the system's serious voice rang out. Bu Fang paused, and his eyes shrank. Myriad Treasures Immortal Tree? The immortal tree was once the weapon of a supreme expert? What the heck? The system ignored his doubts. That was its only answer. Bu Fang thought for a moment and asked, is the supreme expert who once owned the immortal tree dead? As his strength increased, the system answered more and more of his questions. But this time, it didn't answer him. It rejected his question, saying, your level is not high enough to know the answer. This reply was enough to make Bu Fang lost in thought. As he was pondering, a green seedling broke through the soil and quickly grew into a small tree. It was only about the height of an adult and wouldn't grow taller. The small tree looked like a tea tree. However, its leaves had two colors, completely different on the front and back. This is the Nine Revolution Great Path Tea Tree? Bu Fang took a deep breath and walked around the tree. The leaves had not matured, so it was not the best time to pick them. Anyway, despite his curiosity and doubts, he was not in a hurry to harvest the leaves. He just asked New Hansen to take good care of this tea tree. He also told him not to neglect the dragon egg. If he could hatch a little dragon. That would be very interesting. While Bu Fang was talking to New Hansen, Jing Yuan appeared in the farmland with a wooden barrel. She was here for the milk. Making ice cream consumed a lot of milk, and business in Goddess City was booming. Basically, she had to come here every day to get more milk. Jing Yuan was very excited when she saw Bu Fang. However, as Bu Fang had to go back to cook the leg of lamb, he only chatted a few words with her before he bid her farewell and left the farmland. After he had left, New Hansen began to prepare to hatch the egg. He even built a hatchery for the task. Bu Fang returned to the kitchen, holding the leg of lamb that gave off a strong pressure and nether energy. According to Lord Dog, this leg of lamb should be the limb of a great saint. The great saint should be an expert from the Nine Revolution Nether Chef's clan who got one of his legs ripped away by Lord Dog in the battle. Now, the leg was about to turn into a dish. How should the leg of lamb be cooked? Bu Fang considered many ways, but in the end, he decided to preserve its original taste. The main reason was that the grade of this great saint ingredient was too high, and he had no other way to cook it now. He was not even a second-grade immortal chef. Of course, his cooking skills had definitely reached the level of a second-grade immortal chef. However, the system didn't recognize it, so he had no choice but to find some time to be assessed and become a second-grade immortal chef. He placed the leg of lamb into a basket and began washing it with Heavenly Mountain Spirit spring water. The great saint ingredient was already clean, so its taste wouldn't be affected even if he didn't wash it. After washing it, he began to remove the hair. Although it was a great saint ingredient, he couldn't let everyone eat the hair as well. It was not easy to remove the leg hair of a great saint. Bu Fang produced a black turtle constellation wok and filled half of it with the spring of life. Soon, the water bubbled and burst with hot steam. He put the lamb into the boiling water. Then, he took out the dragon bone kitchen knife, spun it, and removed the leg from the water. Holding it by the hoof with one hand, Bu Fang grabbed the knife's back with the other hand and scrapped the leg's skin. Moistened by the spring of life, the great saint's leg hair had softened a lot, no longer as sharp and tough as a blade. A large patch of hair was removed as soon as the knife scraped across the skin. Bu Fang kept scraping the skin skillfully while it was hot, removing all the hair. When he was done, he thought for a moment and borrowed the war god stick from Whitey. The slim and long stick pierced through the lamb and stretched it out. Bu Fang made a few cuts on the leg with the dragon bone kitchen knife, so the flavor could distribute evenly during the cooking process. 
After he was done with the preparations, Bu Fang took a step back. He raised a hand, and a white flame emerged and swirled in his palm. With a flick of his finger, the flame engulfed the leg of lamb. Cooking the great saint ingredient had now begun. End of chapter. Chapter 1176. The Aromatic Golden Leg of Lamb. Roasted leg of lamb was a main course and a rather troublesome dish to prepare. It could be served in a feast. Bu Fang could actually choose to serve a roasted leg of lamb at the imperial feast in Goddess City. However, he didn't cook this dish because he didn't have the ingredient. Now, Lord Dog and the Immortal Tree had brought him the leg of a great saint. This was the time to test his cooking skills. How to roast a leg of lamb was a serious question. Bu Fang borrowed the war god stick from Whitey, stabbed it through the leg, and stretched it out. Of course, he couldn't just roast it like this. The lamb roasted in this way would taste gamey and nothing else. Therefore, Bu Fang took out many ingredients. There were many spirit ingredients and spirit herbs planted in his heaven and earth farmland now, and the ingredients of some dishes were also specially cultivated, such as scale tail scallion, purple garlic, and sun mother ginger. Of course, there were many other ingredients too, which were made into common spices by Bu Fang. Spices were the best things to use in a roasted dish like this. Not only could they cover the meat's gamey taste, but they could also intensify and bring out the meat's fragrance. He peeled a bulb of purple garlic and chopped the cloves into tiny pieces. Then, he poked many tiny holes in the leg and stuffed them with garlic. After that, he sprinkled powdered herbs all over its surface. It was a marinating process. While sprinkling herbs, Bu Fang also used his true energy to infuse the flavor of the spices into the leg of lamb. He precisely controlled the degree of infusion, making sure that the spices only infused 60% of the meat. He would finish the rest during the roasting process so that the flavor would pop when the cooking was done. After sprinkling all the spices, Bu Fang took out a processed exploding flame pepper, which was extremely dry and hot. He removed all the seeds in the pepper and stuffed them into the tiny holes as well. Now that the preparations were done, the next step was to begin roasting the lamb. Whitey's war god stick was hot, but the temperature was not high enough, so Bu Fang measured its length and built a stove with a rack over it. He placed the leg on the rack and threw the white flame into the stove. Boom. In an instant, the immortal flame roared and burst with a high temperature. There were a few vent holes in the stove, through which the immortal flames shot out and licked the lamb. Although this leg of lamb was the flesh of a great saint, after being processed by Bu Fang, it had lost its unique strong defense, and its pressure of a great saint was almost gone. The remaining pressure, just a tiny bit of it, could actually improve the dish's level. In just a brief moment, the jets of scorching flames had changed the lamb's color from pinkish white to pinkish red. As the roasting progressed, grease began oozing out and dripping onto the stove, filling the air with sizzling noises. Roasted leg of lamb was a delicacy that required time and patience to prepare, so it could not be cooked through in a short time. The leg of lamb was large and thick, and the meat further inside was harder to cook. Therefore, what Bu Fang needed to do with this hard-to-cook lamb was to use his divine perception to monitor the doneness of the meat as it was being roasted. Bu Fang clasped his hands behind his back and walked around the stove. He didn't turn the leg and just let the flames roast one side. The aroma of spices permeated the air, which was extremely fragrant. He didn't know much about spices, but he knew that they were made by drying and grinding many spirit herbs, which had the effect of stimulating one's taste buds and adding texture and flavor to the ingredients. Spices were crucial to roasted dishes, and roasted leg of lamb required a very important spice rosemary. It was different from rosemary on earth. Bu Fang learned from the system that the required rosemary was a top-grade immortal ingredient, which was made by drying and grinding the stalks of rosemary bone flour. Rosemary bone flour was highly toxic, but its stalks could be made into spices. When the outer layer of the stalk was removed, you would find a substance, which was the source of the flower's scent. The flower's toxicity didn't come from its scent, but the petals. It used scent to attract people to touch it, and anyone who touched the petals would be killed by an odorless and colorless poisonous substance, which was powerful enough to kill a nine-star true immortal. However, its scent was harmless. Bu Fang produced a little white ceramic bottle and uncorked it. Immediately, a pungent aroma spread out of the bottle, and a hazy golden light seemed to drift out of it as well. This was the required spice, rosemary. It was really fragrant. Even Bu Fang couldn't resist it, letting himself immerse in the aroma. However, he was a chef after all, and his divine perception was very powerful. Soon, he managed to collect himself. 
He held the bottle's neck between his thumb and middle finger, tilted it slightly, and tapped its mouth lightly with his index finger. The rosemary in the bottle jumped out and sprinkled onto the leg of lamb. The spice had an attractive pale golden color, making the leg seem to cover in a layer of gold. As the roasting continued, the sound of grease spitting grew louder and louder, and as the surface of the lamb turned golden, a meaty aroma began to spread. It was a rich aroma. Perhaps because of the meat quality, it was so rich that one could hardly resist the urge to taste the meat at the first whiff of the aroma. It smells so delicious. Bu Fang exclaimed. The next part of the roasting process was a bit more complicated, so instead of completing it in the kitchen, he took the roasting rack out. The bell chimed as Bu Fang lifted the curtain and walked out of the kitchen. As he came out, the aroma of spices, rosemary, and the lamb immediately permeated the air, attracting everyone's attention. The people, who were reclining in their chairs to rest and relax, immediately straightened up. Foxy couldn't resist the aroma the moment she smelled it, and she leaped toward the leg of lamb in a beam of white light. Bu Fang raised a hand and flicked his finger on her head, throwing her to the table. She rolled before sitting up with a confused look on her face. After that, Bu Fang placed the roasting rack on the table and lightly turned the war god stick. Slowly, the leg of lamb turned upside down. Sizzle. Pulled by gravity, drops of golden grease glided down across the leg's surface and fell into the roaring flames, evaporating in an instant and making the meaty aroma even stronger. A dagger appeared in Bu Fang's grip. He used it to gently stab the leg from time to time to feel the meat's doneness. Shishi stood next to him and watched intently. She could feel the subtlety of Bu Fang's movements, his control over the flames, and the depth of the dagger when it was inserted into the meat. The rest of the people sat around Bu Fang. This was the way the tables and chairs were set in Immortal Chef Little Store, which was very unique. Everyone was staring at the roasting rack on the table and the leg of lamb over the stove. After a short while, the pinkish color of the meat had faded and was replaced by a light golden color. A rich meaty aroma wafted out of the light golden meat. However, it was not ready to be eaten yet. The roasting continued. The smell of spices filled the air and made everyone hungry. Even then, Realm Lord Ditai stared at the leg of lamb with white eyes and sucked in a cold breath. You used spices, didn't you? He turned to look at Bu Fang and asked. Bu Fang nodded. Spices such as rosemary were essential seasonings for roasted leg of lamb. Spices are a big part of delicacies. However, the immortal cooking realm has never had a systematic way of making them. In the earliest days, there was a Killin chef who specialized in spices, but ever since he was killed by an expert of the Nine Revolution Nether Chef's clan, the recipe for spices has been completely lost. Realm Lord Ditai sighed. Then, he took a deep breath as he looked at the golden roasted leg of lamb. The fragrance of spices went into his nostrils and made him so comfortable. I don't know much about spices either. Bu Fang confessed. Spices were a big category of food. For some chefs, as long as there were spices, they could cook even the lowest quality ingredients into the most delicious delicacies in the world. Spices were everything for such chefs. Bu Fang was a stranger to the combinations of spices. After all, he had not studied them thoroughly. The combination of different spices and the amount used would make the aroma of the combined spices vary greatly. Therefore, chefs who were good at using spices were very rare. As time passed, the leg of lamb turned golden red. It was the color of fully cooked meat. The cooking had come to the final phase. After sprinkling all the remaining spices onto the lamb, Bu Fang took out the improved version of abyssal chili sauce. He scooped half a tablespoon of the chili sauce into a porcelain bowl and mixed it with lamb fat. Then, he took out a brush, dipped it into the chili sauce, and began brushing the leg of lamb. Sizzle. Fat dripped into flames and evaporated, giving off a spicy scent that fused with the lamb's aroma. It was a delicious smell. The crowd couldn't hold it anymore, gulping again and again. Foxy was about to make a move, but a glance from Bu Fang made her curl into a ball again. Lord Dog stuck out his tongue with his eyes lit up. He knew that it was the right thing to give Bu Fang the leg of lamb. The aroma of it was simply irresistible. Rumble. Dark clouds began to gather in the sky outside Immortal Chef Little Store. This time, they were very dense and thick. In just a flash, the whole first layer was blanketed by dark clouds. All the people looked up at the sky in shock. They knew an immortal chef must be cooking a delicacy and was about to face the lightning punishment. However, the magnitude of this punishment seemed to be quite out of the ordinary. Gongshu Ban and the others were slightly stunned when they saw the lightning punishment. 
The next moment, they seemed to have remembered something, and they gasped. Then, they quickly rushed toward Immortal Chef Little Store. Owner Boo must be cooking a delicious delicacy again. Rumble. Terrible lightning bolts flashed in the sky, which looked like dragons with each scale clearly visible. Since the lightning punishment was here, it meant that the dish was about to be completed. Boo Fang had almost finished roasting the leg of lamb. However, he planned to prepare some side dishes. He took out many scale tail scallions, washed them, and placed them on a porcelain plate. In addition to scallions, Bu Fang also wanted to make roasted rice flour pancakes. He took out some fragrant rice, which he had harvested from the paddies in the heaven and earth farmland. The rice was put into a bowl, ground into powder, mixed with water, and shaped into small round doughs. After that, he placed them under the stove and baked until white bubbles formed on their surfaces. When the bottom of the pancakes turned slightly yellow and white bubbles formed on their surfaces, they were ready. He took them out one by one and placed them on a porcelain plate. After that, Bu Fang began making the sauce. While he was making it, he also turned the leg of lamb, causing a warm flavor to infuse into the meat instantly. The golden and fragrant roasted leg of lamb was completely cooked at this moment. With a snap, the white flame shot back to Bu Fang's finger and burned quietly. He blew at it, and the fire faded away. Now that the flame was extinguished, the dish was ready to serve. The much-anticipated roasted leg of lamb was finally done. End of chapter. Chapter 1177. Eat. At last, the roasted leg of lamb was ready. A delicious aroma permeated the air. It was so intense that even the door couldn't stop it from drifting far away. Everyone in the restaurant could hardly stop their mouths from watering the aroma thoroughly aroused their taste buds and appetite. Outside the door, dark clouds rolled and thunderclaps rang. A vast pressure constantly fell, smashing everything. Whitey had long been standing outside the restaurant, looking up at the sky and confronting the lightning. By the looks of it, the lightning punishment this time was very strong. The oppressive-looking clouds pressed down so low that they seemed to touch the city and were about to destroy its walls. With a clang, Whitey spread its metal wings as lightning arcs darted out of its mechanical eyes. The next moment, the lightning punishment fell, and Whitey soared into the sky. A thunder dragon slithered out of dark clouds, baring its teeth and brandishing its claws as if to rip the sky. It emanated a scary pressure that made people shudder in fear. Whitey was not afraid of it. It flew upward, thrusting a fist as if to punch the sky, then crashed into the roaring thunder dragon. Bolts of lightning shot out in all directions and smashed the ground, spilling sparks and flames, while the dark clouds rumbled and rolled furiously. The onlookers were dumbstruck, shivering in fear as they all looked up at the terrible collision in the sky. A moment later, however, they became extremely excited. One lightning punishment. Two lightning punishments. Three. A total of eight lightning punishments descended in succession. Whitey was charred all over with bolts of lightning slithering across its body. The onlookers held their breaths and didn't dare to make a sound. Eight lightning punishments. What did owner Boo cook this time that attracted eight lightning punishments? After stopping the eight lightning punishment, Whitey's body sunk deep into the ground, which had cracked under its feet. Plumes of dust and smoke billowed. Amid the hazy darkness, Whitey's mechanical eyes flicked open and burst into light, and its aura soared. There seemed to be more dark clouds gathering in the sky. All the onlookers were in shock and disbelief. Was there more? Lightning? What came after the eight lightning punishment? The ninth lightning punishment. It was the legendary lightning punishment. How many years had it been since the ninth lightning punishment appeared in the immortal cooking realm? If it appeared now, could the realm in its current state withstand the power? However, after churning and rumbling for some time, the dark clouds scattered and faded away. The ninth lightning punishment didn't descend. The legendary realm was not that easy to break through. Bu Fang was, after all, a first great immortal chef. He was already considered freakish after attracting eight lightning punishments with the strength of a first great immortal chef. If he did attract the ninth lightning punishment, he would draw the jealousy of heaven. The metal wings on Whitey's back retracted. Its performance had finished, and it stepped back into the restaurant with lightning arcs crackling all over its body. Inside the restaurant. Everyone noticed that the lightning punishment had ended, and they couldn't help but feel excited. The end of the lightning punishment meant that they could now taste the delicacy cooked with a great saint ingredient. It was truly a rare opportunity. How could a great saint become someone else's food so easily? It was not easy to obtain this great saint leg of lamb. Lord Dog's mouth was already salivating at the anticipation of this roasted delicacy. 
the others also looked forward to tasting it. Bu Fang didn't let them wait for too long. He took out blue and white porcelain plates and distributed them to each person sitting in front of the table. He was fond of using plates with this pattern because he felt they carried a special meaning. Everyone took the plate and stared at the golden roasted leg of lamb. A strong aroma wafted out of the leg, which was a mixture of meaty fragrance and spices, enticing everyone's hunger. Bu Fang shook his hand and produced a dragon bone kitchen knife. With a thought, he transformed the knife into a golden dagger. It had sharp edges, and its hilt was carved with dragons, which made it look rather luxurious. However, these were not important. Bu Fang chose to use the dragon bone kitchen knife because he was familiar and more comfortable with it. Another reason was that the next step, the cutting of the lamb, was a very important step. After toying with the dagger for a while, he passed the roasted rice flour pancakes and the blue and white porcelain plate to everyone. The pancakes were to go down with the roasted lamb. Slices of meat would be cut from the leg, wrapped in a pancake, dipped in sauce, and then shoved into the mouth. When bit down, the fragrance of rice, lamb, and sauce would burst and mix into a unique indescribable taste. Of course, one could choose to taste the lamb without the pancake, which would be a different kind of experience. It was up to the person, really. Bu Fang preferred to eat the lamb with pancakes. After all, the pancakes were made with the rice planted in his farmland, which contained the powerful will of the Great Path. Bu Fang, boy, be quick and give me a slice of lamb. I can't bear it anymore. Lord Dog placed both his front paws on the table and looked at Bu Fang. Bu Fang gave him a look and smiled. Wasting no time, he spun the dagger and grabbed its hilt, holding it in a different way than usual, with the blade pointing at himself and his palm facing upward. Then, he moved closer to the steaming leg of lamb. The lamb's skin was roasted to a golden color with grease steadily trickling down and dripping to the floor. Bu Fang studied the leg of lamb, trying to find a good spot to make the first cut. After turning the war god stick, he finally found one. Holding the dagger sideways, he slowly cut a small slice of lamb from the leg. He removed the slice with the blade, glanced about, and waved his hand. The lamb, diffusing rich aroma, fell into Lord Dog's plate. Lord Dog's eyes lit up. Without saying anything, he wagged his tail and buried his head into the plate, scarfing down the slice of lamb in a flash. Woo! Lord Dog was enthralled. The taste of a great saint ingredient was absolutely incomparable. The meat was soft and fragrant, and the infusion of spices made the lamb incredibly delicious. Moreover, as it was glazed with abyssal chili sauce, the meat had a unique spicy taste. The spicy taste was almost soul-corrupting, making one shudder all over. After wolfing down the lamb, Lord Dog even licked the plate clean of the last drops of grease and sauce. Bu Fang, boy, I want more. Lord Dog stuck out his tongue and said. However, Bu Fang just gave him a sideways glance and said nothing. The dagger continued cutting. Soon, another slice of lamb was removed and given to Nethery. Nethery narrowed her eyes and took it with a gentle smile. She chose to wrap the lamb with a roasted rice flour pancake. She didn't want to waste any food prepared by Bu Fang. Roasted rice flour pancakes were actually a kind of flatbread. It was made by mashing cooked rice into a paste and shaping it into round doughs, which were then roasted over an oven until one side bubbled and the other side turned yellow. Pancakes made in this way were crispy on the outside while soft inside and had the rich aroma of rice. Nethery stuffed the lamb into the pancake, which bulged on both sides and absorbed all the grease. Then, using a porcelain spoon, she scooped the sauce placed in front of her. The sauce was specially prepared by Bu Fang, so of course, Nethery wouldn't miss it. She scooped up a spoonful of sauce and drizzled it on the pancake, which seeped through the opening to mix with the lamb. It looked extremely appetizing. The people around swallowed as they stared at Nethery and the pancake in her hand. Bu Fang looked up at Nethery and smiled. This was the right way to enjoy the lamb, and it was also the meaningful way. The knife in his hand glinted as he moved it slowly across the leg. He did it to keep every slice of lamb in perfect shape. The surface of the lamb was the most delicious and flavorful. After cutting and distributing all the surface meat to everyone, Bu Fang continued roasting the lamb with the stove's residual heat so that the part with meat cut away could continue absorbing the flavor. Meanwhile, the others began to taste the delicacy. Nethery held up the pancake, parted her red lips, and gave it a bite. Crack. The pancake was crispy on the outside and soft and moist inside. The warm feeling when the teeth bit into it made her heart surge with happiness. She bit further and reached the steaming lamb. 
The unique smell of lamb filled her mouth. Although it was strong, it was not gamey. And the delicious sauce elevated the taste to the next level, making anyone who ate it tremble from top to bottom. Looking at them enjoying the roasted lamb wrapped in roasted rice flour pancakes, Bu Fang became lost in thought. This delicacy reminded him of a famous snack in his previous life marinated meat in a baked bun. He could always make this snack when he was free, and since there were so many gourmet arrays, he could also continue creating death food tools. This marinated meat in a baked bun could become the carrier of the arrays. Bu Fang cut off a slice of lamb, opened his mouth, turned the dagger, and let the lamb fall. The lamb slid down the blade and was caught by Bu Fang's tongue. He bit into it. The meat's texture was perfect. The aroma of spices, the purple garlic infused into the lamb, and the enchanting fragrance of rosemary exploded in his mouth in an instant, intoxicating him. Coupled with the delicious abyssal chili sauce, the lamb seemed to have magic power. It was truly a great saint ingredient with a completely different taste. If other legs of lamb were used, although the taste would not be bad, it would lack a unique flavor. A great saint ingredient contained vast vitality energy and life energy. As they ate, their mouths were spewing with vitality energy, which was rich and didn't dissipate, lingering in their mouths as if it was continuously nourishing their bodies. The crowd, fatigued by the great battle, felt as if their bodies had reached their peak forms at this moment. Meanwhile, the aroma of roasted leg of lamb and fine wine, permeated the air and drifted out through the restaurant's door, enveloping the whole immortal city. After a long time. The people in the restaurant were finally done eating the whole roasted leg of lamb. Bu Fang paid great attention to the cutting, trying his best to remove all the meat from the bone. Eventually, every strand of lamb was sliced and removed. After having a delicious meal, the crowd lay comfortably in their chairs with vitality energy filling their mouths and noses. A great sane roasted leg of lamb was enough for them to savor for several days. After having a good meal, everyone left the restaurant lazily. Now that the immortal cooking realm's crisis was over, everyone felt much relaxed. The will of the great path had returned, and the immortal tree had resurrected. In just a very short time, the immortal cooking realm was full of vigor once again. When Realm Lord D. Tai was about to leave Immortal Chef Little Store, he seemed to recall something. He turned to Bu Fang, who was cleaning the bone, and said, Bu Fang, my little friend, your cooking skills should have broken through the shackle of a first-grade immortal chef. It's time for you to be assessed and become a higher-grade immortal chef, so you can obtain more resources and have a deeper understanding of cooking skills. Bu Fang, holding the bone, looked at Realm Lord Ditai in surprise. He knew that his cooking skills had long gone beyond that of a first-grade immortal chef, and he needed to be assessed. No matter if it was for glory or more resources, he should not give up the assessment. I will go. Bu Fang nodded. Realm Lord Ditai grinned when he heard Bu Fang's reply and flipped his golden hair. I'll personally be in charge of your assessment. After saying that, he took his leave. Bu Fang twitched his mouth. After everyone left, he closed the restaurant's door. The whole restaurant was filled with the aroma of roasted lamb. Bu Fang took a deep breath and stretched. Lord Dog was already lying in a corner and sleeping soundly with Flowery next to him. Looking at the warm scene, Bu Fang felt somewhat at ease. After cleaning and putting everything back, Bu Fang went upstairs. Nethery clasped her hands behind her back and followed. Soon, they came to the rooms on the second floor. They opened the doors and went into their respective rooms. It was only until Nethery looked through the gap and saw Bu Fang close his door that she gently closed her door. End of chapter. Chapter 1178. Nine Revolution Great Path T. In the bathroom, dense steam was rolling slowly under the dim yellow light, while drops of water splashed about. Bu Fang, clad in a bathrobe, walked out from the bathroom. His wet hair gradually dried up as he rubbed them with a towel. He reached out a hand, spread his palm, and wove the fingers through his hair, feeling a cold sensation on the fingertips. A look of contentment emerged on his face. He breathed a sigh of relief and sat on his soft bed. He had not had such a pleasant rest in a long time, and he missed such moments. After sitting on the bed for a while, he got up and went to the window. The window was open. A breeze blew through it from outside, caressing his face and making him feel relaxed. He leaned against the window and stroked his chin, his eyes looking at the brightly lit immortal city. Even at night, the city was very lively, as if it never sleeps. The crisis of the immortal cooking realm was over, and the whole realm was filled with an atmosphere of celebration. Gongshu Beiguang, the city lord of the first layer, ordered the whole city to celebrate. 
therefore, many immortal chefs held banquets and cooked for people, making the entire city full of rich fragrance. For people in the immortal cooking realm, what better way to celebrate such a joyful event than cooking delicious food? As he felt the blowing of the night breeze and smelled the fragrance of delicious food in the air, Bu Fang's mood calmed down a lot. After a long time, he closed the window, laid down on the bed, and covered himself with a blanket, which was soft and cozy. He closed his eyes. A short while later, he began snoring softly. The mental relief made Bu Fang fall asleep. It was quiet throughout the night. The next morning. Sunlight fell through the window and shone onto Bu Fang's face, making him narrow his eyes slightly. His hair spread out messily across the bed. He sat up, stretched as he yawned, then rubbed the sleep from his eyes. After that, he got up and went to the bathroom to wash his face and rinse his mouth. When he was done, he walked out of his room and came to the kitchen. The kitchen was already filled with the sounds of someone busy working, which surprised Bu Fang. He looked into it and saw Shishi. Wearing a chef's robe, she was practicing her knife techniques and cooking delicious food. As if she had sensed Bu Fang's arrival, Shishi looked up and smiled sweetly at him. Good morning teacher Bu. Bu Fang nodded and rubbed her head. After that, he walked to his own cooking bench, took out a kitchen knife, and began practicing knife techniques. Shishi felt a thrill of excitement when she saw Bu Fang working so hard. When people who are better than you work harder than you, what excuse do you have to continue to be lazy? So Shishi followed Bu Fang's steps and resumed practicing her cooking skills. The ravaged fifth layer of the immortal cooking realm only had the immortal tree, which was standing tall and proud with its huge canopy covering the sky. A gust of fresh wind blew over and rolled up the sand on the ground. Realm Lord Ditai, Yuya, City Lord Mengqi, and City Lord Zhu landed in the fifth layer that had turned into a ruin. The sand was the only thing left in the fifth layer. However, now that the immortal tree was here, it should have no trouble turning back into a lush green land again. The resurrected immortal cooking realm had brought new hope and future to the immortal cooking realm. From today on, all the cooking competitions in the immortal cooking realm will be replaced by chef's challenges, and chef's challenges between individuals are encouraged as well. The immortal chefs have been living in peace for too long and have lost their aggressiveness. If this were to continue, the realm will suffer another calamity sooner or later. Realm Lord D. Tai clasped his hands behind his back. A breeze blew over, making his yellow hair wave. City Lord Meng Qi and the others nodded. Although the Bronze Gate is locked up by the Immortal Tree's branch, it won't last too long. We have to grow stronger. This is the only way we can protect our home, Realm Lord Ditai said in a deep voice. It was only through despair that one realized how precious their taken-for-granted home was. The restoration and repair of the fifth layer is not an overnight thing. Let's do it slowly, so no need to be too anxious, Realm Lord Ditai added. When he had finished speaking, they left the fifth layer. After the battle, the fourth layer and the fifth layer had merged. There was no more fourth layer now. Anyone who came down from the fifth layer would directly reach the third layer. Now, Meng Qi was the city lord of the third layer. Zhu Jilin was the city lord of the second layer, while Yu Yu was the city lord of the fifth layer. As for the first layer, Gongshu Beiguang was still the city lord. With the resurrection of the immortal tree, everyone could feel that the immortal cooking realm was different. The mortal energy was gradually growing thicker, and cultivating seemed much easier than before. Perhaps with the passage of time, more formidable geniuses would be born in the immortal cooking realm. The days passed slowly. Nearly a month had passed. During this period, Bu Fang didn't go to take the assessment. The main reason was that after being busy for a long period, he needed a break. Immortal Chef Little Store was full of people every day. As the restaurant owned by Bu Fang, the great demon king who had his name hurt all over the immortal cooking realm, many people would travel a long distance just to get a taste of his dishes. Every day, after cooking the dishes, Bu Fang would pull a chair and sit comfortably at the door of the restaurant, basking in the sun and taking a nap. In the evening, he would stay in the kitchen to study new dishes. Occasionally, he would visit heaven and earth farmland to study brand new death food tools, such as the marinated meat in a baked bun he thought of last time. Of course, these ideas still needed further study. A month was neither long nor short. After a long rest, Bu Fang's mental state was restored to its best level, and his cooking skills had also reached its peak. In the farmland, a breeze was blowing, rustling the grass. Bu Fang took a deep breath of fresh air and came to the wooden cabin. The myriad treasures immortal tree and the nine revolution great path tea tree were thriving. 
there seemed to be some green fruits growing on the myriad treasures immortal tree. By the looks of it, they would be ripe for harvest soon. The Nine Revolution Great Path tea tree was quite flourishing. Around it, the will of the Great Path was swirling, exuding a refreshing aura. Bu Fang reached out a hand and picked a tea leaf. The leaf had two colors. The front was bright green, while the back was pale blue. It also had serrated edges. He held it between two fingers and carefully studied it. The leaf emitted a faint fragrance of tea leaf. He put it into his mouth and gave it a gentle bite. An astringent taste with a touch of sweetness pervaded his mouth. Right after that, he felt his mental force begin boiling like a pot of water on a hot stove. Bu Fang's eyes lit up when he noticed the extraordinary nature of this tea. He planned to make these leaves into tea. Of course, it was impossible to brew tea with these raw tea leaves. He needed to process them first. Bu Fang took out a blue and white porcelain bowl. Then, he carefully picked the top young and juicy leaves and placed them into it. After filling the bowl full, Bu Fang stopped picking. He put away the bowl and planned to process them after he returned to Immortal Chef Little Store. He imagined that he was sitting at the door of the restaurant, admiring the beautiful scenery while sipping from a cup of hot fragrant tea. He knew it would be an amazing feeling. At this moment, Jing Yuan and New Hansen walked over from the distance, chatting and laughing. Jing Yuan was carrying a bucket filled with milk that smelled delicious. When Bu Fang saw Jing Yuan, he asked her about Fang Fang's ice cream store. After that, he let her leave. As time went on, sales at Fang Fang's ice cream store had begun to fluctuate. The main reason was that once the novelty had passed, the women in Goddess City became less enthusiastic about ice cream. Despite the fluctuation, daily sales remained at a very impressive level. Bu Fang was very satisfied. At least when compared with the sales of Immortal Chef Little Store, Fang Fang's ice cream store was much better. There was not much competition in Goddess City. In Immortal Cooking Realm, despite Bu Fang's great Demon King's reputation, many diners would choose other restaurants over his. Because there were so many other choices, the restaurant's turnover was much lower than that of Fang Fang's ice cream store. After seeing Jing Yuan off, Bu Fang asked New Hansen about the death food tools. Studying death food tools was mostly New Hansen's work now. He could mix the farmland's will of the great path into food, which was the key to making a death food tool. After Bu Fang drew out all the gourmet arrays and gave them to New Hansen, he had been wearing a pair of crystal glasses made by himself as he studied death food tools every day. Recently, he had become engrossed with the imprison array. He felt that this array was not a useless one. Having it was advantageous, but the main reason it had not shown was that they hadn't found an appropriate array carrier, which was a dish that could carry this array. New Hansen and Bu Fang had tried many dishes, such as Raymond noodles, soup dumplings, and many others, but none of them worked. Although the imprison array didn't seem like a violent one, it had a very strict requirement for the food carrier. No ordinary dishes could withstand its power. They would explode straight away. Even if they didn't explode, they couldn't unleash the array's power. Both of them knew that they had more work to do and a long way to go. After Bu Fang and New Hansen had a very long discussion, Bu Fang bid New Hansen farewell and left the farmland. He returned to the restaurant, stretched, and stepped into the kitchen. There, he clasped his hands behind his back, lost in thought. A month ago, Realm Lord D. Tai told him that he should go and get his cooking skills assessed. But he hadn't gone yet because he thought the devastated immortal cooking realm needed time to rebuild. Plus, he was a little lazy. Now, one month had passed, and Bu Fang felt that it was about time for him to get assessed. But before that, he planned to process the tea leaves he took out from the heaven and earth farmland. He had a feeling that this nine revolution great path tea would bring him a different surprise. Making tea was a complicated and cumbersome process that required a lot of energy. In fact, tea could also be used as a food ingredient. There were many delicacies that used tea as a supplementary ingredient, such as tea eggs, steamed pork with tea, and stir-fried shrimps with longjing tea. These delicacies were all associated with tea. Therefore, it was also very important for Bu Fang to make good tea. With a thought, he took out the blue and white porcelain bowl, appended it, and spread the tea leaves across the table. There was only one Nine Revolution Great Path tea tree, so the leaves were not many. That was why even if the bowl was full of tea leaves, there were only 81 pieces in total. Despite the scant quantity, however, the tea leaves' spiritual energy and true energy were extremely powerful. Bu Fang took out the Black Turtle Constellation wok and heated it. He didn't add oil into the wok and just preheated it. 
when the wok reached the desired temperature, he threw all 81 tea leaves into it. After covering his palms with a layer of true energy, he began to rub the leaves in the wok. The rich fragrance of tea began to diffuse. Soon, a mysterious fluctuation spread, accompanied by a chanting voice. Without a doubt, this was an extraordinary tea. End of chapter. Chapter 1179. Is the Realm Lord trying to mess things up? Making tea was a complicated process. Bu Fang was not very familiar with it, but he had his own way of making tea. He placed the tea leaves into the Black Turtle Constellation wok. He didn't add oil into the wok because he just wanted to dry the leaves. As soon as the leaves touched the hot wok, the water contained in them began to evaporate. Then, he began to rub and stir them with his palms, causing the fragrance of the tea leaves to diffuse. The rich tea aroma contained a fresh taste as if it could freshen one's spirit. After stirring for not too long, Bu Fang scooped out the tea leaves, which had turned into tiny strips. The next moment, a white flame rose from his palm and burned slowly. He made the leaves float over the flame. Heated by the high temperature, the remaining water in them evaporated instantly. Finally, he took out a little round porcelain bowl and placed these dried tea leaves into it, one at a time. When he was done, he covered the bowl with a lid. These tea leaves looked amazing, with bright green on the front side and pale blue on the back. There was no need for Bu Fang to process them further. Bu Fang took out one leaf and put away the bowl. After frying and toasting, the tea leaf had shrunk into a small strip with a crystal clear appearance that looked like glass. It was extremely gorgeous and beautiful. He then produced a cup specially used for making tea, put the leaf into it, and poured some boiled spring of life into the cup. A burst of hot air went into the cup first, making the tea leaf spin. The instant the boiling spring of life touched the leaf, it turned bright green. Bu Fang closed the lid. After letting the tea brew for a few minutes, he removed the lid, brought it over his nose, and sniffed at the tea aroma. A faint but soul-stirring fragrance squeezed into his nostrils and aroused his taste buds, causing Bu Fang to be amazed. This Nine Revolution Great Path tea didn't require washing as ordinary tea did, and the first round of tea was already excellent. A rich tea aroma permeated the air. On the tea's surface, some tiny bubbles were floating as the leaf spun in the water. Bu Fang held the teacup with one hand and the lid with the other. He gently blew on it, scattering the straight rising steam, while pushing the bubbles away with the lid. He took a whiff again and slowly shook his head. The refreshing tea aroma rushed into his nostrils. Finally, he took a small sip. The boiling hot tea flowed through his lips into his mouth. The fragrance of tea instantly exploded in his mouth, giving him an indescribable pleasure. Bu Fang closed his eyes as he felt the aroma swirl in his mouth and rush into his nose. With a gulp, he swallowed the tea. It flowed through his throat and fell into his stomach. Immediately, the tea seemed to have exploded, causing radiance to keep spreading out from Bu Fang's stomach. The wave of formless fluctuation instantly filled his whole body, making him feel extremely relaxed. Even then, the mental force in his spirit sea boiled as if it was strengthened. This Nine Revolution Great Path tea actually acted on his mental force. Bu Fang narrowed his eyes, smacked his lips, and took another sip of tea. This tea could not be compared with wine. Wine was mellow, while the tea's aroma needed to be carefully savored. He took another sip, and he could feel that his mental force seemed to be getting fuller. If he weren't wrong, this Nine Revolution Great Path tea should have the effect of restoring mental force. The effect immediately brightened his eyes. In the future, after using a perishing pot, he could take a sip of Nine Revolution Great Path tea, and then he would be able to stand up again and use another perishing pot. Bu Fang was delighted. Holding the teacup and savoring the tea aroma, he walked out of the kitchen. The bell rang as the curtain was lifted. At the moment, the tables around the kitchen door were already fully occupied by diners. When they saw Bu Fang, they greeted him. Bu Fang nodded, told them to enjoy their meals and drinks, then walked out of the restaurant. He pulled over a chair and sat on it, taking a break and sipping tea. The restaurant continued to operate. Bu Fang had put Shishi in charge of the restaurant's operation. The little girl's cooking skills were improving fast. Perhaps because her talent was too good that her cooking skills now were no weaker than those of ordinary first-grade immortal chefs. After today's business, Bu Fang planned to take Shishi to test her cooking skills. In the meantime, he took this chance to rest while waiting for her. Soon, the day's business hours were over. At some point in time, Shishi had come to Bu Fang's side. He was in a daze, still holding the empty teacup. Oh, it's over? 
Bu Fang came to his senses and gave Shishi a look. Shishi nodded repeatedly. Bu Fang rose to his feet, put away the teacup, and stretched. His spirit, soul, and energy seemed to wake up at this moment. He rubbed Shishi's head. In the little girl's expectant gaze, he grinned and said, Come, let's go and get our cooking skills assessed. When Shishi heard that, she clenched her fists in excitement. Becoming an immortal chef had always been her first dream, and her second dream was to become an amazing immortal chef like Teacher Bu. After closing the door, Bu Fang took Shishi by the hand and left the restaurant. They walked down the street in the immortal cooking realm, their shadows stretched long by the evening sun. The familiar street was still as lively as before. The people all knew Bu Fang, and they greeted him as he passed. Bu Fang smiled and nodded at these people. The great assessment of chefs was to be conducted at Immortal Kitchen Pavilion. Bu Fang remembered that he had made quite a stir when he first came to Immortal Kitchen Pavilion. Now, he was here again, and this time, he was about to take a higher grade chef test. Many things had happened in the immortal cooking realm between his first and second visit. Shishi was curious about everything. This was her first visit to Immortal Kitchen Pavilion, so she flinched and hid by Bu Fang's side. The people in Immortal Kitchen Pavilion naturally knew Bu Fang. Although Mu Yuer no longer helped in Immortal Kitchen Pavilion, what Bu Fang did when he was here had made everyone remember him. As soon as he stepped into Immortal Kitchen Pavilion, many people walked over and bowed respectfully to him. With Bu Fang's current cooking skills, he deserved their respect. Whether it was his status as the champion of the Immortal Chef Tournament or his deeds of saving the Immortal Cooking Realm from destruction, he deserved respect from others. This is my apprentice. This is her first time to take the first great Immortal Chef test. Show her the way, Bu Fang glanced at an expert of Immortal Kitchen Pavilion and said. The expert nodded respectfully. Shishi, don't be nervous and take it easy. With your cooking skills, becoming a first grade immortal chef is a piece of cake, Bu Fang said, rubbing the little girl's head. The experts of Immortal Kitchen Pavilion around them were speechless. Bu Fang was, indeed, worthy of being called the Great Demon King. He was so domineering. In their eyes, Shishi was just a little girl of seven or eight years old, so her attempt to take the test was merely a formality. It was not that easy to become a first grade immortal chef. In the Immortal Cooking Realm's records, the youngest first grade immortal chef was a 10 year old genius. Shishi appeared to be only 7 or 8 years old. Was she trying to break the record? Even if she did, it would not be as easy as a piece of cake. After all, she was just a child. Foxy was curled up on Bu Fang's shoulder, fast asleep. Shishi still seemed a little nervous. Bu Fang took Foxy off his shoulder and placed her in Shishi's arms. Let Foxy accompany you, so you won't be nervous. Go now. We'll take the tests at the same time. When we get back, I'll cook you a meal." Bu Fang rubbed Shishi's head and smiled. Shishi nodded, looking much relaxed now. After that, while stroking Foxy's head, she left with the expert. With the resurrection of the Immortal Tree and the continuous recovery of the Immortal Cooking Realm, Immortal Kitchen Pavilion had become livelier than before. Perhaps as a result of the recovery of the Will of the Great Path, more and more people were now taking immortal chef tests, and their ages were getting younger and younger. The immortal cooking realm's golden age seemed to be coming. With just a glance, Bu Fang already saw many children who were just slightly older than Shishi stand together, waiting to be assessed. A service crew of immortal kitchen pavilion led the way ahead, his body a little stiff. After all, he was facing the great demon king of the immortal cooking realm. Owner Bu, what test do you wish to take? Is it for the second grade? The crew asked. Bu Fang clasped his hands behind his back and walked beside the man. I guess so. I'll take the second grade test first. The crew was speechless. The records of Bu Fang becoming a first grade immortal chef was still here. It had only been about half a year, and now, he was planning to take the second grade test. He truly was the great demon king. All right, please come with me. The pavilion master, executives, city lords, and the realm lord are all waiting for you. The crew didn't speak again but led the way. A short while later, he brought Bu Fang into a luxurious room. With a creak, the door was pushed open, and Bu Fang stepped through it. All eyes in the room immediately turned and rested on his face. The next moment, the sound of gasping filled the whole room. This man looks. Familiar. He's the great demon king. He's here to take the second grade test as well? This is going to be interesting. There's a lot of geniuses and monsters taking the second grade test nowadays. Voices rang out in the room. Many people were whispering to each other as they looked at Bu Fang, 
their hearts filled with mixed emotions such as respect, reverence, and doubt. After reorganizing, today's immortal cooking realm had only one immortal kitchen pavilion, which was the one in the first layer. All the geniuses in the whole immortal cooking realm would take their tests here as the immortal kitchen pavilions in the other layers were abolished. As a result, many geniuses had gathered in the first layer. All geniuses were proud of themselves. They knew Bu Fang was the great demon king and the champion of the immortal chef tournament. But what's the big deal with that? He still had to take the second grade test. If they could defeat the great demon king in the test, their names would be sung all over the immortal cooking realm. This was what made these geniuses excited. Bu Fang shoved his hands into his pockets, ignoring the gazes filled with all kinds of emotions. He glanced about and rested his eyes in the distance. There, Realm Lord Di Tai reclined lazily in a chair, while Gongshu Beiguang stood respectfully next to him. He then turned his eyes to Meng Qi, who wore an immortal robe but looked like a fairy. Now, she was not only the city lord of the third layer, but also the pavilion master of the immortal kitchen pavilion. Meng Qi kept a faint smile on her face, even as many people threw adoring glances at her. As if sensing Bu Fang's gaze, she looked in his direction and nodded gently. The immortal cooking realm has just gone through an ordeal. Now that the ordeal has passed, the realm will surely shine again. The immortal tree has revived, and immortal energy has returned, causing countless geniuses to awaken. You are the future and hope of the immortal cooking realm. This test will determine your future. As the city lord, Gongshu Beiguang was the host of this test. Nowadays, the immortal chef test was only held once a month, so everyone took it very seriously. The contestants who took part in the test couldn't help getting nervous. There are 10 people taking the second grade test this time. The test will have a theme, and you have to cook according to it. Your dishes will be assessed by the immortal cooking realm's will of the great path, and the result will determine the result of your test. It is fair, just, and transparent, said Gongshu Beiguang. The test will begin now, and the realm lord will announce the theme. All eyes immediately turned to realm lord Di Tai. Realm Lord Di Tai flipped his golden hair. With a charming smile on his handsome face, he glanced around and said, Ah! The second grade test is finally here. I'm full of expectations. When he had finished, he gave Bu Fang a deep look. The next moment, a faint smile brushed his lips, and a playful look flashed in his eyes. I've already decided on the theme of the second grade test a month ago. The theme is, well, it is, dried pot. The moment Realm Lord Di Tai finished speaking, the whole audience froze. The next moment, an uproar broke out. Meng Qi rolled her eyes, speechless. Bu Fang, on the other hand, twitched the corner of his mouth as he gave the triumphant-looking Realm Lord Di Tai a glance. Is this guy trying to mess things up? He thought. End of chapter. Chapter 1180. The man who stands at the top of the food chain. Realm Lord Di Tai. The theme was dried pot. Realm Lord Di Tai was really naughty. Bu Fang's mouth twitched as he glanced somewhat speechlessly at the Realm Lord, who looked overjoyed in the distance. Is this guy stupid? What's the point of being so naughty? If I come out with a perishing pot, the whole first layer may be destroyed, and there will be no more tests. He thought. Bu Fang knew Realm Lord Di Tai's intention. This guy just wanted to look for a thrill. After all, the Realm Lord had witnessed a perishing pot's terrible power, but never tasted it before. He must be very curious about its taste and wanted to try it. Of course, he also expected Bu Fang to remove the destructive power and just prepare a delicious dried pot. His confidence made Bu Fang struggle a little. Meng Qi rolled her eyes. She could read the Realm Lord's naughty intention as well. Bu Fang's perishing pot is a horrible killing instrument that can kill even a little saint, and yet this guy wants him to cook a dried pot. If Bu Fang doesn't remove the destructive power, and the pot explodes as soon as he takes the first bite. Well, let's see how the Realm Lord is going to wind up in this mess. The people around broke out in an uproar. They naturally didn't know about Bu Fang's perishing pot they broke out in an uproar simply because of the theme. Bu Fang didn't know anyone in this test. Gongshu Ban and the others were not here, and his opponents in the Immortal Chef tournament had not broken through either. However, there were many familiar faces in the audience, such as Xuanyuan Xiahui and Gongshu Ban. The theme is dried pot? What an unorthodox theme. The test is indeed worthy of being the second grade test. The theme is very difficult to tackle. I have never cooked dried pot before. What if I fail? The participants were all a little flustered. They never thought that Realm Lord Di Tai would make them cook dried pots. 
Although dried pot was a main category of food, and there were similar delicacies in the immortal cooking realm, very few chefs knew how to prepare it. They didn't know much about this dish. Now that it was taken as the theme of the assessment, they found it very tricky. As they began to think about the dried pot's recipe, Bu Fang was somewhat speechless and bored. He knew its recipe very well. The origin of perishing pot was a dried pot cabbage fused with the gourmet array. The cabbage was fiery heart cabbage, a very high-grade ingredient containing the will of the great path that Bu Fang planted in heaven and earth farmland. It was not difficult to cook. The toughest part of preparing this dish was how to carve the gourmet array in it. Bu Fang glanced at Realm Lord D. Tai. Suddenly, a faint smile brushed his lips. Since he wants to taste my dried pot, I'll satisfy him. Explode is not the only gourmet array I know. Now that the theme is announced, you may return to your position. You have the time to brew half a pot of tea to think about the dish you want to cook. The dish must be ready to serve within the time it takes for an incense stick to burn. Anyone who fails to meet the time will have his cooking right revoked, Gongshu Beiguang said in a stern voice. All the participants felt their blood begin to boil. Sitting in the audience, Gongshu Ban clenched his fists in excitement. I didn't expect the theme to be dried pot. The realm lord is so bold. Xuanyuan Xiahui, Xuanyuan Xuan, and the others all looked at him with puzzled expressions. When Gongshu Ban saw the confused look in their eyes, he became even more excited. To quench their thirst for knowledge, he planned to explain to the Moner Bu's ultimate skill, the perishing pot. And so, he began to describe the scene when Bu Fang threw out a perishing pot in the fifth layer and blew up the formidable existence behind the bronze gate. In his description, the terrible perishing pot had the power to destroy the world and was the number one murderous weapon. That frightened Xuanyu and Xiahui and the others. When they finally came to their senses, they gasped in terror. This means. The realm lord wants to taste owner Bu's perishing pot? He is really bold. Xuanyu and Xuan covered her red lips with a hand and said incredulously. That's why my admiration for the realm lord's courage is as endless as a great river. The realm lord is indeed an existence who stands at the top of the food chain. He is brave enough to face anything for the sake of delicious food. Gongshu, Ban exclaimed. Xuanyu and Xiahui stroked his chin and said, I don't think owner Bu would prepare a dried pot that will explode. It is a great murderous weapon, after all, so he would never use it on the realm lord. Gongshu Ban and the others nodded and thought Xuanyu and Xiahui had a point. Bu Fang, of course, would not prepare a perishing pot. He only needed to cook a normal dried pot without adding the gourmet array to it. However, when he saw Realm Lord D. Tai's triumphant look, he felt that he had to teach the guy something about life. The test begins now. Gongshu Beiguang ignored the audience's chatter and announced the beginning of the test. The moment he finished speaking, the atmosphere in the room changed. Everyone became nervous. With a thought, they produced their cooking stoves, which fell to the ground with loud noises. These youngsters all wished to become famous overnight. All they had to do was suppress the great demon king in this test. When the news spread, their names would be heard all over the immortal cooking realm, making them famous overnight. Therefore, they were all working very hard to defeat Bu Fang. As soon as the cooking began, every immortal chef's eyes fell on Bu Fang. They were all first great immortal chefs, and many of them were geniuses. Some had waited for a long time before coming to take the second grade test just to make a splash. Many people in the audience noticed the unusual atmosphere. No matter where owner Boo goes, he will always become the center of attention, and naturally, some people will want to cover up his brilliance, Gongshu Ban said with a smile on his face. In the end, however, those who attempt to do so will be torn into pieces by owner Boo's sharpness. Yes. What will happen next should be very interesting. Bu Fang paid no attention to all the prickly gazes shooting at him from around. If truth be told, he was a little excited now. He glanced at Realm Lord D. Tai, who craned his head and was looking over curiously. The strange look in his eyes gave the Realm Lord goosebumps. What is this boy trying to do? Realm Lord D. Tai thought. Bu Fang drew back his gaze. With a thought, one fiery heart cabbage after another appeared in front of him, which he placed on the table. Then, he reached out a hand and touched his waist. The next moment, the white tiger heaven stove fell from the sky, letting out a tiger roar that shocked the other immortal chefs. The arrogant white tiger filled the air with pressure. Flashing with golden light, the dragon bone kitchen knife made its appearance next. Bu Fang grabbed it, spun it, and began to process the cabbages. When the outer layers of the cabbages were removed, they had reddish burning flames inside. 
In addition to cabbages, he needed meat to cook a dried pot. Bu Fang chose the eight treasures pig's belly. A dish cooked with pork belly would have a rich and attractive aroma. He cut the pork belly into slices and marinated them with some sauce. When he was done, he placed the cabbages into a bowl and washed them with salted water. After that, he began to prepare ingredients. He needed many of them. The abyssal chili sauce was a must. He also cut exploding flame peppers into chunks, diced cloves of purple garlic, as well as chopped some scale tail scallions, sunmother gingers, and others. When everything was ready, Bu Fang flicked his fingers and shot a white fireball into the white tiger stove. Then, he placed the black turtle constellation wok over the stove, preheated it, and poured some spring of life into it. In an instant, strong life energy spread out. In the distance, many people were rendered speechless when they sensed the life energy dissipating in the air. What a wasteful guy. He's using the spring of life. Realm Lord D. Tai thumped his chest. Do you know how precious the spring of life is? How can you use it for blanching? When the water began to boil, Bu Fang dumped the cabbages he had broken into pieces into the wok. He waited until their colors changed slightly before scooping them all out with a strainer and placing them aside to drain the water. When there were no more cabbages in the wok, he discarded the spring of life, every drop of them. Realm Lord D. Tai's eyes went so wide that they almost popped out. How could he waste the spring of life like that? Does he know how precious it is? Bu Fang, of course, didn't know how precious the water was. After all, he had the source of the spring of life, which could provide him an endless supply of the precious water. He naturally couldn't understand Realm Lord Detai's pain. Sizzle. He poured some oil into the Black Turtle Constellation Wok. When the oil was boiling hot, he dumped the exploding flame pepper chunks and began to stir-fry them. After the peppers released their aroma, he added diced purple garlics, and when they also released their aroma, he dumped in the pork belly. Sizzle. Wisps of hot steam rose from the wok as a meaty fragrance filled the air. All the people around Bu Fang inhaled deeply and gave him a solemn look. They felt the pressure, and they began to focus on the cooking of their dishes. Since they wanted to challenge him, they naturally needed to work with strength that could match his. Otherwise, they would become mere jokes. Bu Fang stir fried the pork belly slices until they released their fragrance, and their colors changed slightly. Then, he poured in some wine. Wine could enhance the fragrance and make it even more enticing. Next, he added the drained cabbages into the wok and stirred them together. When they were evenly mixed, he added the abyssal chili sauce and stirred again. He didn't stop stirring until a strong aroma wafted out of the wok. After that, he added some seasoning such as vinegar and turned off the heat. He jerked the wok, causing the dish to roll and gleam inside. Finally, after filling the three iron lotus pots he had prepared in advance, the dish, dried pot cabbage, was ready to serve. Of course, there were some steps Bu Fang hadn't completed yet. The other participants had also completed their dishes. Thunderclaps rang continuously in the sky as they began to face lightning punishments. However, many people discovered that Bu Fang's dish didn't attract lightning punishment. Could the great demon king have failed this time? It's possible. If it can't attract lightning punishment, it means that the dish is not qualified. This is our opportunity to suppress the great demon king. The participants watching Bu Fang all looked excited. Those who suppressed the great demon king would become famous in the whole immortal cooking realm. It was a very tempting achievement for anyone. Bu Fang picked up a dried pot. With a thought, a crystal fruit of life emerged in his hand. Then, his mental force surged and poured out of his mind, enveloped the fruit, and began carving a gourmet array in it. A short moment later, the carving of the array was done, and he put the fruit into the pot. In just a flash, the crystal fruit of life fused with the dish, while the array gleamed and disappeared. Rumble. The lightning punishments in the sky began to stir as dark clouds rolled over and covered the whole sky in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, a deafening thunderclap rang out, and a thick bolt of lightning slithered out of the clouds. The lightning punishment overshadowed the rest, and its pressure instantly scattered the other clouds. Everyone was completely struck dumb. The participants, who thought they finally had an opportunity to suppress Bu Fang, could hear their hearts breaking. The lightning punishment had scattered their clouds. What did that mean? It meant that the quality of the great demon king's dish crushed theirs completely. They all gasped, feeling dispirited. The scattering of their clouds meant that they had failed the test because their dishes did not go through a lightning punishment. By this time, they no longer had the mood to compete with the great demon king. They could feel nothing but despair after that crushing defeat. Boom. Boom. Boom.
After the seven lightning punishments had descended and were blocked by Whitey, the participants finally realized that their ambitions of suppressing the Great Demon King were extremely stupid. The Great Demon King was fucking invincible. Rumble. The last lightning punishment faded away. Bu Fang's vermilion robe fluttered as he gave Realm Lord D. Tai a playful look and said, the dried pot cabbage is ready to serve. Buzz. A strange wave of fluctuation spread out of the silver pot in his hand. Upon sensing the fluctuation, everyone's expression changed dramatically, while the Realm Lord's face turned red and his eyes went wide. Is Bu Fang crazy he really cooked me a perishing pot? Is he trying to kill me so he can inherit my art of nudity? End of chapter.